All right, here he is, Steve Langford. He's going to tell us what's going on in the Howard 100 Newsroom. Steve, please give us an update. All and right, I Steve. guess um, Eric will be yelling at him. Oh, Eric the Midget has a problem with you. And in fact, our lead story today. Howard Great. 100 News to the rescue. Eric the Midget's abortive appearance at a WNBA game in Sacramento July 10th saved after this news division broke the story yesterday. Eric the Midget's meet and greet autograph session had been canceled when no one, repeat, no one bought a ticket to the special event. <laughs> but thanks to Howard 100 News in the space of a few hours yesterday, more than 50 fans reportedly bought tickets to meet Eric the Midget. So, Eric, I guess you're not so mad at Steve. He saved your appearance. Shut the fuck up. You are not the reasoning for the ticket sales, you egotistical asswipe. The tickets got sold because finally the emails that I sent out to the people that go to this room got answered. The people finally bought the damn tickets. They didn't get bought because of your stupid fucking ass. Go the fuck back up to Canada, you worthless piece of shit. All right. Uh, how do you respond to that, Steve? Do you think you still stand by your story? Yeah, I mean, the facts of the matter are that uh, we did the story. He had sold zero tickets. <laughs> zero. Right. And we did the story. They sold more than 50. The guy at the Sacramento Monarchs uh, told us about it. Johnny Frado is thanking us. Right. The facts are clear. Facts are clear, Eric. There are no facts to that story. No one likes you. Shut that, the fuck up, fat boy. Is that why he's calling? Because he's mad because he sold tickets? Nobody liked you, little man. <laughs> yeah, check the email box again. There are probably more than likely is a hell of a lot. No need to check the email box. You're hated by everyone. <laughs> well, Eric, I don't know. If I was you, I wouldn't care why you sold the tickets. The fact that you sold 50 tickets is... Yes. Uh, I can't even believe 50 tickets is enough to make an event happen. <laughs> I mean, uh, Eric, I wouldn't be too busy crowing about the 50 tickets. 50 Where, tickets. Where's the event? In a lobby? No, fat ass. <laughs> How dare you? You head of shit. Well, let me tell you something, uh, Eric. I'm happy for you. You got your appearance. I don't know why you're taking such umbrage with mm. Steve Langford. Steve Langford sells tickets. I, I, right. I've used them several times. Detroit, Cleveland. There you go. The fella comes through. He and is not the reasoning for that at all. You think you're the reason? They finally sold because of the emails that I sent out mm -hmm. weeks ago. I've had... <laughs> the link on my MySpace page for weeks. Well, and yesterday morning, before we did the story, number of tickets sold by Eric the Midget, zero. zero. <laughs> the story yesterday must have had some effect, Eric, if you had it on right. your MySpace page, your friend book page, or whatever fucking page you have. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Steve does the story, and you get 50 uh, ticket sales. It's also been on the JFSC.TV yeah. website well. there even well. even, even more the reason. Mm -hmm. Point zero. <laughs> zero point zero. Zero point <laughs> zero. The tickets did not sell because of that Canadian Eric, dump. Now I want Eric. you to tell the other two what I'm about to tell you now. They're out through. Expelled in favor. <laughs> Can I say something here, Eric? I zero think point <laughs> Zero. I think you're being a little unreasonable here. If you had this uh, ticket uh, listed on all of these various things, JFSC, everywhere else, and you sold 0, 0.0, as the gentleman is saying, <laughs> if you sold zero, Dean warmer, and then all of a sudden Steve does the story and says, Zero point zero. Brad, shut up with that button. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden, now you're... Selling tickets, certainly you must give Steve the credit. Really? Stop being uh, ungentlemanly. He's helping you. Every week there's a new example of you acting like a shithead boo. Really? <laughs> I'm not giving that shithead credit for shit. Well, Even if he deserves it, is what I you're I think saying. you're making a mistake. I don't think that's fair to Steve. Him covering the story helped you. Really? I hate Linkford. I want you to fire his dumb, <laughs> shitty ass. Why? Because he has a huge penis? Right. Well, why do you no. hate Steve? I he mean, helped you. He's helping you. Zero point 
<laughs> Are you saying you don't want any help? Fred, you push that button one more time. I'm going to fight in New York. Fred, come here. Fred, come here. What? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Point zero. I'll meet you at JFK. <laughs> what did you say, Eric? I missed it. I am sick of you hitting those sound buttons, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What did You're going to fly to New York and do what? Break all Fred's <laughs> fingers so he can't hit those buttons. You should you should fly to New York yeah. and butt fuck him and then take him to dinner and suck mm. his dick. How many balloons would it take for you to fly to New York? <laughs> fly to New York and stick his fingers in your butt. Eric, I've never seen you so upset. Say that. I've never seen you so angry. <laughs> it's like you were possessed. Yeah. Like it, was like, it, was like, it was really like when Linda Blair went berserk. Man, Eric. Eric, you're really out of control. Did he just threaten um, me? Yes, he yeah, did. He wow. did. He did. He's going to break your fingers. Howard, can you put my pot up again? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> hey, Steve. Zero <laughs> point <laughs> zero. That's you sold, so he, he's right. You sold 0.0, .0 <laughs> tickets, and then Steve went on the air, and then you sold 50 tickets. How could you not give Steve a little praise? How could you be mad? Daniel Simpson Day it has no great point. Nothing ever. the fuck to do with that Canadian jackass that you have on your payroll that you're wasting money on. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good I thing don't you're see not, how you could say that. It's a good thing you're not the news director. Larry Kroger, 1.6. Congratulations, <laughs> Kroger. You're at the top of the Delta Pledge class. Mr. Blue... Mr. Blutarski. Zero point zero. I want you to tell Johnny Frado what I'm about to tell you now. <laughs> You're out through, through at the Stern Channels. I want you off the JFSE by 9 o'clock Monday morning. Well, Eric, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, think you're, I think you're making a mistake here. And I'm sure you'll be happy to know that I have notified your local draft boards and told them that you are now eligible, completely eligible, for military service. <laughs> 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 where's that guy's where's that guy's academy award <laughs> steve are you sure before your story not one ticket sold this is according to the sacramento monarchs wow when did the ticket sell steve after we went on the air yesterday with this ah so Having you saw the ticket. sort of coincidence what Coincidence? Mm -hmm. That's an extraordinary lack of success, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen losers on this show, but my own. You are a loser's loser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, the Enge Scott the Engineer looks like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, the, the, the facts are in. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I don't mean to insult you, but it was Steve's story that did help you. It was not. Would you agree it's possible that Steve's story helped you? No. All right. <laughs> You're going to insist. Uh, let's say this. The fact that you let's were involved. You shut up. Let's say I shut up. No, oh, man. <laughs> let's say this. Because you were involved, you did get a story done that helped to sell the tickets. Surely you'll oh. admit that. Come yeah, on. that's, that's Come a on. good compromise. Oh. It doesn't make you look like a total dolt. <laughs> Save space. Steve, how many tickets do you think you'll sell today for Eric? Uh, I hope a lot more. I mean, he's very angry, but the fact of the matter is, we, when we do news stories, sometimes they have results, yeah. clearly. Yeah. And oh. by the way, the, the event was completely dead in the water, right? They weren't going to have it. Yeah, they had yeah. canceled it. Done. <laughs> now it's going to happen, right? Yeah, now they say it's back on. Uh oh, look at on Eric's website. It's a 0.0. .0. <laughs> 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 By the way, they weren't going to cancel it straight out. What do you mean? You have misinformation on that. It's just like you, like that asshole has misinformation on a lot of shit he reports. All right. Well, I, I want to know. know what the event was going to be. 
Like, well, what were you going to do? Here, here's what it was. Again, it was... Uh, I was going to blow everybody. Sacramento Monarchs versus <laughs> yeah. the Los Angeles Sparks. Sparks meet Eric the Actor. Exclusive pregame autograph session and meet and greet with Eric the Actor. The first 100 fans to purchase tickets will receive a special limited edition Eric the Actor t-shirt. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, so there's still 50 of those left is what you're saying. So how much does it cost to see Eric? Uh, tickets, uh, you know, you also get to see the game. Uh, 20 50 26 50 and 39 50 and the monarchs are in on this? Yeah. Wow. If you see the ga- if you stay to watch the game it's only 10 bucks. <laughs> All right, Eric, well, thank you. Uh, you've had your words and uh, oh, Anything wait a second. Else you say well, to I just I want to just say, to prove something to Eric. This is Jeff who processes the tickets for the monarchs. Jeff, are you there? Yes, good morning, Howard. Okay, what do you do for the Monarchs? I am the processor of the tickets. I coordinate all the tickets, the VIPs, and whatnot. I'm also a listener of Sirius Satellite Radio. Okay, and And what did you find out? Well, I do gauge all the ticket sales on a daily basis, and I can tell you this. There were absolutely no tickets sold prior to Mr. Langford's announcement on Sirius Satellite Radio. Mm. Well, what do you think of that, Eric? I don't believe this because... Jeff is not the person that I'm in contact with. I do the computer processing, Eric. Jeff, are you sure your name is Jeff and not Sal? (laughs) Who's Sal? All right, thank you. Evidently not a big listener. He doesn't know Sal. All right, thank you. Zero (laughs) point. Yes, Steve. Zero. Eric may also be interested in this. Howard 100 News getting our grubby pause on pictures of the special limited edition T-shirts that lucky fans could win for meeting Eric. Eric, the original gangster, they read, in this other style featuring, featuring Eric, the aviator. The captain reading, <laughs> fly me to the moon. We have balloons on this uh, T-shirt. Oh, so Eric Eric never having flown with balloons now makes a T-shirt with balloons. No, oh, you bastard. I didn't yeah. okay that one. I asked mm-hmm. him to- cancel that one. All right. But it's still there being offered. Yeah. yeah in your name. Who it dumped a whole... An annoying bitch. Shut up. Who <laughs> dumped a whole truckload of fizzies into the swim meet? Who delivered the medical school cadavers to the alumni dinner? Every spring, the trees are filled with underwear. <laughs> Every Halloween, the toilets explode. <laughs> You're talking about the JFSC, sir. Oh, <laughs> of course I'm talking about the JFSC, you twerp! <laughs> excited to be down here on the Stern Show. We're going to talk about my book today, hang on a little bit, and shoot the shit with Howard. Are you excited to be on? Oh, yeah. Big fantastic. Fan. I listen to him all the time. He is the king of satellite radio, you know? I'm excited. Don Felder's here. He just wrote a book about what it's like to be in the Eagles and get your ass kicked out of there. Yeah. That's got to be a come down. Pretty amazing story, actually, and yeah. I'm very curious about it. There's the guy right there. Yep, there he is. There he is. That's the guy. In person. How you doing, but man? But maybe it's good to be able to get the Eagles money without having to be an Eagle. Hey, that's the idea. You know? <laughs> there you go. Now it's you're a wonderful thing. Now you're talking. <laughs> it's a lovely, lovely thing. Well, a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, too. I was actually doing a radio interview up in Calgary a couple of weeks ago with a guy that's a huge kind of t- radio talk show uh, Post up there, right? And he says, "When you see Howard, tell him he is definitely the king oh, of that's satellite nice. radio." That's nice. And What's you that are. guy's name? Do you even His remember? His name is Dave Rutherford. Dave. Ru- well, thanks, Dave. That's yeah. nice to say. Yeah, absolutely right. So, you know, I uh, the the one thing before we get into the outrageous history of you and the Eagles, uh-huh. there that I love that video. They show it still on VH1 every once in a while, where of course it's the live Hotel California, and you and Joe Walsh are standing there like rock gods, sure, and you're playing that duet, you know, the, uh-huh. the instrumental part, uh-huh. and you kind of lean into Joe during that, and <laughs> you um, you tell him something that cracks him up during it because he starts laughing, and I always love when musicians talk to each other on stage. It's right. kind of cool. Uh-huh. Actually. You wonder what they're talking but, about. 
I, I've heard you reveal this, but maybe now you'll do that for my audience. What do you <laughs> lean in and say to Joe Walsh to cause him to laugh during Hotel well, California? Well, back in those days, we used to um, do a lot of drugs. And uh, <laughs> people would walk around with uh, reminiscence uh, glistening on the tips of their nose. <laughs> and so uh, if, you were, if you had that on your face, right. somebody would say, hey, you're showing. Right. So we're in the middle of filming this. This is pre-VH1 and pre-MTV, and we're actually filming this so we can send it over to Japan and Europe and right. whatnot so people can see what this is about, right. which was the way you promoted stuff before you uh, got on MTV. Sure. So in the middle of filming this, um, I just lean over to Joe in the middle of that solo and go, you're showing. <laughs> <laughs> he had a big Coke booger, didn't he? <laughs> he did. He, did. Oh, he didn't really. It was just a joke. And, Joe, and Joe laughs, of oh, course. So Joe, there yeah. is the secret. There it is. That is what it revealed. You know, that story's cooler than I thought it would be. That's great. <laughs> Artie needs Coke now. Uh, you were a member of the Eagles from 74 to 80, and I didn't even realize you weren't an original member of the Eagles. They brought you in to, I think, kind of rock things up and cool it up a little bit because the Eagles were more like a country band almost. And then they brought you in, right? You were the guy they figured could make them rock and roll. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, they were playing, you know, Take It Easy and Peaceful Easy Feeling and uh, right. those Good sort songs. of songs. Yeah. Great songs, but right. really kind of country-oriented. And right. AM radio in the 70s, you had to have a special format. It had to be three minutes long. You had to have an intro that was under 30 seconds, so the DJs didn't have a long time to talk before the singing started. And uh, everything that was on the radio was either rock and roll or R&B. So it was very calculated uh -huh. on, the, on the part of the Eagles. And when I say the part of the Eagles, I mean, you know, Fry, Frey and uh, Henley. Fry and Henley. Fry and Henley. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was really sort of brilliant on their part to say, we need a guy who can make us even more acceptable to the rock and roll world. It'll make us a bigger band. That's exactly so it was right. smart to bring you yeah. in. Now, how did they find you? I mean, well, why you? Yeah, why you and not I me? I keep asking myself that question every day. Why me? Why you? Uh, well, you know, one of the guys that was in the band, original member, was a guy named Bernie Ledden. And right. he was a brilliant guitar player. If you listen to the first couple of records, he was a brilliant bluegrass and electric country music guitar player. Right. And uh, Bernie and I were actually high school friends when we were 15 and 16 and had a band together in Gainesville, Florida, where we grew up. Right. And Bernie he left Gainesville and moved back to California and was in the Flying Burrito Brothers and a few other bands and finally wound up in, in the Eagles. And so when he would come around to different cities uh, that I was in, we'd get together and I'd go backstage and hang out and play with him and just say hello. Right. And I wound up seeing them in, uh, in Boston, I think at Boston University or something, in 71 when they were opening for the Yes. Right. So they were just starting out at the time. I went back and saw Bernie and my buddy and hung out. And we played backstage, and Glenn and everybody was there and kind of saw me and went, wow, that's, that's great. And Bernie kept calling me to get me to move out to L.A. He said, right. the music business isn't happening in New York. It's not in Boston. It's in California. And in those days, in the 70s, it really was. That right. was the California sound. So eventually I took his uh, advice and uh -huh. moved out to L.A. in my U-Haul trailer and my 65 Volvo and uh, got a couple of jobs out there working for Crosby, Nash, being Stephen Stills. Playing so you were really connected. I mean, you knew a lot of guys. You knew Crosby, uh, you knew uh, Nash, you knew... Uh uh, you, you knew a lot of the big acts, right? I, I did. You know, it was funny. when we, Before I met Bernie, the guy that was in my band uh, in Gainesville was Stephen Stills when we were 14 and 15 years old. Wow. We had a little band together. How did you together. know Stephen Stills? I, mean, I think he's a genius, Stephen Stills. Am I right on yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, you met him when you were 14. And didn't you hang out with the Allman Brothers when you were yeah. a kid? Uh -huh. How do you know all these Where guys? Where were you? You're like <laughs> the zealot of music. I was in the shittiest part of town. <laughs> Nobody was where you were. No one hung out where I was. Well, it, it it was Gainesville, Florida. I don't know if there was something in the water or what we were smoking in those days, but everybody kind of wound up being friends together. Uh, Isn't one of my, Tom Petty from there? Yeah, my he was one of my guitar students. I taught him early on. Wow. Uh, you taught guitar. Tom Petty how to play guitar? Yeah. Does uh -huh. he, does he uh, thank you every day for that? Well, I think he mentions it in his articles now, and that was so every, funny. When every he, time he gets laid, he should thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, come on. Another brilliant guy that you yeah. hung out with. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. You taught Tom Petty how to play guitar? You mean he yeah. took guitar lessons he from took you? Guitar lessons he from paid him. you to teach him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No 
kidding. Yeah. Was uh, he a brilliant student? Did you say to yourself, geez, this is some kid? No, he wasn't a great guitar player, but he wow. was fantastic on stage. He had this charisma. He had this long, straight blonde hair, and he'd flip his hair and shake his hair. And yeah, but did you ever say to yourself, here you were, you, you, I guess you were older than him, that you were his guitar teacher. Yeah, did a couple you of years. Say, did you ever say to yourself, gee, maybe I ought to hook up with this kid and, and start a band with no, him? No, I had my own band. I was working with Stills. He was right. a couple of years younger than me, so, you right. know, he was still a skinny, kind of buck tea, scraggly hair. Wow. Well, now that I think about it, he still looks like that. I was <laughs> going to say, you're describing him now. <laughs> I mean, how much but, did you charge Tom Petty for a guitar I think lesson? it was $3 an hour. $3 an yeah. hour. Yeah. But I didn't charge I, I was going to say, what do you charge today? I mean, inflation has <laughs> I was working at this music <laughs> store, and, and I didn't really get paid cash. I got paid credit on this store account, and right. I would save up my money so I could buy strings or chords or a guitar or something like that. Did you ever exchange. imagine that you would be something bigger than a guitar teacher? I mean, no. it's such a lucky business, right? Oh, my Lord. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, it's I'm crazy. S- I've been so blessed to be able to come from such humble means where I grew up on a little dirt road in the Palmetto fields of North Florida. Imagine if you said to Tom Petty when you would teach him, you said, listen, schmuck. I'm not going to charge you. You just give me 1% of your career if you ever take off. <laughs> I should send him that. Say, yeah, you know, I'm entitled to a percentage of what you make because I wow. uh, started you off How here. many years did you teach him? Well, I was there for about a year and a half or two years in town wow. before I left. No uh, kidding. Yeah, once, well, once Bernie left, I put together another band and actually moved to New York and worked here in New York. Lived down on Horatio Street when it was actually the meatpacking district uh, before it was so cool. Did you have credentials as a guitar teacher? In other words, were you uh, you're able to read music and you're able I to... I taught read, myself. You taught yeah. yourself all that. Uh-huh. I exchanged uh, lessons in this other school of music. This guy named Paul Hillis had gone to the Berkeley College of Music and came back to Gainesville and opened this little music school. And so he taught me to read, taught me music theory, composition, and that sort of stuff. So every hour that I would teach his guitar students, right. he would teach me music and theory. So it was because I had no money. I couldn't so you pay were, for anything. Of course not. You were, talk, you were hanging out with Stills, and you were hanging out with these guys, all my brothers, all these guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yet the Eagles were the ones that figure out, let's put this guy in our band. Sure. Uh-huh. I mean, this is the guy. Yeah. And they figured that out. Why? What had you done that was so remarkable to them that said, man, this is the guy that can make us go to the next level? Well, every time they would be at rehearsal out in L.A. when I was in town, if I wasn't out on the road working with somebody, I would go in and just hang out at their rehearsals, sit in and jam with them and play with them. And so I you helped just- them write music? No, I didn't help them write music then. We would just jam. Just, just jam. Just kick around and have a good time and, and kind of get off. The right, this guy's got the right vibe for us. Yeah, and we were exciting, and, you know, it was just fun. And they offer you a full partnership in the Eagles. That's correct. In other correct. words, yeah. you were a full partner. When I say that, some bands, uh, let's say, uh, have uh, one or two guys who write the songs and stuff, and then they have members who don't get a full partnership. They get paid well, but they're employees. Correct. But you were a full working partner. Yeah. Like when, you signed a contract with them. And that's you say, right. Look, I'm a full-fledged member. Uh-huh. If they hadn't made you a full-fledged member, would you have backed out and said, eh, this is probably not for me? Well, no. At the time I received the offer to come in and play on this session, I just went in to play with a bunch of friends of mine in a studio, and I played slide guitar on this song called Good Day in Hell. Right. And I uh, got a call the next day asking me to join the band. Uh, and I, at the time, was actually being Stephen Stills with Crosby Nash. I was playing Stephen's parts, right. ironically enough. Well, that band, and I had my wife was pregnant with our first kid, and uh, I had... Right, I was, so you were a married man with a pregnant wife, and things were about to really change in your life. You're about to be a member of the Eagles. Yeah. Did you go berserk when you became an Eagle? Did you cheat on your wife? Did you have multiple <laughs> sex partners? Did you constantly bang? They gave him those with the contract. Yeah, that, that all came with the territory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, really, uh-huh. yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. You know, I, I was raised, like I said, in very humble means in the South. I was dragged into church, into Sunday school from the time I was old enough to remember right, right. with my mother uh, and had a really religious upbringing and then when I joined the Eagles I was <laughs> drugged and, and <laughs> I was drugged into sin and all sorts of promiscuity right. my whole life and everything changed right. it, it became, was did you become a drug addict I, I wasn't addicted to drugs. Right. I, I did more than my fair share. What, what was you think? Coke? Coke, yeah, absolutely. No I was, heroin? No, I never did heroin. No, just I didn't coke, like pot, pot a whole no, lot. No, just Coke. Just Coke, and coke I drank a little Remy Martin to take the edge off, you know, but other than that, it the was... The band was fueled by Coke back then, yeah, right? Yeah, everybody was, yeah. Doctors, yeah. lawyers, yeah. musicians, everybody. Everybody was high. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. 
In fact, you even say in your new book that uh, you hung out with Keith Richards a lot, and uh, you found him. You thought he was dead in a room, uh, <laughs> right? And, and, but then it turned out you saw him on stage that night, and he was alive. But you really, say, please tell me he really doesn't take drugs. That's an act. You literally thought he was dead, right? Uh, well, yeah. All I saw was a foot sticking out of his bathroom wow. in his in his, uh, in his bedroom there, right. and I <laughs> this kind of pale gray glow about him, and I went, oh no, I hope I haven't been the one that discovered him. You know? Yeah, you don't want to go. Yeah. Where, where, what, what were the circumstances? A party or something, or pre-show? It was after show, post-show. Yeah, and uh, we were in Kansas City. As a matter of fact, we weren't playing with them or opening for them or anything. We just happened to be. They were playing one night in Kansas City Stadium in the Chiefs Stadium, and then we were playing some other gig, and we wound up being on the same hotel mm -hmm. where they had the top floor with all their gorillas as security, and we had our next floor down with our guys. And our road manager, Richard Fernandez, used to know and be friends with their road manager road manager at the time said hey you want to go up and meet these guys and i went of course you yeah, me rolling stones you bet you know, yeah. to me that was a huge <laughs> honor this was like you know 75 i guess 76 something right. like that and so we went up and uh we went walking down this hallway and the the doors to the presidential suite were open at the end of the hallway and this music was just blaring out of it <laughs> keith used to carry this roll around studio that had like an old reel reel tape recorder and an amp and a bunch of cassettes and stuff and jb lansing monitors in it so it was just pumping coming out of his right. thing and this guitar was laying down on the floor this electric guitar just going Arr! it was like you know just playing <laughs> itself okay. and we walked in and went that's kind of odd and we started walking around with the road manager going keith keith where are you and we walked <laughs> in the bedroom and I turned the corner and there was this foot sticking <laughs> out of the, the bathroom and we were promptly kind of whisked away. Uh, Could you believe you went from being this poor kid to all of a sudden hanging out with Keith Richards and these bands and you're in a huge band yourself? You must have pinched yourself. I mean, it must Well, they have been weren't huge when you joined them. No, they weren't. No. We were just a bunch of, you know, kids in ripped jeans and t-shirts. Right. Our gigs, we'd drive rental cars ourselves around and we'd fly coach in the right. back and right. we played like university campuses and really until... One of these nights, and especially when Hotel California kicked mm -hmm. in, is where we right. really jumped up to stage. And you wrote the song, Hotel California. Yeah, right? I wrote a large part of it, yeah. You wrote the music for it? I wrote all the music for it, yeah. Right. You walked in one day, and you said to the Eagles, hey, I wrote this song, uh, Hotel California. You know, I don't even know if you had a name Got for it. Got this music. <laughs> yeah, what, what was the riff that was going through your head? Just the... Well, I, I just remember that one day I was kind of sitting on this couch in this rental house that I had on the beach in Malibu. Uh, right. my, my youngest son was playing out in the uh, same and yep. kind of the California summer sun was glistening on the water. I had on a pair of cutoff shorts and right. was just got out of the water and I was sitting there just playing acoustic guitar and kind of out came that introduction and I played it and played it and played it about four times and I went, I've got to re go record this before I forget it. And when you're having that, do you go to yourself, I think this is a huge moment, but you know, no, no, it just, just sounded like a kind of a nice progression. I went back mm -hmm. and recorded it on a tape recorder. And right. actually, I was working on the songs for Hotel California, and I had like 15 or 16 other songs. Right. And so I threw that idea down and went back out and jumped in the water. And then about four or five days later, I came back and started listening to that reel of song ideas. And I went, I'm going to finish that one. That sounds mm -hmm. like a good one. And I had an old uh, Roland Rhythm Ace, which was this funky drum machine that piano players used to play in these bars. And yeah. it had a cha-cha beat and a samba <laughs> and all. <laughs> Stuff. And you hit the drum beat. I found the closest one to it and then laid down a bunch of guitars on it and played a bass part on it and pretty much wrote almost identical what's on the record, uh, the 76 record, with wow. the exception of a few guitar solos on the end. So so why do guys who have a gem like you, you're writing probably the biggest song the Eagles ever had, why the hell do they get rid of you and throw you out of the band? Now, okay. Because, right, it you sounds know, like you were all getting along and enjoying each other at the beginning. Well, were, that was the heavenly part. Mm -hmm. You know, the book in the beginning. He of Heaven and Hell in the book. When's it go bad? Because when the success hits... Do Frey and Henley? Be, I, I know fry. they Fry, whatever the fuck is in this. <laughs> fry becomes a, a a control freak, right? Well, you know what happened is when the band was first joined, even before I was uh, in the band, when it was first formed, everybody had been side men behind Linda Ronstadt or behind this person. And when they got right. together, they said, "We're going to be equal partners. We're all going to write songs. Everybody's going to sing two songs on the record. It's communal. Yeah, it's it's a band. You right. know, uh, it's not one guy or two guys and a bunch of back." 
backup musicians. And it was still going on when I joined the band, and that way we formed this company called Eagles Limited, which was right. a five-way partnership that everybody owned a fifth of the band, of cool. the, the name, the merchandising, the tickets, everything. Sounds great. Everybody's driving in the rental cars, everybody's in the studio, everybody's working, everybody gets a Everything's fair equal. Yeah. Right. 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 And then as time went by and the main songs that became hits were sung by Henley and Fry, uh, they People seemed to some feel thoughts. somewhat more entitled to, uh, to a larger share right. of the uh, proceeds and ownership and control than other people in the band. And I know from the book that you began to look into this, uh, you would say to the business manager, wait a second. I'm driving around in a shitbox. These guys have limousines taking them everywhere. Is that what they did? They started doing that kind of thing? Well, yeah, and and guess what? When they're riding around a limousine, guess whose share is... uh, Being eaten up. Being eaten up. That's right, yeah. That's Mm -hmm. right. So, you know. Well, you know, there's an old adage in Hollywood uh, amongst managers and in the music business that says, pay your acts enough money that they don't ask questions. Right, (laughs) right. And the trouble really started uh, around the end of the 90s when I started asking questions. I was CFO at this company. Right. And I was uh, only one third owner with Henley and Fry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bernie had left and surrendered his shares back to the corporation. That was Randy, smart. Randy had left <laughs> right. and surrendered his shares what, back to the corporation. did they hold a gun to their heads? <laughs> yeah. No, they <laughs> wanted to quit. They just wanted out. The they wanted, uh, this is awful. I want the hell out of it here. It was awful because those guys had become demons, yes. in your opinion? Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> controlling <laughs> and made made work and, and you know. Playing music should be like a child at play. It right. should be fun and exuberant and exciting, and, and it's hard to be creative. But, you know, most of us try to imagine this, you know, because being a musician and getting in a big band is, is so, the odds are so against you that uh-huh. when it happens, you think you could put up with almost anything. I mean, when you describe things were bad, you're talking about even those guys fought with each other, right? They did, yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you watched the last 60 Minutes interview where they were on 60 Minutes, where Don and Glenn were sitting in this booth together. But wow, it was just difficult to watch them, yeah. the anger and tension and frustration mm. and venom that those guys those two managed bastards, to conceal as best they can. Those two really bastards something. need each other. Yeah, they do. And yet they hate each other. <laughs> and that is why. Yeah. It's why like do you staying think they together. hate each other? What, what is it? What is the reason? I mean, they seem like two reasonable guys. They why do? do they hate each other? I mean, they're human beings. I mean, what could be... Uh, here's Gary Delabato. Well, that's why. They're he human has beings. An answer, apparently. <laughs> why do they hate each other so much? Much. Why? What is the dislike? I, what is your answer, Gary? I read the book, so I think I have a pretty good uh, idea of it. You know, the band started out as five equal members, and everybody would write songs and contribute. Right. And then it just became Henley and Fry contributing songs, and everybody got less and less. But then it became really obvious that Don Henley is like a machine, like a, a, a songwriting machine, and even Fry's songs weren't good enough. And then that became the tension between ah, the two of them. So wow. then it became... That is very well said. Yeah, your book was you got amazing. A lot, you gleamed a lot from the book. Yeah, the you? two yeah. stars, <laughs> then one outshone the other. Yeah. Did you I, feel guilty writing the book in the sense that, oh, gee, that's not very rock and roll. Like, okay, you keep your secrets and you all your stuff to yourself, and you don't uh, squeal on your brothers, even though they're messed up brothers. or any, like It's almost like a family. Did you we, feel... Where did that rule get written? I'm asking. <laughs> did, you, did you ever have any moments of doubt about writing the book? No, really, what happened? was after in that in a period of 12 months I went through a divorce from my wife which was we'd been together 29 years how much pussy were you getting if I can be crude I mean was it crazy <laughs> during your marriage that was fairly crude we well, you know you can be crude that's... don't ask that question <laughs> tell me what was going on in your life I mean you, poor you you married you probably said to yourself please Mr. Penis I don't know what you call <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you call your penis I don't know everybody uh, Mr. Penis Mr. Penis Mr. Penis, Mr. penis, good, yeah. Mr. penis okay. please please don't lead me to temptation <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost impossible to resist, isn't it? I mean, you're, well, the world you know, is a candy store. We, we, had this, we had this organization called the Third Encore, which right. wasn't my idea. I wasn't okay. in charge of it or anything. We used right. to go out and do our shows. We'd do two encores. Right. And then during the show, uh, we had guys that would go out in the audience and hand out these little buttons. They were like campaign buttons that had three E written on it, which stood for the Third Encore, right. to the most beautiful women they could find right. by the hundreds. Oh. And say, the Eagles want you to come to this private party party is upstairs at the suite, blah, 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 blah. And so by the time we finished and got off stage and jumped in the car and went back to the hotel, got to the room, showered, and then went down to the suite, which was furnished with champagne and hors d'oeuvres and appetizers and wow. all sorts of other party supplements. It's like the greatest bar mitzvah ever. It would be wall-to-wall <laughs> with women that were just dying to meet you. 
Wow. And, and uh, whose idea was that? Because that person should have been a full partner. Yeah. It, it, he was. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't my be, idea. That should be a third partner. <laughs> <laughs> just the third encore guy. Right. And I love that there was a name, the third encore. I mean, it's brilliant. That guy's a genius. Yes. Screw Hotel California. <laughs> and the women would be there and throw themselves. How long were you able to resist? Because you were married. Did you? Well, did you was there a period of time, like a couple of tried? months? No, I, I was just ravaged with guilt during it all. I yeah. mean, to the point where, you know, the nights that I was really really high or really drunk, really bored. I, I don't know if you spend a lot of time on the road, but, you know, you, sp- you spend, spend two a lot of time at my house. You spend two or three hours <laughs> yeah. on stage. Right. And then the rest of the time, 20 or 21 hours, you're just sitting around with nothing to do. And right. you find all sorts of horrible things to do, whether it's drugs or alcohol or Walsh and I, God bless him, one of Joe my Walsh. favorite guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was Joe. my comic relief. I just <laughs> love the man. He and I would get in sort of into you, all you sorts of things. You know what's amazing? Joe Walsh, to me, is one of the ta- most talented guys. He was in the James Gang, wrote great songs. He joined the Eagles and now, and he's not a full partner in the Eagles. No, he's not. No, Uh he is a, in other words, they pay him well, I guess. He has a deal with them where if he goes on tour with them, he gets paid. Right. Uh, If they make an album, he gets paid. He gets paid by those two guys. That's how I understand it. Right. It wasn't like your deal where you were a full partner. And yet, I'm always surprised that Joe Walsh put up with that because wasn't he too responsible for giving them more of a rock image and and that? And they control him so much that he he was not even allowed to dance on stage, right? They would that's tell him right. no Joe and I used to stage. dance on stage uh-huh. during all girls or all they want to do is dance, right? And we would get together and play these guitars and dance and just kind of hammer around on the camera. It's fun. And Henley would say he he didn't like the camera being moving on away us. from him, yeah. right? So uh, we were a distraction from the Don Henley show, and uh-huh. so we were reprimanded. So we literally started standing almost with our feet nailed down to the floor on that. And song. you were probably like, well, I'm being reprimanded but I have just as much say in this band as the other guys. You bet. Absolutely. I mean, that's got to drive you nuts. Yeah. I was uh, I was castigated one night for wearing the wrong color shoes on stage. Do wow. you think it was because you were <laughs> sucking away? T- because I find when I watch an Eagles performance, I did. I always like to watch Joe Walsh because sure. he was always a little bit out of control. He's animated. And yeah, now he's, he's Robo Joe. Yeah. Oh, they, I yeah, used they, to do, in yeah. high school, yeah. I used to do an impression of him with Hotel California. With the faces. For my friends, the, it yeah, was like, yeah. we, I, we would always, we'd be, you know, a little drunk, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and when you and him are together doing the solo at the end, uh, I could do the... Right. <laughs> 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 Those weird faces that Joe <laughs> That's perfect. And, 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 and the chemistry love... between you two guys was hilarious. Right. Yeah. But you see, it, it was too much for these other two guys. Yeah. Yeah. These the egomaniacs. Yeah. Uh-huh. They couldn't handle it. Yeah, the, the issues really came down to greed power and control and those are ugly as a a corporation the eagles corporation t-shirts concert tickets albums what are we talking? Billions of billions dollars. Billions of dollars. Billions wow. Of dollars. And you know that because you... Uh, you were a part of you it. You were a part. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, but you thought that the books were being cooked, and you sued to get more money, right? Well, no, what happened was uh, I started asking questions, and I started getting these kind of sandbag answers. Mm-hmm. And as CFO, I thought that I should have the right to at least see yeah. what's going on. We're How much money bi- are we making? We're talking billions Where are the of dollars. expenses going? Uh, what's happening? What kind right. of deals are you guys making for records or touring? Or Hey, what's going on? You're a partner. Yeah. And so my lawyer started asking these questions uh, since we couldn't get any answers directly. Mm -hmm. And uh, after he submitted, even though we had been promised in contracts along the way that they would provide us this information, uh, his last letter uh, was sent saying, hey, you promised us to give us this information. When do we get it? And the next day I got a phone call saying I was fired. Whoa. And How can so, you be fired? But, You're a partner. Well, yeah. that's, that's the point. So if you're a shareholder in a corporation, if you own a, or have a position where you work for the corporation, they can remove you from that job. But so they can't. you were fired. The, the guys As didn't even come stage. and say to you. They didn't talk it to was me through, at all. They wouldn't talk to you because you speak. dared to ask questions about your share. Well, that's right. Yeah. So you did sue. That's right. Uh, it was the only way that I, we even spoke to them and said, hey, you know, you leave us with no resort other than to file this litigation. We don't want to do this. Believe me, I've never been in a lawsuit with anybody, right. and I hope I'm never in another one <laughs> in my whole How life. How long did the lawsuit take? Six and a half years. And, oh. and I, I presume you won and got hundreds of millions of dollars. We settled. You settled? Yes. Why did you settle? 
Well, so for, it, you settled. You got tens of millions of dollars. <laughs> well, you know, in the, I hope in that settlement, right. there's a, you know a non-disclosure I confidentiality see. agreement that right. I can't discuss the intimate details of it. Although but, I'd like to. But I would imagine you're still a, a partner business-wise with these Eagles. I can't discuss that. You either. can't even say that. But oh, I, see, because I, I need to know yeah. now. You're when they're happy. on stage, are they working for you? I yeah. I can't discuss. Well, that they either. play Hotel California. <laughs> they close every night with Hotel California, yeah. and it's a, yeah. it's a a big part of the show. You Thank know? God you made that deal where you were in writing a full partner. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you would have been screwed. That's Absolutely, right. yeah. Yeah, that's and not very rock and roll, is it? That what, they being screwed it? in the music business? Yeah. It's historic. Oh, Everybody it's historic. gets screwed. Either the record company screw you or the manager get, screw but you. But this is your bandmate screwing you. Yeah, that's especially, you know, the irony of it is, is I think Don Henley was the head of uh, uh, Coalition for Artist Rights. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. Wow. <laughs> but imagine, you, you were which, is, which is a bit uh, hypocritical. You were even you know. upset with Joe Walsh. You felt when you got thrown out of the band, he would have stuck up for you more. Well, yeah, I called Joe right after I got the phone call. And Joe right. and I had been, I mean, literally, I drove drove him to rehab. I, you know, put him in my car and took him there and did everything. By the way, everybody I... drove Joe to rehab. Oh, yeah, they did? that wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Not everybody got him to go in. Well, go ahead, yeah. I only had me and Joe in my car. I'm just joking, yes. And so you say, you say you were so close with him, and then yeah. you call him up and say, Joe, I just got thrown out of the Eagles. Let's go in there and tell those guys off. Yeah, well, I, it put Joe in a really difficult situation. I mean, right. you were talking about the control they have over him. Yeah. And he would have had to make a decision to put himself in a position where his neck was in the guillotine as well, along with mine, or just kind of step back and go, I'm sorry this happened. It's, yeah. it's kind of what he did. So yeah. he did. He remained silent. And yes, were you angry did. with him at that time? I wasn't angry. I was more hurt than I was angry. Right. You know, well, you I really can felt understand. He didn't have that protection. He didn't, he didn't have the protection. He didn't have the power. As yeah. a matter of fact, in my in- inquisitions, I was really asking not only for my benefit of what was going on, but for Joe and Timothy as well. They had no right to ask for anything right. and had not asked for mm-hmm. anything. I mean, uh, I'm sure whatever Joe gets paid is a nice paycheck, but it's a paycheck. That's it is right. not ownership. That's right. Uh, but if he writes a song... He owns the He owns so- something, something, I guess, right? but, but who knows? Or is Maybe it like the, working for the telephone company? Anything yeah. you discover, it belongs uh, to us. I, I don't know right now what exactly Joe's deal is with them. Right. I'm not, I can't discuss Well, that. they have an ego. Non, in your non-disclosure, what about uh, writing the book, though? Didn't they say to you, you are not allowed to write a book or talk about us or anything like well, that? Well, that was their countersuit. And right. then the last contract we signed, uh, what we would do is we would sign these ongoing contracts for every tour we did. Say, right. okay, we're going to do this and in this. And, and the last couple of contracts we signed, they put in this thing that said, nobody can do press or radio or mm-hmm. newsprint or write a book or anything without the express written consent of Henley and Fry. Huh. In other words, you, you couldn't open your mouth unless they right. said it was right. okay. Right. Wow. Right. So, I mean, so, uh, but, but, and, and so, but the, the term of those agreements were only for the tour. Ah. I see. But why write the book? In other words, you're a wealthy man. You okay. have more money than you'll ever yeah, need. Let, let's go back to where I was yeah. when I was terminated. I'd gone right. through a really long, difficult time uh, divorce with my wife, 29 right. years. So half the money went out the window. Well, I didn't care about that. My heart went out the window is what, what oh, really mattered. Well, so I'm sitting, in a, I'm sitting in a really dark place, you know. Right. And so I started doing a lot of meditation. And mm-hmm. while I would meditate, I kept reliving how I had gotten from that little dirt road in the south to where I was right now, having gone through all the uh, steps all along roads. the way. Yeah. yeah, everything that I'd done. So finally, I, I sat down at this computer and I started writing this stuff down. Not not in, with the intent of writing a book, but just more uh, self uh, therapeutic than anything cathartic. Like a journal, to just, yeah. Yeah, to just kind of start looking at myself and understanding more clearly, mentally and emotionally, what had happened to me. Uh-huh. Finally, I've realized I've got hundreds of pages of this stuff, and my fiance said, "You know, you should write a book about this." And I went. That's not a bad idea. You're but, a creative but I, guy. You're but looking I, for creative outlets. But I, I didn't do it uh, with any sort of like uh, sword in hand to decapitate people or show anybody for their you know warts or anything because we all have we all have warts and stuff in our lives. But lives. I'm sure Fry and Henley hate this book. Well, I, I don't know. I've only heard from their lawyers. I've never heard from them. <laughs> that means they hate it. <laughs> the lawyers don't call and say, God, great book. <laughs> so you, you uh, and you have a son from your first marriage. Was he angry with you? 
Didn't you have a son as well from your first marriage? Yeah, I have four kids. From oh, you have four first kids. Yes, Were they uh, angry with you for, over the divorce? Were you the bad yeah, guy? Yeah, originally, yeah. When yeah. Uh, you know, the reason I stayed was for my kids. You know, right. I was there for about eight to ten years, longer than I thought I should have been. And right. Bless my wife. Uh, we're still great friends. We talk every couple of weeks on the phone. She comes to my house for Thanksgiving dinner. We're wow. beyond all that anger. We've got kids, grandkids together. Right. We have hundreds of friends we share. We see each other at parties. So, you know, why throw a relationship like that that's I gotta been tell so you, long and so great away? For all the coke and everything, you look amazingly well. <laughs> I mean, you're about... You're kind of cute, too, Howard. How old are you now? I mean, seriously. How old are you now? Do I have to say on the air? Sure, Okay, I'm 60. I'll be 61 in September. Wow. You look wow. terrific. Wow, see, all these guys are turning 60. How old's the fiance? But she's a youngster, huh? She's 42. All right, that's nice. She'll kill me for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Oh, is she hot? Uh, yeah, she's beautiful. I she bet. was uh, uh, Miss Niagara. She's Canadian and uh, was a uh, runner-up to Miss... Cool. It's in the book. There's a photograph in the book. Naked or uh, clothed? No, not... <laughs> I'm clothed? the only one, I think, lately that's seen her naked, I hope. Uh, you never <laughs> Although know. I am out of town, you know. <laughs> what, a, what a shame that here you make such great music with those guys and it, it'll never be again you know you can't work with those guys well, they you just can't, made it impossible you never say never you, you say know? yeah that's well you true. did do a reunion in 94 in yeah 94. we were back together in 94 how that, was that well that was uh it was a separatist segregated <laughs> in, in, in uh, there was no communication during that very little as a matter right. of fact everybody went in separate cars to the show we had separate dressing wow. rooms backstage as soon as the last note was off we scattered didn't wow. you say at nobody one point nobody wanted to be in the same room I saw you guys at Giant fun. Stadium oh yeah tour, that was great and yeah. it was a great concert but uh -huh. you know it just do you still talk to Joe Walsh is that a I done? would love to I've uh, reached out to Joe many times and you, you know I think it, he's in a really difficult position to be able to have a relationship they might I think he's a traitor if right, he's talking right. to you. So when's the last time you spoke to him? Uh, at a deposition about three years <laughs> ago. Oh, yeah, that's, I gave him a big hug, and I apologize for having to have him come and do that. And, right, you know, right. it's just awful. Hey, man, did he understand that you he had did. to do that? He did. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, we uh, even ran into that control thing. Remember, Joe came in, and what song did he do? Desperado. Desperado. Yeah. Yeah. He Don sang it. Uh, Don Henley went berserk. He of said course. he didn't want Joe performing that uh, by himself oh, I know. on our show. Oh, I know. Yeah, he got in a lot of trouble. Joe actually used to play Life in the Fast Lane in his uh, solo gig, mm -hmm. and Henley came out and said, Accept no substitutes. <laughs> and so I felt like saying that when they go out and play Hotel California. I felt like saying, hey, Dodd, accept no substitutes. But Were you shocked that they named the album Hotel California? Because, after all, it was your song. Uh, I was shocked uh, when we finished it, uh, the whole album. We had sat and listened to the playback party, you know, where everybody's there. And the record company execs are there. And we were right. in the record plant in L.A. And we're playing it back. And... When we finished, Hotel California was like the last one on the cut, not the beginning on the, uh, of the record. It was the last one on the playback reel, and Henley turned around and went, that's going to be our single. And I went, oh, no, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> it's six minutes long. It's right. slow. You can't dance to it. So everybody wanted, like, rock and roll and disco and right. R&B. It's got this, it breaks down in the middle where the tempo stops, and it's got this two-minute guitar. So, so you felt pressure instead of pride. It's the wrong format. Right. Well, right hey, right, if, you, right. if you do enough of the right drugs, you could dance to that. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done, it. done it. You've can, done it. You've done it. Can I ask that one thing? In that Hotel California video, a couple of things. Uh, it's amazing just how different you look. That the long hair you had and the beard and the flannel and everything. Uh -huh. I mean, and you, you look you look better now. I think. Oh right, well, right? thank you. <laughs> but um, coming on to you. You, you got the you got the double guitar going. Yeah. And uh -huh. Joe's next to you with the single guitar. Right. And like one thing, I mean, me and my friends were big Eagles fans. The one thing we always thought was you really looked so pissed off at each other. Besides that one moment, like you. You look like you just had a like a voice like a look like I don't give a shit anymore. By that point, had you had it had it by the time you made that no, video? No, not there. I mean, Joe and I used to really push each other to the edge, playing wise. I mean, right. it was like so. It wasn't a look of anger. No, no, it wasn't no, a look. Right. Of it anger. was intensity. It was intensity. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know, got our game face on. We're kind of going for it. Yeah, right. you're very you're, you're very much into it. Yeah, that's okay. why when you look at Joe, he's really intense. He's into it. And then <laughs> no. I say you're showing. <laughs> but you <laughs> said one time, him up, you know? one show that you did, it got so bad between. Uh, 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 Henley. Our, Hen Henley and Fry that uh, they had to turn off all the microphones because you could hear the yelling yeah. and screaming. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I would have loved to have been at that yeah. show. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love shows wild. like that. Yeah. Also, One thing, you know, when we talk about songs that you can make a living off of, mm -hmm. how much money 
Has that song made? Generated? Not enough. Not enough, huh? <laughs> really? But you never no, have to work No, it's made again. a lot, yeah. Because yeah. 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 I mean, no, that fine, yeah. you, don't, you can't get away from. How it's crazy, everywhere. How crazy did the sex get? Uh, did you and Joe Walsh... Did you, <laughs> you and Joe, Joe Walsh, Walsh ever, had sex? No, did you and Joe oh. Walsh ever bang a chick together? Did you no, ever double team no, someone? No. Never did. Not that I can remember. Well, you know what the but other Joe used to throw. But Joe used to uh, chainsaw hotels. He did, he would, yeah. he, he would really do all that he stuff. He did. He had an electric chainsaw because the, the gasoline power winds made too much noise. You could hear him coming. He had an electric. But the electric one, you just hear the blade coming through the walls. Oh, my God. Why would he do that? Why would he do, to destroy property like that? Well, you know, it was a comic relief is, is what it was. Like Boredom, I said, you got yeah. 20, 22 hours of sitting around with nothing to do in some hotel in Boise, but the Idaho. Poor manager, you got to find The somewhere. poor manager of the hotel probably said, oh, my God, this guy just... I mean, I'm sure you had to pay for it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It came but out of your still, yeah, yeah, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. Well, enjoyed I also it. read that We Joe, had some of the greatest times together, trashing hotel rooms <laughs> and hanging out. I read the one of Joe, Walsh's, uh, Joe the, Walsh's best friends was Keith Moon, uh-huh. right? He hung out with him a lot. So right. that's probably where he got some of that behavior Absolutely, from. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don you Felder's the, book, by the way, we what? should mention, is called mm-hmm. Heaven and Hell, My Life ah. in the Eagles. And it's available in stores now. And as uh, Gary and Artie can attest to, it is a fascinating book. Well, you know what? I'm wondering if he gets into the sexual or whatever escapades of some of the other members of the band. Because the other day I was talking to somebody and they just kept saying they apparently had some... Uh, private knowledge of Don Henley, mm-hmm. and they just kept saying to me, "He's a freak. He's a freak." Is Henley a freak? Oh, I, I can't really the comment on that. <laughs> who had the I'm biggest penis? Lawyer, who lawyer. had the biggest penis in the Eagles? I Quickly, can't comment how on dare that you? <laughs> Throw you right oh out of here. Goodness. A couple of quick questions from the audience because I'm sure people want to speak to you. So let's go say hi. Do you have a question for Don Felder? <laughs> hey now, how you guys doing? Hey Don, it's an honor to talk to you, man. Oh, I love best. all you, I love all your work. God bless you. This is Mike from Bradley, and I think I don't think the Eagles are the same without you. And and uh, what do you think of the new album? And do you think Artie should boycott the Eagles show that he's going to go? to? <laughs> yeah, you're going to see the Eagles, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, at the Borgata in Atlantic City, I have plans, but I might not go now because I like Don. Well, I think Don should go with you. What do you think that would take to the state? No, you don't don't want that. Their album, uh, I've listened to it, and I was uh, really shocked and disappointed that they have, in my opinion, one of the greatest rock and roll guitar players alive today in Walsh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you just don't hear him on the record Mm -hmm. at all. There's no Joe Walsh. It sounds like a shitty country record. It does. Yeah, it sounds like kind of a a Nashville-produced record. I was was disappointed. The book is called Heaven and Hell, My Life in the Eagles. It's available in the stores now. Why don't you check it out? It's very well well written. You wrote it yourself, or did you have a little help? I wrote most of it myself. I had a help with a from an English writer who did a lot of fact checking and took a lot of my ramblings, and we both edited it and condensed it down. And but this is really from like your journal. Yes. This is. Yeah. This is yeah, okay. I was going to say, as a singer, you say fact checking. That's interesting to me because you you're writing a riff like that and creating something. It, there's a possibility that you might have heard it somewhere before and. It might be somebody else's thing. Do you get afraid of that? Yeah, or, well, you have to. Right, yeah. so you uh, have a guy who, who will check a, a bunch of l- yeah. legal things and say, no, look, that's original. Yeah, I'm, because I'm, as a comedian, that happens sometimes, you too. Bet. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you think of a joke, and you go, that's a great joke, but maybe I heard it before. Sure, you know? I, uh, I'm writing a CD right now about halfway through one for uh, next summer, right. and I won't receive CDs from anybody. People right. go, oh, I got some song ideas, because no. if anything shows up that's even faintly uh, uh, Howard does the it. same thing with scripts, right? You won't yeah, take won't a script yeah. Yeah, you have to, because if you're writing, then... You have a real hot daughter, right? She's a model. Oh, she's unbelievable, yeah. <laughs> How old a girl are we talking she's about? She's 24. And she's got a real modeling career going, huh? Well, she's she does modeling, but she's a singer. She's been signed to Warner Brother Records. Oh, she's wow. about She's an unbelievable singer. You have to hear her sing. She, okay. As a matter of fact, I'll, bring, I'll come back with her. We'll sing something on the show when a record oh, comes out. I would love that. All right, yeah, that sounds fantastic. good. Well, you're a hell of a guy. It's great to hear your story. I don't know. We're only hearing his side of this whole thing. Maybe well, he was the fun. Well, I don't know. That's yeah. the surprise I have you. Guess <laughs> who's coming in now? <laughs> Howard, can I ask? Can I ask? Can I ask yeah. one more quick question? Yes, go ahead, Artie. The um, you know, you had the uh, the contention yet you had, but with Henley especially, he, clearly you're a great singer too. Uh, is it was it tough to? Give that song to Henley to sing as well. I mean, no, you know. I think Don's got one of the greatest voices. He in rock does, and roll. yeah. But you know, and if if I had my choice of hearing myself sing or Henley, right. I'd much rather hear Don. You'd rather so. hear your song sung by Henley than yourself. Absolutely, yeah. I'll right. tell you, you got he's a nice a, voice. Though. He's a beautiful, beautiful voice. But right. since they want to be so rock and roll, why does everything coming out of them sound so country? I I don't know. My money nowadays. I hear from what I hear from music people, yeah. everything has to be in a specific category to make any kind of money. Right. Like, right. Well, I understand why they were 
road a country album this time, but why does it always sound so country if they want to be rock and roll? Well, I, there's no such thing as rock and roll anymore. Right. That's right. That's true. One of my favorite renditions of that song. See if I can find it. Uh, I don't have it. Okay, I give up. Anyway, listen. I was going to play you something funny, but that, that'll be another <laughs> well, time. Another time. Yes. It's GP1 and Pink. Oh, Pink. Well, tell those guys to learn red from Pink. Uh, this is one of my favorite. No, no. The guys, this isn't working. It's not here. Trust me. I'm, it's a different song. You know, after I know what you're going to play, I think, and after what uh, Don just said, we should leave it there. All right. Thank yeah. you, Artie. All right. We're going to take a break. I want to thank you so much, Don. Don Felder's book once again. Heaven and Hell, My Life in the Eagles, available in stores now. Don. Yeah. How'd it go in there, man? Oh, it was great fun. I was a little nervous going in. I was afraid Howard was going to go for the jugular. <laughs> but he was very kind to me and very gracious. I enjoyed What do you like about doing a show? Well, it's the first time I've played live on the radio since I was 15. I used to go down to my local radio stations as a kid just to get some publicity and go play uh, Apache or Walk Out Run or something like that on the radio. It was really the first time I'd done that, and I really enjoyed it. It was great wow. fun. It's exciting. That's pretty cool, man. Is that, that's why you were nervous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it seems like you had some rough times in the Eagles. Um, it, was it hard to talk about stuff like that? Not really. Well, it was right at first. It's like any painful separation, you know, when you uh, go through a divorce or lose partners or leave a band. At first, you're really kind of hurt by it, and it's difficult to deal with those emotions. But as time goes by, you realize that for every door that closes, there's a new door that opens, and you can look back at your life and go, you know, I had a pretty good life. I was blessed along the way here. I, I can't be uh, too harsh and complain too much about it, so I'm happy. That's good to hear, man. All right, thanks for something. Bye thanks. today. I'm David Tell, and um, I'm here to pour myself out, get the message out about the new gong show on Comedy Central, and of course to um, uh, reminisce about our Afghanistan USO tour. So, now how did how did the tour go for you? Uh, I think uh, we'll all agree that like the tour is great. It's the getting there that sucks. The flying, taking like five planes to get there, it's spending 20 hours, you know and uh, very unsmokable airports, which was a shock to me. Turkey, you can't smoke in the airport, can't believe it. Yeah, you can bang a boy in the, no, I'm kidding, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that, was, that was the hard part. And the heat, the heat of the, uh, of the whatever that was, desert uh, areas was very, very crazy. But the guys did a great job, and uh, the troops were very uh, into it, so. I think Dave Battelle's got some real pressure on him. He's got to go out and promote the gong show. They're starting it on Comedy Central. He's the host. He's the host. Yeah, yeah it's his show, so he's got to get out there. You think there's real pressure? It's Comedy Central. Yeah, no, well, no, there's pressure. They're, they're banking on this? They're banking on him. All right. He's their, he's their one hope. <laughs> now that they lost Dave Chappelle? Yeah. What's up? Is there pressure on you to promote the Gong Show? In other words, you want this to be, <laughs> but I mean, you can laugh all you want. But this is I'm a, sorry. This is a big deal to you. It I mean, really is. You need this to be successful. This is my last chance. This is show business. I mean, you've done a lot of work for Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. You've had HBO specials. Uh, you're a successful comedian. You okay. had your own show. For I that. did. Yeah. That didn't work out. It didn't. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it ended. Well, I ended it though. Right. Oh, yeah, you it did. was going to yeah. kill him that show. Why did you end your own David Tell show? Uh because I only have one liver and uh it got harder to do as the it was called the insomniac show not the david tell show all right but it should have been called it everyone called it the david the Did whole they? industry called they it called the up the, the whole industry yeah yeah um everyone uh, in the industry called it the david exactly tell show. the variety of course yeah no uh they called it uh why man because it was getting harder to do but i wanted to keep doing hour specials and they wanted the half hours and you know i i guess in hindsight i should have kept doing it but look at me now i'm like an old you know you know, drunk. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it just seems like. Are you really a drunk? Uh, yeah. And you that's are. why the yeah. gong show is like a perfect rehab of. Um, do you have a drinking problem? Yeah. Well, what do. is this? Is the first time on the air? No, are but I'm you, saying. I mean, but, but I'm, I'm I did how not. Much I haven't had a drink in like six months. So, oh, and the guys will back me up on the tour there. So. How much is this a shtick, this addict kind of person? I don't you? speak um, early Jewish um, vaudeville terms. Right. How much of my shticklock? Yeah. How um, much? <laughs> no, I mean, how much of this is your person? Like, like Dean Martin. Everyone thought he was a raging alcoholic, and maybe he wasn't. But, but some people have suggested it was a, a yeah an act. Uh, an act. Yeah. Is this an act with you, or are you really having a problem? Do you need to go to rehab? Um, no, I, I think that what happened is just I got, you know, uh, I just stopped because, uh, you know, it was, 
I just was sick of, you know, just doing nothing. And, uh, you know, the drinking was boring at, after a while and shameful. Was there cocaine involved? Uh, yeah, of course. There, of course. But that was <laughs> years, years ago. Right. Now, but Cyrus but, Silverman said when she went out with you, when she was your girlfriend, right. she saw no evidence of drinking or any of this behavior. It came after her, she said. I thought he was always depressed, though. Well, I didn't have any money then. You didn't have money to buy alcohol. Exactly. I didn't have any of that kind of um, remote control money, as we used to call it back in the 80s. So they called you and said, we're starting the gong show again. Wait. Jump around and okay, and what else happened? Wait, hold it. <laughs> Go ahead. Don't worry, I'll get back. This to is everything. how you break a guy down. You don't oh, stay uh, on the same top. I thought we were on the same team a minute ago. <laughs> By the time I'm done, you'll see. Watch out for a curveball coming. I think I just got it. No, no, it was Sarah Silverman. Right. I'll, I'll go back to that if you want. No, that's okay. Uh, she, what are you going to do with the wedding? That's what I really want. <laughs> can I say? Go can ahead. I get, Give me your two suggestion. weddings. <laughs> it seems to work in every Ashton Kutcher movie. Why wouldn't it work for you? You know, you're making a good point. You run from the guest house. House to the front of the house right. and the back of the hand. You know, <laughs> and the mate's like, what's going on, Mr. Howard? That is genius because there's so many people who split up. You could have the other partner there. That's a very, very boring. Yes, All right. Howard. So what yeah. happened with the gong show? Yeah, yeah. Dave. Now, let me, uh, can I say one thing? Did you Tip read, of the hat. Did you? Re oh, thank you. Tip of the hat uh, to you. You know, Howard takes it to the level that we can never get it to with these acts, you know, because right. you've brought on all these amazingly freakish people, cool people, brought right. out, you know, their fun, and I'm like, how, how do we do that? And I don't think we got to that level, but you were the, uh, the inspiration. inspiration. Thank you. There you go. So, and well, that's not just sucking up. That was, that's thank actually you. true. No, no, so. it's, it's, it's nice to hear someone say that. So, But uh, the gong show, were you a fan of the gong show? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think the gong show was like the first time you actually saw Freaks. I and was doing a fan great of it. things, yeah. and you know, like ukulele acts and guys in a bathtub and Jean Jean, the dancing machine, all that stuff. And that was before YouTube, so that was like really the only outlet. Right. We take it down and dirty more the road of hilarious than that. We've got something going that they don't have going for them, which is great judges and the judges from Andy Dick to Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, uh, Adam Carolla, all these different people came on and they had a ball with it. They just like they get involved in some of the acts. They like you know like lay it down. It's not like Sharon Osbourne giving this like you know critique or some English right. you know dandy giving some kind of like you'll never make it mate oh blah, so blah, it's, blah, blah. A, it's a direct rip off of Howard show exactly <laughs> thank you we have everybody from unicyclers to queefers and right. you know and in queefers. between yeah that's your you know yeah. that's your bread and butter well, you do here. have a queefer <laughs> yes Oh, so right. can a queef a win? Uh, I wanted, see, that's the thing. It, it, the whole thing that really got me was that, uh, you know, America's Got Talent, it's always like the juggler and, you know, the uh, you know the guy on the unicycle with the bag. And, like, uh, we had those people on, but I wanted the... The hardcore. Yeah, the vaudeville, right. uncabaret people, like the girl shooting a dart with her vagina at right. her husband with balloons. I mean, I was like, I love this stuff. But it's only so far you can go. It's, it's still... Cable television. No, they show it. Comedy Central is very cool about it. They, I, I give them a real a dart out of her vagina. Yeah, well, you don't see the actual, you know, vagina. Va yeah, the thing, but you see, you know, it coming out. And I uh, see. You know, so if this it is, is a kids program, the Gong Show. I remember it was on in the afternoon. Now, are you able to negotiate with Comedy Central a decent salary? I mean, it's they're, they're pretty tight with the, the dollar, are they not? I'm betting that D Dave got twenty grand an episode. Wow, I say that's high. It could be, it, it, could, <laughs> it could be between twenty to fifty, but it could be thirty. I'll say around closer to twenty than fifty. Well, you know, the funny thing is, uh, you know, Artie, you you also are a sitcom actor, so you yeah. know, if I was going to use my old quote from my part on Wings, um, <laughs> <laughs> from when I was on Just Shoot Me. Um, <laughs> No, but that's that's part of it too. But Comedy Central, money wise, you know they bring the money if you bring the ratings. Right. And uh, the, the the good the good and the bad of, of uh, Comedy Central is that you can do you can take it to the next level. Like the Gong Show would not work, and they've tried it a million different times. Yes. A lot of guys have tried it. Yes, and you know it is kind of like the Titanic of like you know going down with the ship. And uh, you know I could ramble off many hosts who have tried to do it. And we we immediately went in and said like we're not going to try and do what Chuck Barris did. Okay, right. I'm not wearing a suit. I'm not wearing a Indian war bonnet with a kilt. But Chuck and, Barris had fun with it. Yeah, he was great. He was like almost looked drunk. Uh, yeah, I always I thought he was drunk. high. How yeah. long did you date Sarah Silverman? <laughs> um, I don't know. Are you asking me to go to the wedding? Yes. How long Wait, did could you I date? go? What to my wedding? Yeah. 
Do you oh, feel not that with that face. Do you feel to my <laughs> wedding? Do you want to go to my wedding? Oh, I guess my gong show money. I can't. Uh, I no, can't afford. I mean, we're not uh, a we Del figurine. Know. What if I bring a beautiful Kyrgyzstanian girl that I met in Kyrgyzstan? <laughs> I love you. And I think you're great, and I'd like to become friendly with but you. But you're not we, coming to the wedding. But we never hang out together. I mean, would you really want to be there? Two, three words: bong hits and Scrabble. Well, Let's make it happen. Let me All put right. it to you this way, Dave. <laughs> Uh, how? What kind of gift could you afford a crate no. and barrel? Uh, look, uh, talk to me about Sarah Silverman and Jimmy Kimmel announced they have broken up. Right. And that's why I bring this up. Do you think it's because of the Gong Show? No. <laughs> Is that like a thing in their relationship? How if long? the Gong Show ever comes back, I want to ask you something. Go ahead. Why did you and Sarah break up? And maybe that'll give me insight into why Jimmy and Sarah broke up. I don't. Uh, why? Yeah. Did she break up with you? Or of course, she did. Yes. You were in love with her. Absolutely. Uh, seriously. Well, what do you want me to say? No, yeah, no, I, I don't know if you're being sarcastic. But it was puppy love, you know what I'm saying? All right, it was it's a long like time ago. It's not like the adult love that you you power couples share, you know? <laughs> right. The love of a, a, a jet getaway weekend to a... Where do you guys go again? But isn't all love puppified in a sense? <laughs> <laughs> where do you guys head off to, whether Papa it's the Hamptons or, or Darfur, yeah. to just help out? I'll hold it, hold it. To hold an AIDS baby? <laughs> try, try to be serious with me about this. He can't I'm trying, do it. I'd See, rather... This, I'm trying to get okay. insight. His defense mechanism is up, Dave. Come on. How long did you date Cyrus Silverman? How many months, years? I don't know. Um, well, I would like to think it was uh, a couple of years. A couple of years. I, yeah. And okay. what would she say? I don't know. I, I, she brings it. I, I, right. know, okay, I'm I just asking you. I'm trying to get insight because I like Jimmy and Sarah very much. I think they're going to get back together. Bruce. You do? Yes. Why? Well, sweeps weeks are coming up. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, October's <laughs> rolling around and nothing gets... You think it'll be a big deal if they get you back together. You think this is a publicity stunt? Yes, she does. No, I really do. No, but in all seriousness... You yeah. were going out with her. You loved her. Right. Was it? Was the sex great? I keep thinking that Jimmy and Sarah maybe didn't have great sex. That Jimmy maybe got bored or something. Really? I don't know. I'm I'm trying to put this together. You don't think Sarah so, got bored with the sex? She could have. I'm asking from a man's point of view who so slept Jimmy with Sarah. So Jimmy was the great lover. <laughs> was Sarah a great lover? She was a great. She. I would say she's like three lovers in one. <laughs> no, is she a great lover? <laughs> Isn't that a term that you really only use for like an older oh, man? Come on, stop. She's oh, a great lover. Man. Is she a great lover? I yeah, she is. She she's is a very. You know, I'll tell you one thing, and this is all in truth. Uh, she's a very alive person. She's right. very uh, in the moment and all that kind of stuff. And me, a brooding, like you know, balding <laughs> old Dark guy. Kind. That that's the kind of stuff that you're attracted to. Right. She's like a, a live person, and she's good at sports. And I could give a shit about sports, but you know, right. but, it was, but it was, but the sex was frequent. In other words, it wasn't being withheld. It was a good. Is sex that what you life. think would happen with them? I don't know. I'm trying to piece this together. It's shocking to me. I'm actually upset about it. I enjoy, Are you really? Yeah, because I enjoy hanging out with them as a couple. Well, why can't you still do that? I, I, as I a will, couple, I can't. They, they won't get together as a couple. <laughs> as a T-Mobile cell phone, <laughs> can't you? And, well, and you know what? I'll what tell you is your time. theory on this? What do you think happened? I really just heard about it the other day because right. you know. A little, we got a little saying in Afghanistan. Right. Um, <laughs> if you love it, uh, no. Uh, I, I really don't know, but I, I'd say that both of them are, um, you know, like, I, I don't know Jimmy that well, but I, I know her pretty well, or I did. And uh, I, I think that, you know, I, they're probably working a lot, you know, like right. he has his show. Right. And she has her show, and that's a lot of work. And right. then I think, you know, uh, you know, it's like adult stuff. It's not like when you're, you know, just out of college kind of right. hanging around things. So it's it's more of an adult scene that I probably wouldn't, you know, know about. But uh, yeah. they, that's probably, I'd say, the problem. You know, Last that, time I like, saw her, she said, I love him. I'm going to be with him the rest of my life. Blah, 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 blah. And what happened? Well, this was the rest up. of her life. You just didn't know it didn't mean she was going to be dead. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand it, to tell you the truth. I really, I do really not. don't get it either. And you yeah. know, do you, uh, have you ever done Jim's show, Jimmy's show? Yeah, I have. Yeah. When my uh, during the insomnia thing, I came out and uh, yeah, no, I did I, you discuss I, having sex with uh, her? His girl? No, I didn't. You didn't. Why yeah. not? Wouldn't that be great television to say, hey, I banged her. You banged her. Let's compare. That's notes. pretty uh, rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> it's not it? so much comedy. Uh, not, that's, that's like that's what not rock funny. guys do. Like Eric Clapton could do that, or somebody. Like I, that, I don't you know. know. I mean, uh, I would have turned in. I would listen to the you guys comparing notes and saying, you know, she didn't do this, but then Jimmy would go, oh no, she did don't that. Don't you with love me. it when she and he goes? She never oh, licked my, my balls God, she and never that upset that me. me. And uh, you, know, you know, Dave wants to do jokes about shampoo and a sock. <laughs> you know, every time I come in here, you always bring up Sarah and all that stuff. What? 
do I have to do that? Like, if I found Bin Laden on that trip, <laughs> and I also opened Iron I Man, only brought, would that? No, I only brought it up because of the news that they were. Bringing. I know. I thought you could offer insight. I did. Uh, do you think it has something to do with the gas prices? Now this know. leads into neutral territory. <laughs> do you have sex videos of her with you? No, I no. I, you never took her before that. No, never. Wow. Well, you all know, right. I'll, I will you, drop you, it. Down. Like, I mean, honestly, Howard, would yeah. you? I, isn't, don't you feel like that's like you got to be really on your game to do that kind of stuff? Like I, sex video? Yeah. You know, I've tried it and it never works really? out well. I've done it a couple of times in my life. Uh, now, a man of your position, why would you even put yourself in that? It in that looks. Position? I look so bad. You do on these videos. You know, you think you're in decent shape. You know shape. what? You really aren't the good. You know, the best judge. You should show us. I did yeah. one where I took the video on my penis, and, <laughs> and, and I don't know. It must have been bright light, but it looked very veiny and, and, and <laughs> like it, it was. I was like, ugh. You're too so harsh you used it for yourself. Critical. When yeah. people yeah. ask me that, I go, look, I, I I'm embarrassed by video of me not having sex, just <laughs> acting. Yeah, right. Just yeah, being yeah, around. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, That's what on. I mean. You're too critical of yourself. You should let somebody else judge it. Okay, after, Robin, you know, after after Gary, I'd love to have your after, critique. After Gary came back from Afghanistan, he yeah. came to me and he said, Dave Attell is a saint. Is a I saint? Said, a saint. He said they should call him Saint Attell. He I really said, is. Why do you... I said to Gary, why do you say this about David Tell? Because as far as I can see, he doesn't look like any kind of saint to me. Right. He seems very... Nobody's ever described him that way before. And he's yes. a Jew. And yeah. he's a Jew. That's right. And then the Jimmy the... thing, right? Right, right. <laughs> so, and he fucks Sarah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't see him being a <laughs> no saint. No saint has ever right. fucked Sarah. So Gary goes, Wolf, <laughs> there were days when we were traveling. You know how you talk. He goes, Wolf, <laughs> there were days we were traveling. And we would be very tired. And sometimes the USO would say, when you're eating, go have meals with the troops and talk to them. But sometimes we were so tired, we would just eat amongst ourselves. Uh -huh. But Dave Attell would go over to the troops' tables, no matter what was going on, and sit there and talk with them. It's very, very important. And the whole time he's there, he's talking to the he troops. He never shied away from the troops. Right. Well, is that accurate? That is accurate. And, uh, you know, the guys didn't know that. The, that's part of the USO thing. It's not just doing the shows, but, you know, like, they picked well, up real Artie quick. Well, Artie apparently didn't know. All right. Well, they, but they, Artie, Artie, Artie different. slept. Yeah. We, we just... <laughs> <laughs> Artie but, slept through all of Afghanistan. <laughs> but they were like, how do you do it? And I go, well, I was brought up as a runaway. And I was used to going truck to truck looking for love. No, no. It's... <laughs> what, what is These it guys are... Right. I'm sorry. Go ahead and explain yourself. The, I'll, I'll explain. I'm glad that... First of all, I'm glad I couldn't pick better guys to go with because uh, not just Artie and uh, Gary, but uh, Nick and Jim Florentine were great. And uh, the whole thing is that they, the monotony, uh, we see the war in little snippets on the news and it's explosions and shooting. But then there's the other times of just monotonous routine, heat, uh, being distant from their loved ones, their lives. You know, there's a lot of people there in the Guard and Reserve who have other lives that they've had to put on hold to do it. And, and what the we psychological do is pressure knowing that they might be killed at any Exactly. Right. But besides all that, there's really just the, the, the never-endingness of it and the sameness of it. And that could be horrific or it could be boring, but it's over and over and over for over a year. And we're just like new faces that come in. We're not, I don't consider myself famous. I'm not, you know, Jessica Simpson or anything like that. But we just come in and like, whether they know you or not, it's just somebody else to talk to. Like, you know, comics are great because we, we don't bring any equipment. We just come in, tell a couple of, you know, uh, dick jokes and right. we're out of there. Right. And yeah. they love it dirty. And, you know, they might say the whatever the powers that be keep it clean do this whatever yeah. but when it gets down to it they always love it dirty and and hey. and we love bringing it to them that way so. right yeah the so shows was a good uh, experience. the shows were very uh Risque. Very successful, and like obviously Dave destroyed, as did uh, Nick. Everybody killed. Yeah, and Gary. Gary did a good job. And I mean, it is so satisfying afterwards at the meet and greet when these guys come up to you and say, "You know what, man? We, I mean, and every one of them were nice. We really appreciate you coming. It, we, we laughed, and it was good to escape for a while. And Dave has gone probably about four or five times. Is that right? You've been there quite yeah, a different bit, place. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've so, been to Iraq, Iraq. You've been to Afghanistan, and you know, Afghanistan used to be the one where everybody was like, I. I hope I get sent to Afghanistan because it's safer now. It's really like it's going crazy. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you feel? Did you feel in danger at any time when the mortar attack? We read about the mortar attack. We asked Gary and we asked Artie about it. Was that it your yesterday. first time being under attack? 
Uh, well, besides coming on this show, right. <laughs> the emotional mortars, right. the rounds shot at me, the salvo. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in. <laughs> no, uh, the uh, it happened in Iraq too, but it wasn't. It wasn't like where we had to get in the bunkers. It was just kind of like, oh, by the way, we were attacked. But <laughs> the funny, the best part. There's two stories I'd like to say about the whole tour. One of them was uh, I was roommates with Artie for a while and Nick DiPaolo, right. and. Uh, <laughs> That's a fun room. Uh, it was a fun room, and Artie, um, uh, <laughs> it's hard to sleep with him because he, um, he, you know, you think like he's a bigger guy, he must snore. Well, I snore, you know, right. Nick might snore or whatever, but he talks in his sleep. Oh, no. And really? not just talks, he orders food in his sleep. Oh, I'm not I kidding around. Get Nick DiPaolo on the phone. It's so true. Yeah, no. Is that right? Uh, Howard, uh, That's Dan, crazy. Dana and a couple other chicks have said this to me. You order food in your I, and how yes. I, 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 he, he sounds contrived, but he's telling the truth because it is true. Other people have told me this, and it's so embarrassing yet so funny. I yeah. never heard that. Nick, Does it I'll arrive? Yeah. Does Can the I, food come? After well, what he did I say? It? Nick, I'm no Craig Gas, but may I try it? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you got, yeah. It's like. Uh, two burgers and a do. You know, like Mountain Dew. Two wow. burgers and a do. Oh, he Are you serious? Yeah. Shorty. You mean he's laying there and all of a sudden you start hearing him talking about food? <laughs> two burgers and a do. Burgers. But what not else just laying there. What like, else is just he... kind of shaky, kind of like. I, get, I do. I get the shakes. In, what, you know, what, just... else, what else does he order? I'm curious. Pizza? Well, yeah. Nick DiPaolo well, said the two burgers and a do thing. And that yeah, was why I knew they true. weren't bullshit. And just two separate times they said the same exact thing that I ordered. Wow. Yeah. And and, that, and I'm like, I don't even drink Mountain Dew. <laughs> and the whole trip, too, he was not really eating. He was eating apples the whole time. And he had, like, one big meal. And oh, that was about it's it. It's amazing. You know, Gary was telling me about you in Afghanistan. And he even said, he said this, and I hope I don't embarrass yeah. you. He says, at one point, Dave Attell waved his hands over the desert and it turned into water. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, you know what? No, I was afraid, like, <laughs> flying in the helicopters and all that kind of stuff. But that was that was pretty cool that yeah. we got, got a chance to that do that. That was really did cool. Did you shoot off a gun like Artie and Gary? Yeah, I did. You did, and I, you liked it. Yeah, no, it, that's the coolest part of it, because, like, uh, you know, they were like, hey, how do you know, like, this? because I watch all those military, like, history channels. Why stuff. do you I do love it? that stuff. Why do you go, and that, you didn't just go once, this is your fifth time over. Oh, well, no, I, I've been to uh, Afghanistan twice, and Iraq once, and then I've done, like, other USO Why stuff. do you do it? Do you feel an obligation? Yeah, I also feel that, uh, you know, like, we're not really asked to do anything, and that, like, it's a really good, it, it's a... It, I'm, I guess we're lucky that we get to do it because uh, we're in like show business. Right. But uh, you know, I just feel like you know, don't get a chance to do uh, anything. And like I've traveled a lot, but you know, that part of the world is like a whole different animal. And, it really know, is. Like you it's... never, you would never. Well, I, I told this to I think uh, Nick, whatever. When we were in the Kyrgyzstan airport, by the way, do not honeymoon around there because that. <laughs> uh, there was a guy getting on the plane. <laughs> With a bow and arrow. I'm not kidding around, Howard. I'm exactly. not kidding. Oh, a Mongolian uh, hordesman, whatever, was getting on with a bow. And he was at the counter, like, when can I get that flight? And I'm like, that guy's got a real bow and arrow on him, you know? And you're only afraid of the bow and arrow from a distance, but up right. close, it's kind of, like, retarded, you know? Yeah. I mean, no. It's so, so, a bit I'm working at. So you, you are a man who feels compelled to help his country any way yes. you can. And you do it. Yeah. And, and you do it with joy. Can I now, say one thing? Yes. Okay. Uh, the biggest surprise, delightful surprise, was when we went to the Predator base and the... Did did uh, Gary tell you this? Oh, yeah, the colonel. The yeah. colonel of the Predator base is like the most devout fan of your show. Wow. Anyway, because we walk in and he's giving us like a bullet point um, thing on the Predator, which is pretty cool because mm. Jeff Anthony... Usually when you do the USO tour, you meet everybody. You meet, like, the guy who's in charge of sanitation. Right. And he gives you, like, a rundown on how they do the base and, like, how they set up the city and all that kind of stuff. So some of it's kind of monotonous. But, you know, you're there to meet the guy, so you got to, you know, sit through it. But this guy goes, I got a couple questions. One about the merger. And, like, he's like a girl. <laughs> he's up on it. Yeah. And the next one, uh, Jim, are you still going out with Robin? Yeah. And then, like, where's Artie? Is he coming out? You know, well, he Dave, wants you to be up fanatical. Right. Dave has been there so much, Howard. He he knows enough, and he reads a lot of it, I guess. Yeah. We're well, still to the army guys in army terms like like a like a guy will have a rifle and we we don't even know what the fuck it is and Dave will be going what are you using that do you use S50s or you got a 485 Glock on that I thing? didn't say that. I mean, no you knew numbers uh, you're a gun freak uh, you're not uh, a Nick, gun freak Nick you in uh, Lake Tahoe you're on the air about. go ahead good morning Howard thank you very much uh, I got a question for David Tell was yeah. there any time on the trip 
that you guys were so scared that you said, oh, man, this is it. I don't know if we're ever going to get out of this one or anything like that. Artie, uh, Gary. Probably when Artie was talking in his sleep about food. I thought he was going <laughs> to eat me. No. Uh, I think it's scary. I think the real scary part, because they can take really good care of you. The sure. scariest part is the flying. You know, like you fly in a lot of different aircraft, old military aircraft, like from the, That's you know, the 60s. Howard, no, but, no and, windows. And right. it's claustrophobic. And, yes. And you're a target, too. And, well, you, you can't fly over Iran or Pakistan, yes. so it's really... Remember how you used to always bitch and you were so right about how France wouldn't let us fly? Right. So these fucking planes have to go around and use more fuel. It takes longer, and these these soldiers are packed in these planes with all this equipment, and because you can't fly over fucking Iran or France or whenever we couldn't do that, it takes longer, and they're tired, right. but... And you don't realize how important windows are on a plane to make yeah. you feel more secure. Right. You're just up and you don't know what's going on. But during the mortar fire, I I, I got to a point where I really was a little, uh, a little first of all, claustrophobic in the bunker. Second of all, really? knowing, uh, a little bit because there was a lot of us packed in. And when we're walking, you know, and that kid said to me, look, if, the way I look at it, if you, hit, you get, if you get hit, you get vaporized. And it's like, it's going to be weird just... Uh, that got to me a little bit. Yeah. But, but they make uh, you feel... It's got to hurt to be vaporized. But they make... What, yeah, what is vaporized, Artie? Can you explain that a little well, bit? Well, when... So you in other words, thought, In other words, you get hit with a weapon that's so powerful that it just, like, can turn you into dust immediately. Like, you don't even feel about yeah, it. Yeah, there's it. nothing left of you. Right. Gary said at one point, Dave Attell jumped on the mortar. <laughs> <laughs> I would have so done great. that if it was good for the show. Well, did you uh, ever at any time assess who would be a problem if, if it got heavy? Well, I did think that uh, if, let's say, we were captured, uh -huh. I know as a Jew, I would have had to uh, <laughs> think out one of the other guys. Right. No, if we, if we, if we, uh, like, say, got uh, into a crash and we were in the desert by ourselves, right. abandoned uh -huh. alone, and had to resort to cannibalism, <laughs> right. I figure I'm going first because they're lasting two months on me. Mm. Well, let's go uh, to Jerry. Jerry, you're on the air in Dover. Okay. Hey, hey, besides that, the gong show looks like it's going to be funny as hell. But, oh, thanks, man. Uh, Hey, Sarah Silverman, mm -hmm. little star fucker, did she take it up the ass? Oh. Wow. Well, that's a wow, legitimate that question, <laughs> and uh, you got to deal with it any way you have really to deal with it. you really think he should answer that? Um, I do. I, think it's no, legitimate. I, I don't think it's a nice question, but I think it's a legitimate question. Did Sarah take it in the ass? No, I, I, don't, I don't see any of that there. I, I think it was mostly, it was more by Kabbalah sex. You know, it was really. <laughs> it was more traditional. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, mean, I like how that guy came at it. Came at it you, like were, you were with her in the early 90s. That was the height of the anal craze. Was it really? Absolutely. You Even missed Robin, it? Even Robin went through it. Robin, Robin uh, took it. Uh, I had it a couple of times you in did. my ass. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, back in the desert, that's really the only way to clean yourself. Clean your well, piece, as they call it. That means she probably took it right up the ass. What's wow. going on with your relationships now? Uh, do you have a girlfriend? No one ever reads about well, you in the tabloids. The gong show is really, I think, a, a, like an e-harmony for me. Because I, I met so many interesting ladies on there. This one girl. Are you having sex? Well, not really, because really? I stopped drinking. Oh. You mean that ended your sex life? Well, it does, you know, it kind of like, you know, you'd you rather go home. You rather, yeah, I'm, I'm actually one of the few guys who's cool being alone. And that was kind of the weird thing, like sharing a room with these guys. Because yeah. I think he'll, he'll say it too, like, Artie, you're on the road all the time, but you get like your own, at the end, you go into your own room and you can do whatever right. you want. Absolutely. You know? And yeah. now it's kind of like this, like, you know, guy club, you know, right. and like, yeah. you know, you're afraid to like, you know, undress in front of everyone. Yeah, Although you're walking around wearing just a towel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> a towel. And that's always fun. Jeez. But uh, we had, because, again and again, like like Dave said, the, we couldn't pick a better bunch of guys. There were a couple of nights where, uh, you know, we couldn't sleep, and it was just me, Nick, and, and Dave, and just laughing at, uh, all night, because, you know, we... Uh, you know, you just love each other's company on top of being performers. And, I mean, Dave, you know, is uh, being uh, humble a little bit. A ton of guys recognize him from Insomniac. They love seeing him. Right. And he goes up and, like, literally at the mess hall, he'll go out of his way to just talk to guys. And like I told you yesterday, there was one group of guys who said to me and Gary, look, they were at the, just out of Fort Hood, Texas, going away for 15 months. Just could, They asked, just could you hang out with us? And uh, Dave was very aware of that. Right. And he always, always did it. Never said no to anything. So I mean, Saint it, Dave. it was a no, great. Well, it, it was a great. It was it, a great. That's tour. not true. But, I mean, thank you, Ori. But a lot of it has to do with like that's our fan base too. These guys right. are the guys who come see our shows when they're you know, and it's like 
the, that's the cool that's the cool connection because it's not just like like they know your stuff or like a lot of them have said you like, don't care you don't, you never think about your own life you never think about the fact that you might get killed over there well you know, I'm kind uh, of uh, hoping you're hoping you <laughs> since I have a miserable life but uh, now, no, now, no. Now, now tell me you have you don't have a girlfriend I don't and so you don't I can't have, go to the wedding then you don't have anybody who no I, I have a, yeah, a friend you got a friend yeah, yeah yeah something's going on well you know I, I, you know why are you keeping it such a secret no I, you trying I'm to a hide girlfriend it? though why are you hiding it, her Bring her in here now. <laughs> what you guys, say it's a her. You know what I'm gonna. <laughs> you know no, what I'm, I'm gonna. Who are voting for now that you've been overseas and yeah. you've seen the action firsthand? Who will be the best man to handle the situation in Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, is it Obama or is it McCain? Well, sometimes I think it's uh, it's really I think the one two punch. You got to get like the right vice president, and like you know sometimes I think really like, late at night, especially. After a drinking binge, the best guy for the job would be Obama and the Burger King. You know, the actual Wait Burger King. Stop it. No. <laughs> Tell me who you're for. <laughs> who am I for? Yeah. Who is the best commander in chief? You've been with the troops. Yeah. You know, Mayor McChee. You've spoken with the troops. Yes, I've spoken to them and you heard think their the Burger views. King would be a good vice president? Well, the Burger King burnt down. Talk about... Oh, that's what, right. Oh, did you didn't tell that story? Well, I was trying to, but we were all over the place. But yeah, it, we only had three hours. The uh, <laughs> Afghanistan... The, the ca- Afghanistan the, Burger King. The Kandahar, <laughs> the yeah. base we were at in Kandahar, the place that stunk like... Like shit. Yeah, the can had a beaky. Yeah, it had a Burger King. <laughs> yeah, and of course I hear that my eyes light up. Yeah, and then they go, but it burnt down last week. Uh, yeah. a mortar hit the fucking Burger King. So I was looking to have a, a, a Whopper with cheese with shit on it. I've actually gone to a fast food restaurant, whether it was Burger King or McDonald's in uh, Aruba many years ago. Right. I mean. And it was so bad. Really getting into the local culture. Oh, my God. I, I was so fat back then that I decided I needed to eat Burger King. And I go in Aruba, and I go into the local town. It took over an hour to get a burger. There's no such thing as fast food. Can you imagine in Afghanistan yeah. what that would have been like? I mean, it, you would have been sick, I'm yeah, sure, and, for and months. And the guy behind the counter. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. Would you like? You know what else they have? Like a Starbucks ripoff type place that they build. What, the Tim Hortons? Well, not not the Tim Hortons. Like uh, I love that place. Canadian. Talk about real heroes. It's those four Canadian girls working at the Tim Hortons. Yeah, there's a Tim Hortons. In Afghanistan. <laughs> and there's, a, wow. there's like a coffee bean type place. Yes. Right. Bean green bean, whatever. Green you think bean. They set that up for the troops, you mean? Yeah, I mean, right. it's a whole city. So the funny thing is, you see a lot of these big, good old boys from the South walking around with an M16 and a caramel macchiata. <laughs> yeah. Frappuccino. Oh. Isn't it amazing, like, the lengths people will go to make a living? I mean, that's that's pretty something to, that's extreme to set up like a Starbucks in Afghanistan. Right, and it's well, always you back. you those Did you t- people who get kidnapped, it's always yeah. some guy right. from the Midwest Contractor. who needed a job. It's right. always a barista at Starbucks. It shows you how <laughs> shitty things are out yeah. there. The, hey, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, the, the cool thing is because the people are like Russian hybrid, you know, like you'll right. meet like a girl like with one blue eye, like a husky, like weird <laughs> girls. Hot girls, and they get jobs on the bases. And like, uh, I was up early one day, like just chain smoking outside, and oh. these these two guys walk by, uh, a guy and a girl, and they're like wearing like all yellow. I could tell they're not in the military; they're like contracted in. And there's like this drop dead blonde, blonde hottie who in New York would be, you know, like the top of the totem pole. She's like collecting my cigarette butts and like putting oh. them in this thing. Like, yeah, that's right. I like, couldn't believe it. Like that's the best job there. They Local no, Russian nanny. They need Tyra so Banks to find her or something. Right, what, Smoking blonde. Right, you didn't you didn't answer my question. Right. Because well, Artie said he now was leaning toward McCain after coming uh, back really? from the troops. Are A you, little bit. Not totally. I don't who, know. You who, could switch back. Who yeah. are you supporting? Uh, well, I, I don't really know who I'm going to support. I always go for the ones who are like pro-abortion and all that kind of stuff, gay rights right, and all right, that. Because, right. you know, like I feel like it's too stiff out there, especially in the comedy clubs with all I the, agree. you know, church stuff. But, mm-hmm. and plus, you know, that's just me, you know, whatever. But uh, Plus you're a gay guy so who's that, had an abortion. Right. <laughs> so that would be uh, Obama you're for. Uh, yeah, I guess that. But I do love McCain. Like, I read all his books, and I think he's definitely, like, you know, So you're hardcore. having a hard time deciding. It's very hard. So I you, probably, also, you know what I think I'm going to do? Sleep in and not vote. You think that's good? <laughs> no, that's that's what I that's do. the answer. You, you also you, know that McCain can't really be fucking in real life anti-abortion. You right. Know what I yeah, mean? But he's, he's a cool that. dude. Yeah, he's he's a cool right dude. A policy. Yeah, I know. He should say it, but uh, these crazy Bible Belt people have you by the fucking balls. Well, then he's got to stand up to them. That's that's what I think. That would be leadership. That's One right. other thing I said in my sleep, I just remembered that, and again, other people have said this, and Nick told me this, that on top of that, 
he claims that I said, and again, I shake around when I do it. Mm. And Nick does such a funny impression of me shaking around. <laughs> but what does he claim you said? He claims I said, um, uh, he claims I said, uh, no, regular Coke. I, he's, I, I, regular I, Coke? I'm not kidding. I don't know if that I'm was not, a drug. That's I'm not the kidding. greatest like, thing I, I ever I heard. Mean, and, he, and these both guys said when they woke up with me one night, that I was ordering a burger and a Mountain Dew. You I don't dream know. about food like most guys dream about pussy. Exactly. Well, I had a Maybe. wet dream and I woke up and it was all ketchup and Russian dressing. <laughs> he would go to sleep with like ice tongs you like a teddy. He, do you realize his nightmare is being served Diet Coke? He <laughs> hates it so much. I do. I I listen, one way. final question. Yeah. Will you call Sarah Silverman and try to date her again now that she's broken up with you? <laughs> Howard, I'm not even. I, I said it before. I'm not in her league. I mean, come on. No, I, mean, I think I'm, you're really hot. You do? I do. I've been trying to dress a little bit more adult. You, you, you look I'm glad you picked up on it. You know what, Howard? Because if you're going to host uh, the gun show, you got to show people that you're in charge. Very uh, relaxed with a suit jacket, like <laughs> yeah. George Carlin. Like an Armand DeSante. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know what, my car. Dave is being, uh, again, if any interviewer could get it out of him, it's you. But Dave has that comedian thing where, you know, he tells all these jokes. But... Uh, but I, I I I don't know this for sure, and I've known him for a long time. But in the early '90s, he was like the king in New York, like the best com comedian That's there was. Nice, and when other when other when he was playing at a club, other comedians would be late for spots at other places. All right, so what happened? You'd stop and watch him. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, up. what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. is what I'm saying is on, top, on top of Sarah, <laughs> right. I guarantee he got so much pussy back then because he just was like the shit, you know. Oh, and so are you downplaying the amount of pussy I mean, you get? I don't know. Says, Would you guys one at a time? <laughs> Even the Taliban, they give them a blanket and a Koran. You're a famous <laughs> guy now, Dave. No, Come no. On. This is all I'm going to say, okay? First of all, she's really funny. He's really, uh, Jimmy's really funny. And I'm sure something's going to happen and, you know, whatever. Right. But, <laughs> but in terms of already saying that, that's really cool because when I was on the tour with him and Nick, who, like, when, I don't know if you guys know, but in the early 90s, Nick DiPaolo was the guy. Right. He really was. Like, we would look at him and like, wow, this right. guy, like, he'd show up, you know, Amazing. good looking guy, really t on top of his game. And, uh, you know, I still, I, I still look at him in awe when I think about, like, his writing skills and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of really good uh, comics on the tour. And then already had to do, like, a half an hour. So that's right. pretty rough. And we divvied up the dick jokes and, the, you know, the masturbation stuff. Right. right. The good thing is that, that <laughs> all, every guy, Florentine, Dave, and Nick are all headliners. So, yeah. They were nice enough to, like, we by the time them. I get up, you got to leave the headliners some subjects to go for. Like, right. you know, so they you were know, gracious and left you. Yeah, things. they knew exactly but how to that set you up. A great. <laughs> you guys are all great. I have to <laughs> say, I know it's a real like love fest. I've never met a bunch of greater guys. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you someone they were really having other than there, Sarah Silverman. Have you ever fucked anyone else famous? <laughs> yeah, you asked him a question and he deflected. Well, that's what I mean. This is this is what he does. No, no, what happens? All right, listen. We'll never get it out. See the Gong Show. I'm excited. It's coming back. I like the idea thank of you, you as host. I think it'll be successful. I but, hope so. But honestly, a tip of the hat to but, you. And thank you. But you Howard, really did look at one more thing because you'll like this. This is a plug. While I was over there, mm. there's a, there's an organization called the Coalition for uh, Major Injuries. These are yes. all guys oh. who come back from the war. Oh, is this where Dave cut off his own leg and gave it to a soldier? <laughs> <laughs> I heard the, about these, that. He's a saint. These yeah. are all guys <laughs> who are like amputees, bad right. head, head injuries, and they're all at, at a hospital in Florida. And there's an organization that runs, uh, you know, uh, you know, support for these guys. It's a big charity because there's not enough money for these guys, which is mm. awful. And Dave does work with them. And while we were at one of the meet and greets, a guy came up to me and said, Art, you don't know this, but I have half a leg and I chose to come back here to work administration, but I work with this coalition. Would you guys do a show in Orlando, or Florida for us? And maybe like if it's you and telling these guys, we get 4,000 people and just give it all to the workers. I gave him my phone number and I, I've been in touch with someone he knows. And uh, and Dave immediately uh, Dave immediately said yes. Yes. And, and uh, so he's a very giving man. You would so, say. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes in sometime in October, November, we're gonna do like a four thousand seater for these this That's coalition nice. of injured people. Uh -huh. Uh, in Florida. You guys are really giving back. And Jimmy Florentine and uh, DePaulo already said they would do it. I and again, that. it's a free show, and it's... Uh, what well, is the official name uh, of that, Dave? It's the Coalition no, of... Dave, I, I thought let it was me a, ask you something, though, about It's that. Wounded Warrior, I thought we wounded were talking warrior. about. Wounded Warrior. So I didn't hear about this Orlando thing, but that's... that's uh, how cool. did Sarah let you know she was leaving here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, let's, okay. uh, Dave, best of luck. We love when Thank you come you, in Al. here. 
Dave. Dude, yeah. are, you, are you really the saint that Gary's making you out to be? I think they built me up pretty, uh, pretty oh, hardcore, God. but. Uh, you know, one man saint is just another man doing his job. <laughs> Not like these Hollywood types. No, we really want credit. Come on. <laughs> no, but they, uh, I, I don't know. It was, uh, it was, you know, put it this way. There were a lot of dick jokes that the guys loved. That's yeah. What, that's what you know, I think everybody did their job, but... Uh, it's it's not really a job like you kind of enjoy it and all that kind of I stuff. I couldn't but, do uh, my 20 minutes. I like how Howard brings you back to earth. You can do anything, <laughs> and he's like, mm. you know. Hey, Dave, how yeah. do you think uh, Artie handled the, the the hot weather over there? I know he was uh, he was nervous about that for we a all, while. I, re I have to say, honestly, I really didn't think he would make it through the 100-plus degree temperature, but he did. I and slept the most of the days anyway in air conditioning. With his, ordering food. His Green Beret training <laughs> kicked in. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, he, he he did it like when when he had to be up, he did it because after like seven in the morning it starts getting really hot, and by afternoon it's like way too hot. But the locals seem to be moving. I don't know, I'm just rambling, but yeah, she's even more bizarre. No, it's not bizarre. It's just the place we wanted to get married. These places like book up, but, but what two about years in advance the now. It's work absurd. On a Friday. Uh, yeah, but you know, people around here don't. So they have to get there. But what about the rest of your guests? They don't work. Uh, I don't know. I guess they're taking the day off. <laughs> that is hard. What do you want me to say? You're going to get married on a Friday, yeah. three hours from Manhattan. Mm -hmm. and, and the people, your loved ones, forget us. Yeah. Your loved they're ones. They're willing to make that sacrifice. It's, it's not a sacrifice. Some people can't get off from work, genius. So I guess they can't come. But so far, it hasn't you been an Saratoga, issue. You mean Saratoga? That's the only place that's available? You have to get married there? It talked In to all my of girl, fucking did. New York, and it's not me. Your girlfriend really wanted to go there. Is she from there? Well, she's like from even further upstate, so it was kind of a it middle was ground. A middle ground. Yeah. Someone told me you're dying your sideburns now. Yeah. What's going what? on with that? You have gray hair? <laughs> no, I don't have gray hair. Why I just couldn't grow a very good sideburns, so I said oh, I tried putting some. <laughs> I took the Ronnie approach. You get married on a Friday. I, yeah. What time? Uh, like. 6.30, 6 o'clock. All right, so 6 o'clock. So let's say a guy's got a 9 to 5 job. How the right. hell is he going to get there? He'll have to take a half day. Have to take a half like, like people can just They don't have that. to do anything. They don't have to no, come. I don't who... really care, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> if you don't care, then why is anyone going? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> you wouldn't go if it was you. <laughs> Probably not. Well, I gotta say, have I sent you a gift yet? No. All right, I'll send it to you. That's all right. What do you want? How much? I don't know. What do I have to send? What, what would be good? What would you give Bubba? <laughs> I'll give you the same then. That was, a, that was heavy cash uh, donation. No, you don't have to do that. I'll Whatever. give it to you. It's all good. I know what I'm going to do. I'll give you 1500 You happy with that? That's wow. Fine. That's, all right. That's more than that's generous. That's unbelievable. Get the fuck off my back. Uh -oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know what I'm going to give Will, and I, I, I like Will a lot. I think uh, I'm going to I'm gonna give him at least the same I gave him. What are you going to give Robin? Uh, Probably in the ballpark. Yeah. You don't have to go like as, No one expects you to Thank go you. as high as me, so you can always get about I'm 500 cheaper. I'm going to do more than you. You can. I'm yeah, trying one up each other. Time, That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> now I'm giving more than Robert. <laughs> mm. I'm trying to help you out, Will. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I wish that. I had my checkbook here. I just write it right Start now. A competition. Exactly. Did I you send I, me a card or something? I got your invite. On yeah. my desk. You haven't responded yet. Yeah, I, I, forgive me, and that's wrong, and I will do it. <laughs> yeah, just I, I, I have to uh, respond. To I'm Gary, that, write me so. a note to send Will a check. Okay. And then <laughs> make sure I give Jason the same thing. As, do I have to give Jason Can the same thing? Can you give me thing? more, please? Why? Uh, uh, it would just be funny. No. It, would kill, it would kill Jason. When is Jason getting married? November. So, oh, all right. He hasn't oh. given out his... Uh, no, not yet. He's not quite there yet. Did he send save the date cards? Did you hear about Jason? No. He said this is okay to talk about it. What? He took out a $15,000 loan to pay for his wedding. <gasps> An asshole. What? So he's starting out in a hole, man. You can't do that so shit. So dumb. It's, you know, it's like, wow. Why do people do that? I don't know. I have I said, a cheaper dude, wedding. Yeah. Exactly. Who cares how fancy the wedding is? Don't even have a wedding. That's what gotta, I said. If you got to take out a loan for a wedding, and don't have a wedding. And the interest rate is ridiculous. Can I say something? It's a loan shark. That's 15000 He could put toward a down payment on a house. Howard, guess what the, guess what the interest rate is on that loan? Wow. I'm going to say 18%. 18. You're right. You're at 17 and change. Right. My God. That's foolish, young man. I, I know a Shylock down the board give you less. Holy crap. <laughs> I know. I, uh, I plan to pay, you know, pay it all back. Why don't you guys have a double wedding? That way it would cost less. That, that would be cool. That would be cool. 
No, I mean, listen, I had to come up with money somehow. I, I, it's Wait, my doesn't fault. the girl's parents pay for the wedding? No, no, no. no. <laughs> He's paying. Everyone's chipping in, but the, the, no. Uh, her the father's a great parents, guy, but... What does he do for a living? Well, he's retired now. What did he do? He worked at IBM for... But IBM, not like, he probably made a good living. No, no. He was like... He, dude, he worked in a factory. Great guy, but uh, he's not options? exactly loaded. No loading stock dock. options? You know what? He could come up with the money. Oh, great. You, <laughs> no, I talked to him. Uh, the money we got from him is, is very generous, but that was pulling teeth. How so, much did he give you? Fifteen. He gave you fifteen grand, so why can't yeah. you have a wedding on that? How oh, much is your wedding going to cost? Oh, you don't even want to fucking know. What you you don't even want to know. Yes, yes, we do. Can I say something? <laughs> I want to give you the best advice you ever got. What? Don't have a wedding. It's out of my hand. Dude, if I didn't, if no, I, this was no, up no, to no, me, no. Don't get there's no you. wedding. If you're taking out a loan, then it's up to you. <laughs> well... I, it's either take, a, take out a loan or go to jail. Like, I mean, you know, this wedding was planned around me. Dude, and uh, dude. I tried to keep stuff down. Dude. There's no shrimp at the wedding. Can I say something? What? Don't do this. But already. It's done. Start out a marriage in the hole that way. $15,000. I'm hoping the money I get, it's gifts. We'll pay that off. And then I won't be in the hole anymore. So, and then you'll have no money to start then I won't, I, Listen, I said... At the onset of all this, I'm like, let's take all the money everyone's offering us, the 15 from her right. dad, whatever my, I go, and let's go buy a house. This right. was my plan. That's ah. what you should And we get married at City Hall. Smart. And you know what? I was laughed out of the room. No one takes me seriously. And Jason, why, why, are you marrying, kind of... why are you marrying a woman who doesn't take you seriously? Mm. But, uh, she takes me seriously, but this you wedding said, thing. You said no one takes me seriously. No one took me seriously when it came to the wedding. Everyone thinks I'm an asshole for not wanting to have a big wedding. Where's you going to find someone who takes you seriously? Who's everyone? Serious? Give me the names. Uh, well, your mother? My How mother, much did your mother chip in? 15. She chipped him 15. So now yeah. you got $30,000. That's not enough for this wedding. You got more than that. Well, that covers the catering hall. Right. Yeah. Really? Uh, what are you guys... Where are you getting nothing, married? It's nothing... We're getting married in Hackensack or Hackettstown. I mean, it's not like we're going anywhere fucking fancy or doing no, anything ultra fancy. fancy. You're uh, talking about $45,000 now. Well, you're paying close to that. No, I'm not. Not even close to that. Well, mine's not three hours away. Can I tell you something? With traffic. <laughs> That's a real dumb thing you're I, doing. But to this start is the out, way they're making decisions already. He gets... Ignored. Well, no, it's just... <laughs> yeah. Get ready, sweetie. Did you get bamboozled into doing this? No, not bamboozled, but things start slow. I said, let's have a small wedding. wedding. It's and such everyone... a waste of time. It I, really is. You're, to you're preaching to the choir over here, man. I, mean, I don't want a big wedding. wedding. You know what? I, I, I've been through a wedding. Yeah. It's I a, don't even remember it. It's a fucking way. I didn't want video. I didn't want photography. I, right. Yeah, bring a but digital camera. I have a camera. I'm a photographer. I can bring a camera and take pictures. Right. But everyone's fucking insane. Everyone tells me there's a certain way you have to do something. And why and a can't way you, you have be, to be a man and grow up for once and say, listen, this is the way you should talk to your mother when she right. starts giving you horse shit. <laughs> say, listen, I love you all. You're nice people and your heart's in the right place. But let me explain to you my life the way I want to live it. Like you yeah, but you know what, your... Howard? And then you say... That's such bullshit and then because... You say, no, it's not. Yeah, it is and bullshit, then you say, man. You do stuff for Beth. What, you gr dreamed no. of having Mark Consuelos marry you and have two <laughs> different weddings? <laughs> we, we think it's hysterical <laughs> together. But oh, wait come minute, on, man. We do. I'm not doing like something. If I, didn't like Mar if I didn't like Mark Consuelos, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, you like him, but you got talked into it. No, come I didn't. On. Not at all. All right. Honestly, I'm telling you the truth. All right, all right, all right. You I didn't get it. talked into anything. And let me tell you something. What? Uh, I can afford to have my friends for dinner. Right. Sure. You're at a different point in life. Tell but me about it. When I got married the first time. like that. When I, when, when, I'm going to tell you a story in a minute. All right. When, you, when I got married the first time. I didn't pay a dime, and I'll tell you, I didn't have a dime. I made less money than you. I mean, what you make is a fortune compared to what I had when I got married. Yeah, but it's a and different fact, time. It's a different time. No, but, and you were younger when you got That's married. That's right. Yeah. I got married. I didn't have any debt for my marriage. If I do, I would have been one penny in debt. I wouldn't have gotten married at a big wedding. My, uh, I guess my, my father-in-law paid for it. He even paid for the hotel that we stayed in. I had no money. Right. Well, and I am you gonna, don't live above your means. You're a hundred percent right, and I got to take blame for this because, of course, a year ago, you know, you start who, planning. Who are the people that told no, you? No, I'm not going to blame other people. You know why? Because whatever the you're right, and no, you know it no, doesn't no, matter what other people say. My, my mother and father, without getting into too many details, right. uh, as recently as a couple of weeks ago, called up to say something about my wedding, and I did a very loving thing. I sat them down. And I said to them, here are my thoughts on my wedding. And I'm going to include you in my thoughts so you understand how my life is going and what's going on. And I explained it to them. And afterwards, they said, thank you for explaining it to us. Now we understand. 
that was a that was a that's a loving way to do it. Now, yeah, but at you're Jason's from, age, yeah. you were being railroaded by your mother. No, too. yes. Let me tell you oh. something. I remember you ripping an earring out of your ear. Yeah, I mean, listen to me. You're in a different place in life, man. To go see your mother. I would never live in debt. And something my mother wanted me to do. If my mother said to me, it well, would be a good idea for you to be $15,000 in debt and pay 18% interest, I would not go along with it. But she didn't tell me to take out the loan. I uh, it's, Look, it's my fault. It's because not being pe- insensitive, by the way. No, You're I know. You're not being insensitive. I, I don't think it's being insensitive. How come you can't have a nice wedding on $30,000? Uh, excuse me. He shouldn't even have a wedding. What yeah, do you right. think of that? The guy's got, he doesn't have a pot to piss in. Yeah, right. but Take the least, 30 grand and buy a house. At least he wouldn't be in debt at $30,000. Put it toward 15. a mortgage. I, look, I'm with you, and I take blame. Bottom line is, you start planning this a year ago, and I don't, I, it's my fault. I'm bad with money. I don't start, you don't have to put all this money up front. Everything well, comes later. now and let's change. Right, right. So, and I, you know, no and I did. photographer. I, I uh, please. You, no, you want? Gotta have a when, when is your wedding? Give this. me the date. I'll take the pictures. November eighth. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna come. I decided I'm coming to your wedding, awesome. and I'll be the photographer. Awesome! I love it. And I'll tell you what. I've seen professional photographers. I am every bit as talented. Professional. There's no such thing as professional photographer. I agree with you. I think give anyone here. a camera. If they, if they, unless they're cockayani, mm-hmm. they should be able to take a picture. I agree. Agree. One hundred percent. I got to tell you something. I've seen Beth. Uh, who's a professional model, get photographed by some of the quote-unquote big names in photography. If I tell you I take a better picture of the woman than they do, it's the truth. I believe it. It's a racket. You know what a racket is? A scam. (laughs) A scam, right. That's exactly right. It's a sham. It's a travesty of a sham. It's a mockery of a sham. (laughs) No, it's a racket, uh, this photography. And, And I'm telling you, I've taken pictures... Every magazine has taken pictures of me, and I see it's a racket. There's one woman I know who's better than all of them. Other than that, they're all the same. Who's that? Her name is, uh, she used to be married to someone from Bachman Turner Overdrive or something. I don't know. What's her name? There's a woman who actually can make me look good. But it's Ralph? rare. It's a rare. No, shut up. I'm giving you advice. Uh, Don't you want to make sure? If, all right, I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't want to be the third. No, no, no. Right, I mean, forget I, I, it. Forget I, I, it. Ralph. All right. You listen, done? you know what? Right, I, go I, have a wedding and, no, and be fifteen no, thousand. You know, you're right. You're giving right. away. I had you, enough. To I, me, it's like like the other night when. No, no, no. I'm done, Artie. Please. <laughs> Okay, stop. All right, all right Chase. He's not about the wedding. He got a loan for fifteen hundred dollars. He's being dope. That was okay. Uh, sorry, dude. No, you, 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 I'm trying to have a real conversation with I you. I'm concerned too, about you. And then you go, "Who is it, Ralph? Who is it?" I'm trying to be real with you. I'm gonna help you. I'm listening to you. No, I'm, you're not. You're not. Oh, okay, I'm not listening to you. You're making a mockery. You have right. got to get on this right away. No photographers, no videographers. This kid still has student loans. He's paying off from yeah. college. How oh. much? How much you in the hole for on that? Oh, it's unbelievable. It's uh, 34000 Oh, my God. Why'd you go to college, dude? You're typing. <laughs> <laughs> I learned to type in high school. Um, you know, things just... Listen, I blame Jason, myself. Jason. Things got out you're of control. A man. How old are you now? You're no kid. 29. No, I'm not Yeah, a you're kid. 29. Yeah. All right. You got you to gotta sit down with your new wife, and you got to say, listen, we got to use our heads here. <laughs> I'm 34 in the hole from my college. God knows what she what debt she's carrying. This broad's probably got she's a probably student loan too. Yeah. No, no, no. Sounds she's, like she doesn't have debt. She doesn't make any money. What about no. the what money she for therapy? For she's a nursery school teacher. Nursery school right. teacher. That's some occupation. <laughs> you're telling That's me. Sweet. What are you talking about? Sweet. Very sweet. Uh, you make Randy, ten grand Randy, a year. Randy St. Nicholas is the photographer oh, okay. that I was thinking of. She's she's actually very good. But here's the thing. You got to sit down with this woman and say, "Listen, never mind my mother, and never mind your father, and never mind anyone else." We don't have any money. We're about to go another 15 in the hole on 18% interest. Yeah, that interest racks up so quick. I know. You wouldn't I, even believe it. I did the math. I, mean, I know what I'm okay. in for. Okay. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I'm with you. All right. The nonsense has got to stop. <laughs> you getting married is not that big a deal. Agreed. <laughs> Honestly. I- there's nobody here who even thinks it's a big deal. In fact, nobody even remembers you having a wedding. Cancel the wedding right now. And sell it to a couple that can afford it. I just don't know. And whatever your plans are, someone can jump in and get married. Like, t- to me, it's like, and this isn't about what you're talking about, but it's along the lines. It's like the other day at Caroline's, Miss Howard Stern came, you know, and she brought a hot friend. And I'm sitting there going, 
Wow, you know, th this chick, I might have a shot with her. And lately I've been getting laid a lot on the road with chicks way okay. out of my league. And I'm thinking right. maybe I have a shot with this chick, maybe I don't. But it's only because I make some money and I'm more famous. Of course. And I'm thinking, it made me think of Will especially. But Jason, too, they're young kids. I'm like, these guys could be, like, Will, all these chicks love her, love him. when they, they why He should be fucking every hot chick that comes Look, through here. I, I commend I, him. I, I he felt found bad. love. Yeah, but He's I given mean, it a shot. Well, Will it work? Probably not. He might resent her for missing out right. on that. Well, I, you know, he's a young man, and he, you're right. He has a he lot of pussy. He never took advantage of anything. There's a lot of pussy options. Maybe he's one of these sexless guys. I don't know. But listen, I don't think so. Don't but think so, Jason's yeah. a guy like me. It'd be a little tougher, but he works on the Stern. <laughs> Look, I mean, he works the on the Stern thing, show. But, but they but should Artie, be fucking. You could, you could say the same thing about me. I've been with the same woman eight years. I could get but a lot. You of, did a little. Play you went a little, little you but believe me, there was a lot more that could have been done. You could I be know. doing it right now. I could be doing it but today. But they didn't have that. Even that. Right. You know. But listen, fine. But, I'm not arguing. You want to be right. committed. You want to get married. Right. Will, as far as I know, isn't going into debt. Somebody's picking no. up the tab on that cockamamie right. wedding up yes, there sir. on Friday. He's just going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Attending. You, on the other hand, are condoning going into debt. And you're, you're right. the man. This nursery school teacher isn't making a penny. Not I don't a penny. know her name. What is her penny? Janice. Janice. The I know what teachers teacher. make. They don't make. No, and this isn't even. This isn't even regular teacher. It's not this real is. Yeah, this is a private nursery. <laughs> school. Bullshit. This is called bullshit. She school. pays to work there. <laughs> yeah. This is, you know, what, with gas prices is now, she pays care. to work there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nursery school is actually probably harmful. Who even knows? Here's the thing. Dana was working at a. Probably a very, very detrimental thing. Probably a wonderful girl. Nursery school is another. She it's is a wonderful place girl. Where parents who, who can't you stay home with their your kids. kids. You stash your you kids for work. a couple. But of you talk about Dana was working at a school in the ghetto in an area so bad that Dana got off on the day of the Crips and the Bloods initiation. Wow, that's a they, holiday. Right, and you know what she got? She was a social worker. She'd come home. She Beth actually helped her one time. Beth. Uh, Dana, when they were out to dinner, Dana told her about a student who came to school with no shoes, and Beth bought the kids shoes, and uh -huh. it was the nicest thing. And and mm. Dana would save lives every day. She got paid about twenty seven thousand wow. dollars. Right. You know what so, I mean? It's crazy. Listen to me, and believe me, twenty seven thousand dollars to this girl would be, but she probably makes less. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? You're right. Okay. Jason wow. would say she could chip in uh, on, the, on the wedding at that. Twenty seven would be for, fun. Be cheaper for her not to work at this. Right. <laughs> So the fact of the matter is, well, um, what, what was her background? Does she have an education? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Rutgers grad. Uh, and that, Rutgers? Rutgers. Yeah. And, she, and, and that's it? Mm. That's what she loves to do, man. I mean, I, what can I say? Well, she listen, loves it. You know it. what? She I love playing it. chess, but I got to make a living. Was she friends with any of those you know? nappy-head broads on the basketball team? Oh. <laughs> um, I've got to play. Listen, I could play chess all day, but I'm, I need to make a living. And uh, so does she. And it's time to sit down with her and say, look. We know you got to get a that, job you don't like. That conversation. To, you know, <laughs> babysitting. I, listen, she can make more money babysitting. <laughs> You're telling me. She plays the cello. She's classically trained. Yeah. Oh, I my say, God. Give a lessons on things, the weekend. Right. A bunch of make some extra don't cash. Make money. No well, one works. Yeah. If things are tight, if things are tight, which is what you're explaining to me. Very tight. Aside from your shirt being tied as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, the, the money's going in food, I so think. now you're making jokes. No, but it, I'm trying to be no, serious. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish can I you, could smoke. Can you cancel parts of the wedding now? <laughs> parts of it? No. It's, uh... <laughs> Well, the only thing I can do. What are you the, gonna what can you the do? only thing, oh, the only thing now that's flexible to do is to scale back on How about the flowers, no food? the food, and the cake. Ah, well, yeah. Okay, let's take those Why one not? at a time. Okay, flowers. They should, I shouldn't necessary. see a flower. Zero, this right? Right, zero. Now, what else could you scale back on? Oh, uh, the food. We didn't go over the menu yet, so uh, we could that... scale back on the food. And what about the bar? <laughs> Give everyone a bag of cookies. Dude, his <laughs> mom is going to flip her shit. There's flip no her way. shit and let her fucking pony up. And what She's is not the in debt. Um, She's gonna I, I don't know, the cake. Uh, cake? Cake. Yeah, the cake. Go Look Carvel. <laughs> you you want to know the best dessert there is? Cookie Ice plus. cream. Carvel makes a flying saucer <laughs> that is so delicious. I agree and with any it. asshole who says it isn't the, the most delicious dessert is just arrogant. An asshole. And, and a snob. And you don't need any more than that. There's chocolate flying saucers and vanilla mm. and Dixie cups. Reese's peanut butter cups. And Get I'm not making a joke. It is the best dessert. If you went to a fancy restaurant, they didn't tell you it was Carvel. You I, wouldn't know I swear to God, you would think, oh, my God, the chef here is unbelievable. Is peanut M&M's. Uh, Put peanut uh, M&M's in the refrigerator can I tell you, for about I'm an hour. Italian ices. Can I tell you about the biggest Delicious. money waster Italian that ices. I am? I'm fighting against. You know, I'm going to say it right now, and I'm going to say it off the air, because I'm fighting against this money. Because 
fifteen thousand dollars on eighteen. We are now planning. That's over two thousand dollars a month yeah. in, in interest. When, when does the loan start? Could have gone toward two thousand dollars a month toward a mortgage. Yeah, this guy could own a piece of property. When what did you? When did you take the you? loan out? Do you, is the loan uh, outstanding three, two, now? No, two weeks ago. Jason, two weeks oh. ago. Get your life in order. Uh, you're right. This is insane. We're spending money to come up with little itty bitty favors to put on everyone's a plate. Favors? At the table. I'm going to do you a favor. I want to. I want to just Wait, kill somebody. You want somebody. a favor? You yeah. want a favor? Here's yeah. a favor. Wedding off. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Vegas. best favor you could ever have. I, go to Vegas, you to go to Vegas. I do have one suggestion. Go ahead. Is your girlfriend attractive? Yes. Of course. Internet porn. Oh, stop it. Now, you see, that's a joke. That's I, not, no, that's not a joke. Oh, it's like, stop it's it. more Go money ahead. than she's going to make. Look, bottom line Jason. is, Howard is right. I have to take, there's no one else but me who has to take control of the situation, right. take control of the money being spent, and say enough's enough. The buck stops there is here. No way there's nothing else to say about no it. There's no way you should be taking out a $15,000 loan. Right. Well, but you're just, powerless. I hear you with your mom. I'm the same way. You're powerless. These broads, they gang up. And they're are evil. you having an open bar? They're different yes. from us. You have to, dude, I'm not going to throw I'd rather have nothing else but the open but you can't invite people right, out and not have free drinks. Let me tell you something. What? You don't have the money for this. I. That's. You know what? You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I cut out everything live. before I'm going to tell you in America why this trouble. There are people who buy homes. They don't have the money. Right. And then they, they whine because, of, oh, my God, I don't have the money. And then the banks are all freaking out. Everyone is fucking yeah, freaking out. Yeah, but how out. do the banks approve that? Right. They're supposed that's to another, be experts. That's They're another scams. story. They, uh, they're looking just to sign up anybody. They're looking for bodies. And the same with you. You can't be doing this. And you can't be taking $30,000 that your, that your in-laws and your mother are willing to put up. And then adding to it with a loan. And that, I mean, that's just insane. 30000 was enough. Why don't you have a small dinner party, you, your parents, and her parents, call it a day, take the $30,000... And you're going to spend two thousand dollars a month in interest. You're not even paying off the principal. No, no, it's uh, well, wow. It's, it's no, I, 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 thirty grand, forty-five grand on four hours I, uh, of your life. I have a question for Jason. How much is this wedding supposed to cost? Because I went on the internet and it says Zero. U.S. couples should spend between fourteen and forty-three thousand dollars. It's going to cost about thirty-five when all said and done. I think thirty-five to forty. So between you taking, taking, the, the, you're taking the loan out? just for anything extra. That might come up, and whatever I don't spend from that loan is going there's right a, back to paying all the loan. There's a honeymoon, you said, right? And a honeymoon, yeah. But there's a thing called a budget. Don't exceed honeymoon. the budget. Well, the Let bu me tell you about honeymoon. <laughs> the budget was 40000 Honey. <laughs> honeymoon <laughs> is a big mistake. <laughs> You're making oh. an error, and I'll tell you why. Go down okay? to Kingsburg. It's beautiful. Where are you going on your honeymoon? Jamaica. Listen to me. First of all, you in a bathing suit, she's going to run to the <laughs> fucking hills. <laughs> Secondly. Do you want to have your hair beaded, honey? Uh, <laughs> I got to I gotta be honest with you. Even if you took a trip to Bahamas and you said, look, we'll have a dinner with our parents. Right. We'll announce that we're married. We'll go down to City Hall, get married. And then we go to, okay, you want to you go somewhere romantic? I get that. Okay. Right. You want to have a celebration. You got married. You're a young guy. That's okay. But when you start putting yourself in the hole to the tune that you are, and you could have had money. And the parents are putting up $15,000 $15, a piece. You could have a great start in life. You could even, you could maybe invest a little of it. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm serious. I'm just asking well, you this put question. Put your fucking foot down. Well, but but hold on a second. Let me ask you a serious question. I'm, I'm being serious here. When you started planning your wedding originally, did it start small? about my first wedding? Either second. wedding, first okay. wedding or this wedding. And I know you're in a much I different you, position. I told you, the first life. wedding, I didn't pay a dime. I okay. didn't have a dime. So this way, did it start small, and then the longer you go on, it got bigger and bigger and bigger? Listen, I, I'm in a different... I know I'm you are, but... a wedding, I'm in a different situation. I know, anymore. I know that, but it just I, happens, it seems an, to old, me. And I'm it's, at an older point in my life. You know, I got some money. I can afford to take my friends to dinner, and it's not going to affect me. I don't have to take out a loan. He's probably... Ruining the marriage market right now because there were planners out there who were thinking they were going to make a big killing because he's not paying much for what his is, wedding. What is this uh, note I've been handed? Jason hired a musician to play acoustic guitar at his wedding. No, the, the, what, how much did that cost? Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. The guy I knew from New. Uh, Cut him. That's too much. <laughs> 
I'm I, serious. I'm well, no, no, it's a, hold on a second. No, no. It, you it, know Fred? Fred will play. How, is there limos? <laughs> no, no limos. No limos. Invite limo. Fred no and give him a guitar. And why did you, when you went or to Scott's Amst- son, when you 20 went to, bucks. When you went to Amsterdam for your right. bachelor party, what did that cost? For that I paid for myself, no loans. Uh, well, that was That stupid. was over $2,000. Oh. Jesus. How, you know what, that was. That was, that was a press. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Jason, I was over I'll there with you, there and you second. weren't having that much fun. Yes, I was, I dude. Mean, oh, fuck. You were baked the whole time? You didn't see Amsterdam? You were baked the whole time? Amsterdam. You were baked inside of a bar that looked like it could have been an Oboken. You were just baked the That's whole time. That's where we met you. You I should would... have bought a bag of pot here in the United States. <laughs> I mean, and, yeah. And, and not even he said when he goes to Jamaica, he's not even going to leave the hotel room. Right. It's I, a, you could do that at home. You don't That's like the sun. No, I saw I more Amsterdam than you did. Do you like the sun? Then why are you going to Jamaica? Oh, no, no, no. The Jamaica will be cool. I'm not going to go on the beach, but they have the pool and the, the oh, hotel room. Yeah. I'm not a beach person. There's no though. pools around right. here. I'm going to say something. What? You're not doing things right. Your life's out of control. And you're making big mistakes right right from the beginning. This is an and intervention. That, is, that isn't smart. And you got to really now, now you're going to start a family, I guess. You got to start thinking. You're right. You know, this is crazy what you're doing. Will's getting married ain't costing him anything. That's different. All right, he's got somebody paying the tab. He's lucky. So was I. Somebody, my, my father in law picked up the tab. My parents, I don't know, they gave us a, a gift, cash, and, and then that was it. And I got to start in life. What you're doing is talking about being in the hole. And I'll tell you, this is the psychology of a lot of people out there who spend and spend and live above their means. Well, you know what? In New York, there is such pressure to throw this fantastic, fabulous party Mm. anymore because everybody's into it. But in the rest of the world, people go to a a fire hall and they make the decorations. They don't get into all this. It's my My future brother-in-law, Doug Ostrowski, got married a year ago to this beautiful girl, Amy. Doug's got a good job. He's got a good job. He makes, I think he makes six figures. You know, or, you know I, I'm guessing, I don't know what he makes. And his wife has a job, some internet something. I don't know. They tell me over and over again what they do. I don't even know what they do. Can't figure it out. <laughs> I don't. I can't figure it out. There's a web page. I don't know what they do. Quite frankly, Howard and, wouldn't uh, know Doug if you walked in the room. No, I know Doug, and I love this kid. He's a good guy. And I tell you, he's a smart guy. He says, uh, can I come out and see you guys? I'm going to get married at your house. This was last summer. I said, sure. What, what are you talking about? He goes, it's just me and my wife. I'm going to invite my brother. That's it. So what about your parents? No. What about your aunt? No. He says, I, I just want to be married. I'm not going to go to any expense. I don't have the money. I got a lot of costs. And you could kiss this kid because he's smart. He's not a dope. Now, you happen to be smart. I see you how you yeah, function. You're very smart. But something's going wrong in your personal life. Your personal life is a two. Your professional <laughs> life is annoying. Well, I got to tell you. Hey, I'm, listen. Uh, wow, well, nice of Howard, by the way. Yeah, to waste you could my get time. married at Howard's house? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. No, but you know what? Can I say <laughs> something? I, I, <laughs> pretty good deal. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely not. But he should get married at his parents' house. If your mother wants a wedding so bad, go to your parents' house. Or say to your parents, listen, you want a wedding so bad? Then pay for the whole fucking thing. Can I say something? Thank you, number one, yeah. for your advice. And two, I wish to God, you were my parent at the time I was getting married, who sat me, who, instead of my parents going, let's do this, 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 I wish you had sat me down and said, you know what, I know you can't afford this, so don't I don't do it. Said, I would have said, as your parent, right. I've got, if, if, if I do have 15000 I'd rather you take the 15000 and form a life. I w- I, That's a tremendous amount of money. And, and here's the other thing. He, he's inviting every single person that works here <laughs> not, not to the true. wedding. That's I much, want dude. everyone That's not, not to go. Cut them off. No, no, no. They're going to be gifts. Don't tell people not to Fuck go. a wedding. <laughs> Fuck. Who do you think in this room doesn't wish Howard was their parent? <laughs> well, no. Wait, just for that advice. Like, no. I We go to my parents' house to sit down and talk about the wedding. And all I hear about is, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to buy this. You got to do this. No one sat me down and said, don't be stupid. But why do you need to still be sat there? No, boys. you're right. You're, you're, why I do should you take feel my, that you should uh, appease all those people? I should take the blame, and I do. What I'm saying is, though, I was sitting in the room where people keep telling me, you gotta do, I wish there was somebody else in the room, like a Howard, but you, to say you're being you're stupid. But you be Howard. You're I know. I got. I know. You're I know. a smart you're gonna guy. you're going to be stuck with the bill. Right. I know. Being Howard is overshooting. Be, Try to be Benji. <laughs> you're right. getting bamboozled. Into a lifestyle you don't have. You know what? The other and I'm glad your mom wants to have a nice party, and and uh, that's wonderful. But you're even late to this, Howard. You know, uh, Jason sitting there with no funds, letting people run up this bill for him. Yep. Uh, Just before we got back to work this week, they announced that Selma Hayek's wedding is off and her engagement is off. She was marrying a billionaire, and they were saying she was going to have the most extravagant wedding ever. This billionaire looked at the bills. 
and said, shut it down. Right. You know, just nobody around here can deal with money. Like, JD's another one. He, you know, he started working with Artie. He just got a little bit of money. He never right. had any money. Right. He's out buying an iPhone every week. He's trying to buy a new computer every week. He Wait, just blows his he money. He is. He never has an iPhone on the road with me. What's, What's going on there? I got like 2800 saved in the savings account. All right, calm down. No, whoa, 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 talk whoa, about whoa, all your new whoa, purchases. Whoa. I, uh, li- what are you buying? I'm What's not buying anything. Too? So let's say you got, you, what, the money's burning a hole in your no, pocket? No, it's yeah. not. No, it's not. Yeah, Dude, but I bought, the, yeah, the, how much, the, well, I how bought much some of he, those things for him. The, the camera pay? I bought, it's business related. Listen, how much did he pay? You just bought a new computer, correct? Laptop. Uh, listen, okay, uh, I, I Why had are a, you so rushing to get rid of this money? I'm not, 2800 <laughs> isn't a lot of money to no. keep in well, the bank. I, dude, I, listen, Wait. I'm okay. I, I had a very uh, nice um, tax return. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know I'm not I'm Did not you going get your broke. Six hundred from the government or something? As trickle down. <laughs> you had trickle down. <laughs> trickle down there. See, yeah, the breaking plan works. All right, I'm gonna. I heard that you got a PlayStation Three. Yes. You bought a new plasma TV, a laptop, <gasps> yep. and you're always at the strip club. <laughs> and get an iPhone. Well, I'm gonna get an iPhone with uh, a credit card because. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go. You know what? You know what? No, but listen, listen. You guys don't I know, know money. No, I know what I'm doing. Uh, calm down. No, I gotta you tell don't. you something. No, you, you know what? I'm glad you said this. Never. I don't even have an iPhone. I'm glad you said this to me because <laughs> you know what? JD does work with me and he does excellent work with me. And I'm thinking about he's gonna go to a different level and I'm gonna give him a raise. But uh, I know for a fact him having an iPhone is going to be insanely uh, convenient for me. So I'll buy you the iPhone like I bought you the camera. I'm willing to – because that will help my job a lot if he has an iPhone. But you see, but whatever money you're giving him, it's almost a waste. But I'm going to take him right to the store. Okay, I'm going to take him right to the store. Give him a, right. This, well, good luck with you waiting in line forever. Right. <laughs> but uh, – I get, I get. You, know, you get three dollars, and right away you think you're nerdy war bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice All right, Dominic, line. Dominic Barber, you're on the air. Can I say one thing now? Yeah, go ahead. For a honeymoon. What? Here's what I'm offering: shelter island for a week, oh. indoor outdoor pool. The Bentley will be left there for him to use. Oh. The same bed that you and Beth. <laughs> That's gross. Uh, the consummation uh, bed. Now, Jason, I'm going to say something. You're wait lucky. Minute, wait a minute. And the boat, I'll have a captain for at least two days. Oh, my God. Him. That's the honeymoon. How yeah. cool is now that? Now, you just saved a fortune. If you tell me you're turning that down, <laughs> you're nuts. Gotta you're be Jamaica. Nuts. Dominic's offering you his house. I've been to his house. It's really nice. That is the most generous offer uh, ever. I- I would feel uncomfortable taking it. I don't know, don't, Dominic. Don't. I would take it. I mean, so get, I know him. You know, this is where I agree with Republicans. Thing. Get he, married at his house. Why is he being rewarded for being so irresponsible? Don't for do it. It's no. weird. No, no, no. Yeah. Will, Will, don't, don't even kill this because this guy, is he is irresponsible. No, but I'm trying to show him a new way. Howard, you're friendly. No. It's weird, Jason. Don't take Dominic. Dominic, I really... No, 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 it's no, creepy. No, it would be my pleasure for him to do that. It's creepy. Uh, why is that creepy? <laughs> because he hardly knows you, Dominic. How you and Howard know each other. It's a different story. Oh, it's it's creepy a, to do that. I've given things away before. Tonight. I know. You're very generous. As but... a matter of fact, J.D., I was wondering what he did with the 500 I gave him. <laughs> you gave him you 500? G- yeah. J.D., where did you spend that money? Strip club. What for, why did he give you $500? Why did you give J.D. 500 so nice, and he was so sweet on when I went to Atlantic City. I told him to put that money away or buy something. And you went to a strip club. No, you went to a strip club. Dude, yeah. He's yeah. close to the strip Nobody club. Nobody knows what I do. All right. this at, was this at one of my shows? You went, to a, you went to a strip club. Tell the truth. Tell Dominic what you did with the money. I, that was probably the part of the money I bought on PlayStation 3 with or right, something. you bought a PlayStation 3. <laughs> How old are you again? That's I'm 28. You're 28 and you bought a PlayStation, PlayStation 3. Going on six. <laughs> what day is the wedding? November 8th, Dominic. Listen. The house will be outrageous then. The fall will be beautiful. The boat guys will still be in the water till you'll have a wonderful time and it'll be my well, pleasure. Well, maybe Artie's right. Thank I've you been very there. Look, I stayed look, there overnight at his Shelter Island house. It is gorgeous, but no. it's it's creepy. He doesn't need He doesn't need it, but the no. point is, he doesn't need a vacation. Right, exactly. Uh, Jamie, two years ago, you spent your entire tax return at a strip club, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I learned my lesson, all right? Hey, can I say one thing? How Every- much was that? $800. Okay. Wow. What, 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 you gave it, to a whore. In one night. Not a whore. Not no, even. I wish it was a whore. <laughs> She's a stripper. Why didn't she give 800 to a whore? At least she would have gotten laid. Because I was stupid. I got right? laid I wasn't in the right scent, scent or what is it, right side of mind then. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like Exa- Sal. Exactly right. No, you sound like you, unfortunately. <laughs> I wasn't in the right mindset.
I'm going to go to work. Thanks, Dominic. Yeah, what are you going to say? You, keep saying something. All right, listen to me. Uh, listen, by There's the way. a lot of guys here. No, I'm doing fun. better. With every check I get from, you know, Artie, I put half in the savings account, go half ahead. in the checking. You so, do? Yes. All right. And I tell them, I say, listen, you do that, and that's the, you got a second job, it should all be saving. But if you're spending hundreds of dollars at a strip club, you're not saving money. I'm, I'm not. When you get money, you should be putting it into savings. I am. Because let me tell you, my friend, the day will come. I know. You're going to need a couple extra bucks. You're not going to have it. And you're going to say, wow, there's some stripper walking around. She's retired. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, you don't want that. that. Oh, no. Christ, that's She's horrible. in the Bahamas. She's in the Bahamas while you're, you're, yeah. you're you understand? <laughs> Sal can't even feed his kids. He's taking trip to Miami. <laughs> right. A trip to Miami. So many Sal's people. Hiding from his friends. Sal has doesn't. Sal's so far in debt, and then he goes to Miami. Yeah. I don't and, get it. And remember, he wouldn't let the friend drive him. He hid because he didn't want the guy to see that he couldn't afford. Why was he in Miami? To the park. I thought he went to Disneyland. That's yeah. not Miami. Well, it was <laughs> Orlando. Orlando. Oh, there's another retard. <laughs> The only way these assholes are going to learn is by doing it. I say do it and join the club of misery for the rest of your fucking lives. Yeah. You cannot talk them out of it. Right. I've been in that situation. When, before I got married, I had all my buddies. Everybody was married. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's going to cost you a fortune. It's, you're, gonna, you're just going to throw in the towel. And I thought I was the guy. No, no, not me. Not me. Well, 12 years later, I'm the, the big jackass, you know, walking around spending money I don't have. <laughs> Sal, you somebody who won't anyway. shut the hell up in my life. So uh, the only advice I could say is do it. Learn from experience. She still won't shut up? Forget about it. <laughs> I can't even get I, I don't even have a pot to piss in right now. And I said, let's build up a nest egg. Let's, let's get, you know, let's put a little money in the bank. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Three weeks later, we need to get the floors redone. Uh, <laughs> well, didn't you buy a, a five thousand dollar purse last year? Yeah. Oh, that is the oh, thing is that I don't buy purses. Purse? I don't. I don't pay for floors to get redone. I don't pay for vacations. You know what I pay for? I pay for her to shut the fuck up and leave me alone. Yeah, right. but that's Sal, what happens. You know what? I this depresses me. In. I feel so bad that all you guys are broke. I work. We work I'm with not, you guys. It's, I feel so because, bad. Listen. There's fiscal responsibility. You can't run a... A, a $5,000 purse? James, That's stupid. James that is, in Philly are on the air. Hi, stupid. James. You know, Howard. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. You're being a cunt. Who? Oh, oh, okay. You, right. Did he fuck me or You're what? right. The guy's right. I'm being a cunt. Go ahead. Spend whatever you got to spend. I'm thanking you over here, man. Yeah. Girls grow up and they, they want this fucking fancy princess wedding. They all do. And it's, 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 it's your force into it. There's no choice. No, James, uh, there I is mean, a choice. I'm telling Put your you. foot down, man. That he's marrying the wrong girl. No, I married a great girl. My, my, my I didn't say you. I said then Jason's money. marrying the wrong girl if she wants a princess wedding when he has no money. No, I think it's Jason. I think he wants mm. to impress people here at work a little That's, bit. He feels whoa, whoa, weird. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, no, really. No, no, nothing no, no. like that? No, it really isn't. It's Listen, I when, when I got... Then what is it? I'll, I'll tell you what it was. Admit your I, love for Kevin and take the nude <laughs> pictures and marry I wanted a small wedding. I want to do something you, Kevin. in a park with a tent. Have a few people over. <laughs> okay, that sounds reasonable. I, I was told I was trash. Your shirt. I ain't coming. <laughs> I was told that that was trashy. Whatever. I don't know. So then, when it gets decided that we're gonna do the real, the big wedding, whatever. Then, I, yeah, I want to do things right. I don't want to do things half assed We're gonna do a big wedding. All right. I, I've spent enough time. Yeah. Oh, wait, this is you. silly. Hold on. I just want to make a point, Howard. Yeah. Jason hit the nail right on the head. He wanted a simple wedding. He wanted a tent. And now what is he doing? He's the asshole taking a fifteen thousand dollar loan out. Who but won? No, there's no compromise. There's no winning. He he's doing it on his own. He's not doing. He's doing it on his own to make his future he's wife a man. happy. He's yeah. saying no. no right. The buck stops with you. Wait, what? What is that? You, the buck stops with you. You can't blame other people. Right. And right. I, I'm with he the personal responsibility. He I wants understand a big it. wedding. He's like a girl. Right. You want a big? You want a big wedding? No, I don't want a big. Yes, wedding. he does. He's paying for it. All right, with don't his girl. To, he's saying right. he doesn't, but he does. Well, right. Will hit it on the head. He wants a big wedding, right. and he's not thinking with his brain. This isn't the girl. This isn't his parents. This is him. He wants a big wedding. Why don't you admit it? I think he's brainwashed. No, I would never. No, because I don't want a big don't. wedding. Then why are you having one? Because everyone else wants it. So you took, so, wait, so Howard, everyone I'm forced you only... to sign over a $15,000 No, but loan? I'm not the only vote. I mean, uh, there's Jason, two people getting married. There's two no, families getting married. No, you say, I don't have the money. Honey, there, there's no money. I should have said that, and I didn't. But I So mean, then you want a big wedding. I, no, I said I wanted a small wedding. No, I didn't say anything about the money. No, you want a big one. You, I, you, so who signed the loan? You. I resigned myself over to it. Doesn't mean oh, I want it. Oh, that's bullshit. You want a big wedding? Believe me. Let me ask you something. I, I, I hate want these fucking uh, things. Everyone in the room wants you to take a gun and shoot yourself in the head. You gonna do it? No. No. 
I don't want that. Thanks, but let's say everyone well, not does. Not a bad idea. You're going to say on, no. I'm a, I don't on. care how many people want that. I want to live. You're right about stepping up and, you and put your foot a big down. Wedding. You're right about stepping you up and put, put on a dress and walk down the aisle. <laughs> Come on, dude. You know this <laughs> is like bullshit. like a fucking ice cream <laughs> What? <laughs> this is bullshit. It's not Look, bullshit, Jason. I'm as real as can be. I no, I believe you're being as real as can be. But dude, come on. You know it's not. It's not like I'm throwing Jason, the wedding by myself. Do you have the fifteen thousand dollars, or you have to take out a loan? I had to take out a loan. Okay, then you want. But that's my fault for not saving right and not doing no. the things that needed to be done. No, Every, it's your fault. You know, you say you are so trained like a seal. Listen, yeah. to how many times you said it's my fault? It's my fault because you know these broads are gonna go. Don't say it's my fault. Right. No, it is. Let them take some of the blame. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Like I, I'm every not the two only seconds, person. you say it's. Out. It's my fault. It's my. Yeah. It ain't. All right. Listen. It, look, you, you got to take responsibility got, for something. Then, then man. take responsibility and admit you so want a big wedding. No, I, that I will not admit because no. I don't want a big no. wedding. You might as well. You're paying, You're paying for, it. for it. You took out a loan for you it. You never no paid for anything you. you didn't want before for somebody what else. What loan would your wife take out for you? She take out a loan. Oh, she would. She just can't get it. Get her to take out the loan. First, get her to get a job. <laughs> Where's my fucking loan? Right. You know what I mean? It's not happening. Where, I, I would love for my wife. Can you imagine my wife saying, oh, 15 grand, honey, I got an idea. We're going to go to Acapulco. I'm going to get a spa for you. I'm, I'm going to suck no, your cock every day. And I'm going to spend 15 grand. Where's that? That's what I want in my life. My wife doesn't have a job. It, I, I know, but the, the, Same, right. Where, there is no job, compromise. Right. So Sal wants to buy $5,000 purses and new floors and shit. Sal is another asshole. Okay, right. But he I wants am. I'm stuff. a certified you married wait, asshole. Wait, if you have no money in the bank and someone says, I I want a five five thousand dollar purse. You say, you say, listen. I'm gonna get a, a call a truck. They're gonna come with a straight jacket. <laughs> I'm gonna put you in it because we don't have five thousand dollars. We have children to support. We're gonna have to send them to college yeah, one day. I mean, you know what? Your that's... bag is something. Listen, then you got to go meet a rich man. I'm waiting for her. I'm not for you. Right. It's enough. That's a selfish thing for and, her. with and kids. You, five and, and I like your wife. Five thousand dollars. What do you do with a five thousand dollar purse that you can't really? do with a fifty dollar purse? And it's a bag you hold your shit in. You hold That's tampons and lipstick you. in it. It does the same That's, thing. All right, listen. Because women no, are fucking whole... crazy. Don't get me no, started on these you're crazy. animals. The women are animals. Crazy. They're you said creatures. that was black. That's a black word. <laughs> no, well. They're not crazy. You're crazy. No, they're right. crazy. No. You're crazy. All right, I'm, cra You're yeah, I'm crazy. Paid, You're right. I'm crazy for shacking up with these wackos. Who paid the five thousand dollars? <laughs> you or her? Me. Ah. So oh, who's crazy? God. Oh man. You know what? It's no different than if Are you. Did you pay the five thousand or did she? I did, but it's like so. Me who's crazy? All right, I'm crazy. Okay, it's, now leave. You ever heard of prisoners of war going leave. crazy? Leave. That's right. You're you crazy. Get tied Don't up say and the women are crazy. You're crazy. M not not many. All right, some women she are. She is married childish women. and doesn't understand. No, nah, she's not. No. no, listen to me. When a woman who has children says she wants a five thousand dollar bag and she's married to you who's got nothing, that's childish. But you are crazy. Because you paid the five, somehow you got five thousand dollars and you took the fucking five thousand dollars and you paid it. <laughs> so you're the crazy one. She's the childish one. Now you can leave. I'm How gonna finish up with Jason. Kids of yours gonna get to college. They're not going anywhere. Sheesh. They're going to LA. They're and be Jason is face. another one who doesn't take responsibility. Jokes. Here's here's my Work assessment. Here's my assessment of Jason. Jason wants a big wedding, like a woman. I don't, does he? And you really think that? Absolutely. Uh, you must. He won't be honest and admit it to himself. <laughs> okay. Sit down with yourself and realize you're excited to have a big wedding. Okay. And you're willing to do anything, even be fiscally irresponsible, to have this wedding. Because believe me, I can mention now ten things that if I told you to do them, you wouldn't do. Because you don't want it. You want this. Not your wife. I don't know what she wants. Huh? She's not in the room, but right. you want it. You even went to the point where you're going to spend $15,000 you don't have and pay 18% interest. And that interest is going to rack up 2000 a month you're going to pay. The banks love assholes like you. They wait for guys like uh, you. No, no, no. No, they love you. But I'm paying you it know off. Who loves it's going to be paid off at I'm going to tell you who loves you. What? Banks. Yeah, I... No, banks would love me if I went to the end of this, you know, the end of the no, lease term or no, whatever they long term. They no, they don't love you. Me. Back, you're going to be paying. You're yeah. going to be sending them two thousand dollar checks. No. You're the best thing that ever happened. It'll to be bank. paid off by the end of the year. No, end of story. Yes, no, it will be. I'm going to bring in the statement here. I'm going to show All you. All right, good. But um, but dude, it's going to be I, paid off with the gifts you got. Right, and then what about the thirty four k you owe in student loans? And Is that what I'm still paying off? No, I pay every month. Take the fifteen thousand and pay that off. You're right. Well, you can't take out a loan to pay another loan, can you? I don't know how that no, works. No, don't take out a loan. Yeah. Take the $30,000 you're getting as a wedding gift from your mother and from the father. 
and take the thirty, walk over to wherever you owe thirty four thousand dollars and hand it to them. And now you'll only be four thousand in debt, which ain't great either. That would be a great wedding gift from my parents, but Why that didn't happen. No, they, they gave you a wedding gift. Well, You're they, putting it toward a party. They wouldn't give me that money if I wasn't making a party. I agree with every single thing you said today to Talk, me. Talk, sit them down and say, listen, I want I'm party. starting my married life, $34,000 in debt. Now I'll be another $15,000. $48,000 in debt. That's right. Ooh. Say, this is bad for me and bad for my wife. I'm, I've decided to take the $30,000 and pay off my loan, and I'm going to marry this woman and do the best I can in life. Although, what's the percentage um, on the college loan? Oh, it's a government loan, so it's not it's not bad. So I wouldn't it's pay it off. It's very small. Pay it off. <laughs> I'm paying no, no, no. Trust me, every month. He's better off taking it and using no, it to eat don't listen to him. No, no, no. no. You're wrong. Pay it off. It's an albatross around my neck. Every month, they take it out so of my bank automatically. I don't even look party. at it. party. Think what? about the albatross. That's it. Don't make our audience look up albatross. <laughs> Secondly, why don't, you, why don't you write 107 letters to deal in no deal? <laughs> and see if they'll put you on. Why don't you write on a blackboard 8,000 8, times, I am a dudnik. I am a dudnik. <laughs> what is it, Ralph, please? Jason. Yes, Ralph. I love you. I think that you should be a man and take control of the situation. I, I don't. I think you're wrong. I don't think J Jason wants this. I think he's been been just. He's just pushed down this road. See, I agree with I that. Think, does, no. Does Janice want this? No. Yes. Yes. No. Okay. Janice wants. So, Janice, so listen. You know what? It's like Sal's wife wants a bag, and uh, you know oh, what? Wait, wait, you know wait, wait. what I oh, want? Come on, I dude. Want, this is different. I want. To, I want. I want to go to heaven. I mean, a lot of people have wants and needs, <laughs> and guess what? You don't get it. You know. But Jason, if you. You, you and her are so opposed on this, your marriage is doomed. Well, that's the down. whole thing. We weren't opposed. We were opposed a year ago, and then I, I gave in. All you right. gave in. I right. gave in. I gave in. That's the, I'm, Ralph a, I'm a sucker right. and a loser. What can life. I say? I am. I'm really but you're saying, you know, he's saying he'll pay back this loan, but he'll. this is the way he'll solve all of his economic problems. No, right? no, he'll no, take no. loan after loan after loan after card. loan. Come on, I'm not asking... I'm not asking anyone for help here. I'm not begging. I'm, I'm t I, I took out the loan. I'll pay the loan back. You ain't getting yeah, it. I mean, you've learned this as the way to make <laughs> ends meet. No, it's not. It's a way to make this stupid party happen and go away. Yeah, and there's always something that's when you have a yeah. kid. Yeah. What's your credit and, card and all debt? of that stuff. That's not bad. Wow. What's not bad? How much in credit cards do you owe? Um... It's terrible. Too much. I don't want to say that. This is all these kids from this generation, man. What do you owe in your credit card? Teddy's the same way. What do you owe in your credit card? It's embarrassing, dude. Now I feel like Boy, an asshole. Here. I got the uh, I got the ring, the engagement ring, and the bands from the great Steven Singer on my credit card. How much and, was uh, that? Uh, all told, uh, is, uh, is close to five thousand. Oh, and yeah, what's yeah. the interest rate on that? Oh, that was six percent. No, it's not. Yeah, right. No, no, it is. Not. On no a credit, credit card? card? It's a what credit one, card you got? This six percent? Mastercard, Bullshit. Bank of America. It's probably like twenty three percent. No, it's not twenty three percent. I don't sign up for those. But you had what? credit card debt before that, right? Yeah, but I paid that off. No, I paid that off. It's well, not added. one. It's not one that's going to jump all of a that. sudden up to fifty percent, right? The no, no, no. It's not variable. It's uh, yeah. no. It's it's. Good. There's no six percent credit card. It, especially maybe nine percent. I don't. I'll go get my bill and I'll look. I've had it get for, your for bill. three years. But it's eighteen percent. Not in this economy. How much does Janice owe? How much does she have in credit card debt? I have no idea. If, okay, it, that's that's another problem. Find Let's out together, man. You might want to know. It's going to be your problem. What? Huts? <laughs> Don't call him names well, just because he's in love. Don't call him names. What, are, what have we been doing for the Apple hour? <laughs> I'm what an idiot. You, and you, 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 know, you know, it's not even funny. I'm worried about you. No, I know. And it makes me feel, um, it really makes me feel stupid. And I was right. And I guess I am. You could be putting that money into your life. Why would you want Why'd you want to spend 40 grand on something that lasts two hours? Fuck that. It's four yeah. and a half. You starting to regret this stuff? What'd you hear about how Will died to side? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> did did so Jason. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you seem so defeated in there. You know what? I can't argue. I love to argue, but you can't argue with someone you agree with. And everything, for the most part, how it's said in there is spot on. It's uh, he's right. I I agree with him when it comes to how you should run your economic household. And I know that it's uh, that. I'm sloppy with it. I live above my means. I have fancy TV and cable. And, and he's right on with everything he said. He's right on with everything he said at the wedding. The one thing I disagree with him on is that he said that I want the uh, the big wedding, which is not true. I don't want the big wedding. Um, so, But everything else he says, and then when you hear the truth, the things you already know, spoken right back at you, as Howard's staring at you, 
It's uh, it's, it's like he's seen, uh, you know, right, right, cuts right to the core of your soul. <laughs> so that's what I'd say about that. Did you did you stop taking your confidence pills or something? Like you gotta take them and put your foot down and tell your wife. No, or, no. You in fact, say that you're not gonna do stuff like this, man. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the confidence pills. Look, it's a it's the horrible way Americans think, which is you start planning this shit out and things are doing payments and things are due six months from now, ten months from now, and and it's not real and uh, uh, and you may you know and things build and before you know it you're going to the bank to borrow fifteen thousand dollars and i'm not an excuse that's not an excuse i know how it says i'm not taking responsibility but i don't know how many more times i can say that i am uh uh it's right though he's right look I, i'm still shaking i'm sorry i'm sorry chris you should just dude just look at sal <laughs> just, look at sal you don't want to end up like that do you no 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 listen first of all can if i could just say this you better put this on tv janice is a wonderful person who is not a uh somebody who makes me take her out and buy her fancy clothes or fancy dinners or vacations we never go anywhere we never do anything this is the one thing in the world that would seem to be really important to her um and uh, and uh, yes i wanted to give it to her and did i let things get out of control uh, yes but uh it's, it's, uh, it's she's not like some she's not sal's wife let's put it that way there's no five thousand dollar per purses and trips to orlando okay this is eight years i've been with her this is the one thing she's ever asked for is this wedding and i love her and i want to give it to her and that's all i'm gonna say about that hey man so thank god jason was in there you kind of skated on by pretty easy oh yeah dude i gave that was the ultimate deflection that's what you do <laughs> you hold a few things in the back of your head and when you get in there you feel a little trapped to shoot it out. Now, what do you what do you think he's doing wrong? Is he just is he whipped or? I think he's an it? idiot. He's just stupid. <laughs> I, well, I think and I don't think he's stupid. Like I think he he's yeah. a smart guy, but I think financially he's completely irresponsible, and he just doesn't know how to deal with money properly. Yeah. Really don't because I mean it's insane. You're taking out a fifteen thousand dollar loan to get fucking married at eighteen percent interest. He's paying two thousand dollars a month for nothing until he pays the fucking thing off. Everything for the wedding he's gonna get. Any kind of presents. We work at a great office. A lot of people have money here. He's gonna get a lot of money probably for his wedding. And instead of using that towards a house or you know whatever, paying off other debts, he's gonna be paying for his fucking wedding. I mean, it's basically he's throwing a party for free because he's not getting anything out of it. You know, he's blowing through all his family's money. I know they don't have a whole lot of money, and they're sacrificing to make this wedding happen. And then on top of that, another fifteen thousand. It's absurd. He's a moron. He's a moron. Who said that? I did. <laughs> so, Sal, you have no advice for them but to just go ahead get and do out it? Of, yeah, right, right. You're not going to get out of it. I would love for them to get out of it. They're not going to get out of it. So go ahead and do it. Cut your own throat. Blow your own fucking brains out. Slit your own wrists. That's what it is. And just be miserable? That fucking aisle. That's not an aisle. That's, that, that's like, what is it called? Death row. That's what it is. That fucking church is death row. And they're never going to learn. They're never going to learn. But you know what? See, the other thing that bothered me about the whole thing, neither one of them ever looked at one thing that where they could have what they wanted but not cost so much. Dude, right. you just couldn't be more wrong about this no, one point, I'm dude. Right. I'm not. I, I'm, Jason, you don't if say, you were in a psychiatrist's office, right? he would say to you, he'd sit you down, and he'd say, Jason... You got to get in touch now. You, what is your fantasy here about this big day? Because believe me, any other normal person wouldn't be doing this. You That's want a true. big wedding. No. You're excited to have no. a big party. I understand. You know, you see a guy like me, people carry on. You're, Robin throws me. Birthday okay. party. Now's your big day. You're just like the girls. You no. want your big day. You dreamt no. of a big wedding day, and no. now you're getting it. <laughs> Because he's not, no. I'm sorry you're wrong on this one. I no. tell you when you're right, no, but you're Jason, wrong on this Jason, one, dude. You don't spend money on things you don't want. Mm. I know that about guys. You don't. Oh, so Sal wanted to buy his you wife? Want to be wants special. the purse? Yeah. No, I oh, don't. Oh, yeah, he wants to be a big shot. Listen, don't forget, his right. wife was with an emotional friend. And he says, oh, she's going to love me if she gets a purse. Mm. He's trying to buy her What love. about me screams Mr. Love. Big Shot besides being big? Nothing. I mean, seriously, that's Nothing. not me. That's not my psyche, no, man. No, it sure is. This no, is it's your not. Big day. I'm wearing shoes. I've had these same shoes for three years. I'm not trying to show off anything. This isn't my big day. I don't care about having a big wedding. No, I'm sorry you you're wrong because about you this. You wouldn't dude. be buying it. That's not true, man. Sure it is. There's other people. You know this. I know no, you know this. No, There's no, outside no, 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 factors. No. I don't live in a vacuum, man. No, it's not that you live in a vacuum. You just sit there. You, you li you're buying into this. You, you make like sure your it. wife vacuums. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she does. Listen, I know about you. I know you don't. I, every day you buy breakfast and lunch. You should be packing a bag to lunch. Uh, yeah. And save the 20 bucks a day. Because you know what 20 bucks a day is? 
That's a hundred dollars a week. I tell me about and it. Pay man. off that fucking loan and pack yourself a goddamn. You're lunch. the one that yelled at me for buying Subway sandwiches for five dollars. Look at the cheapest right. sandwiches around That's here. That's stupid. You know how much a Subway sandwich I can make at home. What? That's a luxury to go. Here's to Subway what you do. Sandwich. You know what? No, you know. no. Excuse me. Look, look, can Go you ahead. give me a sec? Go ahead. It's a luxury to have a Subway sandwich. That's a huge luxury for a guy like you. I could make a Subway sandwich for a dollar. Yeah, what's so great about the Subway sandwich that you can't do at home? What did you have on that Subway sandwich? Uh, it's a uh, roast beef turkey. Right. Onions. Roast beef mm. turkey and onions. Yeah. And believe me, I see the level of the roast beef and the turkey. Yeah. We saw it here. You could get for you could spend $25, go out and get enough turkey and roast beef to last you the week. And you can buy a whole thing of bread. For probably, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to get you great bread. Ten bucks. And better quality sandwiches. And I'll buy some head of lettuce and tomatoes. And that's another three or four dollars or five dollars, okay? And now for fifty dollars, I got my own sandwich. And you could save fifty dollars a week. Now, people say, ah, big deal, fifty dollars a week. That adds up, man. That adds up. That's right. In a month, what do you have? Two hundred dollars. In a year, what do you have? Twenty-four. Hundred dollars, really? Is it that much? I think so. No, I, I think I, it's. I, I have a question though. I think it's twelve hundred dollars. I thought it was saving two hundred a month. I, no, I lost track of the money. <laughs> Wait. Are you the, saying the, the conversation? I know it's, I know it's over a thousand dollars. If you don't spend it, you don't lose track right. of it. <laughs> Listen, how you right, are? You're dead you. on about everything except the fact that I want this party, uh, this big party. I don't care about having okay, a big special day I'm for wrong. me. You I'm are. Wrong. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. But you did want Amsterdam. I did want Amsterdam. So then you're even a bigger jerk. You're spending money on something you don't want. You're right. You're right. You're a thousand percent right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then it's back to my premise. They're making, t- you know, they're not making decisions together. He's just right. going along with whatever decision she makes. Trust me, he wants to be a special girl for that day. Yeah, he wants to get dressed up too. Now, here's a guy. I, I look into his finances. He just got a gym membership, this kid. He's never gone once. He spends $100 a month. Who's this? Jason. He goes to what? He belongs to a gym? He belongs to a gym for $100 a month. Now, I'll do the math. 10 times 100. Let's say there were only 10 months right. in a year. You know that 10 times 100 is 1,000. Yeah. Now, add two more 100. 1,200. You got $1,200. That's how I do my math, okay? <laughs> I got to literally do that. Easy way. Or you could just say 12 times 100, which isn't that difficult. Right. Whatever. 1,200. I know this guy bought a costume for his dog for Halloween. Oh, oh no. That he, bought, oh. he bought several outfits for his dog. Now, let me tell you something. If you're and a wealthy the parties person, for the dog. Oh, my if you're God. Ron Perlman or Donald Trump. Indulge yourself. Not them. Crazy, a famous buy, gay guy. <laughs> f- buy 20 dogs outfits. <laughs> but, Indulge um, yourself. He threw parties for his cats, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, this is what rich, not rich guys, rich gay guys do that. <laughs> What's going well, on? He's thinking, look. Pictures of Kevin with his cock out. I don't mean to be a downer. I know everybody likes to have fun. But, you know, that's the problem. People, this is what's killing our economy, too. Well, no wonder he wants to take pictures of Kevin with his cock out. Mm. He thinks that can make money. Well, good. No, I think he secretly wants to marry Kevin, which I think Kevin would even Kevin, be more expensive. Kevin, do you want a big wedding? Uh, all right, I've lectured enough. Uh, I'm sorry I got sidetracked. No, but that is the state of the world. Everybody's broke. It's so interesting. This economy, I have so many friends with kids that are broke. It's so horribly depressed. But and here's a guy who doesn't need TV. to be broke. Everybody watches <clears throat> TV, and they see these elaborate parties, right. and they want their fantasy right. party, too. But, listen. Here's a guy who's he doesn't need to be broke. Right. That's the sad part. He's he's got money. And you, I'll tell you, he's spending it on the wrong things. I'll tell well, you, you, Robin. What? Xbox? You what don't do you help want? inviting them to your parties because <laughs> they are what wonderful. Want, Jason, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Gary's got some information. <clears throat> <clears throat> do you not want me to say it? No, it's it just it was a joke. I made a joke. <laughs> what Will asked me. This is what I heard. This isn't about money. This is just goes more to the gay thing. This is the N word. <laughs> that instead Uh-oh. of exchanging vows at the wedding, that they were going to hand each other each other's pets. Wow. What is that? What What is that? That's nothing. It was a fucking... Will kept asking me if I was going to involve the pets in the wedding. And so I made a joke. I don't know why he took it seriously. I'm not I'm not doing that. Are there going to be pets at your wedding? No. There are no dogs, no cats, right. no anything at the Mr. wedding. Mr. Whiskers will be the flower girl. <laughs> <laughs> Man, dude. I don't even know what... I mean, throwing parties for cats, you got to come back on that, bro. I will go to my grave and telling you, because I know human nature, that this fella right here, Jason... Mm-hmm. 
wants this wedding more than his wife does. Uh, I disagree with that. Deni- no, I don't. I really... and, and, let, and let me tell you something. you got to learn to deny yourself some things. Oh, you're definitely right about that. I, right. I, I buy a lot of shit I don't need. That's I, right. And this absolutely. is something you don't need. This is something I don't need. But I, whatever you say, I don't care. You're, you're going to stick You should to your really opinion, be wearing a dress to. to your wedding. You should not be wearing man's clothing. Well, the dress is very expensive. Mm, yeah. Well, then let's a, go for it all. <laughs> got a deal on the tux. Man. A, dress, <laughs> a dress on you would be appropriate. Very expensive. Because you're acting feminine. Mm. And, uh, so, wait a minute. You're saying good. to be feminine is to be frivolous with money? No. Mm. To be feminine is to want the big wedding. It's to want to uh, take and, a picture of Kevin's cock. Yeah. <laughs> this is very feminine. He's because blaming that, the woman that, for I, wanting I the, the, the girl. He's, no, you got to listen carefully. He's saying the woman wants the big wedding. Right. That's what girl, little girls want when they grow up. Sure. He is a little girl. No. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and I don't, I don't mean it as an insult. I'm not even, even going to argue with right. that. I bought the dog a cheater jersey, by the way. A man well, can say no. A woman, I have to have my wedding. You be a man. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. she wants right. to marry you. Listen, mm. there's right. debate about that, too, in the office. Oh. But listen, there's, <laughs> I'm kidding. The, you know, I'm lucky enough to be making some good money, and I think if I got married, like if me and Dana had worked, we both agreed we were flying to Vegas and, yeah. wow. and doing a party. Well, we really did. I mean, but not because of money, but just because, I don't know. It, it, weddings, it's such an old-fashioned tradition that doesn't, it doesn't, it's like the Catholic Church not letting priests get laid or you buy condoms. Right. It's it doesn't have to be. Yeah, it's a modern world. It doesn't. You're not you ruining any. You do that. Yeah, yeah, he's right. You know, we, right. we don't want a traditional thing. It's not about the money. Right, we but be, it listen, sounds we like beat him Jason. Up enough. It's enough. The one thing I, you know, he. It sounds like he sat down with the the moms and the girlfriends. Yeah, he's sitting down with. Uh, he's got a, a cadre of people. Yeah, it's all and, brunch, and all though. of a sudden, his cabinet is filled with women. Yeah, he's yeah. given a party. All right. Thank you. Time to take responsibility. Thank you. All right. Look, I got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. More, Chris? Jason. More? <laughs> More? It's bad enough that Howard's pretty much calling you an idiot, and now he's calling you a woman. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a stupid one. <laughs> I say. Listen, I love Howard, and again, I appreciate everything, or most of everything he said, but, uh, you know, he's also running a comedy show, so I'll take it for what it's worth. And if he thinks I'm a woman, then he wouldn't be the first, so what can I Wrap-up show, a recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, this is John Hine, and on Monday's wrap-up show, Artie stopped by with Gary to talk about their fine USO tour. And they both seemed a little bit annoyed that Howard didn't let them tell their stories the way they wanted to tell them. Let's see what they had to say. We should lead off, Gary, of course, with your world tour. And uh, before we get into the details on that, because you guys talked about it for a while, well, already talked about it for a while on today's show, did you think Howard was, okay, guys, thanks, you know, like we've we've heard these stories at a certain point, or... You know, we started talking about it almost as soon as the show started. I looked at my watch, and it was 7.15, and I was like, I was thinking that's about as long as we were going to go, and then it went on to 7.30, and Howard was breaking my balls about that I wanted to keep, keep telling stories. I was just saying, log this story away for later. I, you know, we can break, but there's other good stories coming. I said, you know, Artie's meltdown at the airport. We should talk about it later. And he's like, Gary kept wanting to tell more and more stories. But Artie was telling the stories, and they were fine. I mean, listen, we talked about – think of how much time we devoted to it before we went. So we got to talk about what happened. Now, did um, – Artie, Artie said that it literally changed his life. He's happier, and he really has an appreciation. Yeah, I didn't even realize that until we got back. <laughs> <laughs> well, my question to you is, did it change yours? I, you know, I wouldn't say it changed my life, but it was an eye-opening experience, and it definitely makes me look at things differently than before I went. Like, I was even talking to you, you know, last night with that show Generation Kill. It was on David Simon on HBO, and I might have watched that show, and it might have blown right over my head, but it's almost like I was just there. And so when I see the news now, it has a meaning to me that it didn't have before. And Artie, Artie said something today that really hit it right in the head. There were like five or six people with us that were with us the whole tour that we got really close to. And if anything happens to any one of them, it would be really heartbreaking because now, you know, in a lot of ways the war is faceless. You know, they're American soldiers, but they're people that we knew and we got close to. Yeah, I'm, it was an incredible experience. We've been hearing the stories literally since you guys came back and, and how life-changing they are. But 
when Artie says that, you know, I, I believe him. But then, of course, you know, who did, knows what's going to happen did, next. did you ever see that? What was that movie uh, Steve Martin was in? It was a movie called Grand Canyon. I don't know if yes, you ever saw it. With Kevin Klein, right? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a weird movie. It's not really that good. But Steve Steve Martin plays a director who makes these, like, really horrible movies, like Speed, you know, like all these blow-up buses movies. And he gets robbed by somebody. He gets shot in the leg. And it's a life-changing experience. And when he's in the hospital... He tells everybody that from now on he's going to make these socially conscious movies and he's going to use his talents to make nothing but good movies. And as soon as he gets better, he's like, fuck that. I'm making those <laughs> shitty movies again. What was the most memorable experience of the trip? You know, it was a toss up between the Black Hawk helicopter ride. Not even the machine gun shooting that was great, but the ride 145 mo- miles north of Kandahar, you really got to see how people who live there just to live, how they how they live their everyday lives. And the thing that would be most interesting is you'd see nothing but desert for miles and miles, every direction that you look, and then all of a sudden a dude would be walking by, and even the pilot would say, "Like we we go, we see that all the time. We're like, how the fuck did he get here? Like how long did that guy walk in the desert to get here? Then you see shitty little huts, and then you just see like little tents. And when I say a tent, I'm talking about four sticks with a top on it, not a tent." And those are the Bedouins, and they're out there, and they're they're herding goats. And one of the funny things a Black Hawk uh, uh, pilot told us is sometimes they'll fly low when they see a herd of goats, and it'll scare the shit out of them. They'll all knock into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they're a little bored. That was, but seeing how they live, making that trip, and just seeing how people live in that part of the country that aren't at war was fascinating. And then the other thing was, we went to a base probably about six or seven miles outside of the base we were staying in Kandahar, just up the road. And so they had a tank in front of us, and then we had these SUVs, and we went through town. Do you know what I mean? We went through town where people live. And again, you know, these people, like there were these markets on the side of the road, and we passed this uh, this yard, and it was filled with about f- uh, 50 Russian tanks and 50 Russian trucks that were all left there from the Afghani war, and they were all graffitied. And again, just driving through where these people live, Outside the confines of the base and not as safe as the base, it was scary yet very interesting. How well did the guys get along? Was anyone a real pain in the ass? We were saying that, you know, God bless the fact that we all got along really well. First of all, I loved all the guys on the ship, but Jim Florentine is a fucking saint. He's just, you know, he's very level-headed. He doesn't get upset. He goes with the flow, and he and I really got along the best on the trip. But like I said, we all got along great. You know, Nick's maybe one of the funniest guys I ever met. Dave had already been to five of these. So Dave was really like sort of our leader in he knew how to act. Like our first morning at breakfast, we all got our trays and we sat down with our USO guy. And I saw Dave sitting like 10 tables away with a bunch of soldiers. And the USO guy goes, just so you know, for future reference, that's what you do. Nobody sits. We don't sit together. Your job is to go sit at a table and hang out with everybody. And Dave was really good. Like we'd go and meet people. He'd step right up and, and he'd introduce himself. And, you know, the great thing was everybody there had some degree of notoriety. If you knew Artie and I from the show, you knew Dave from Insomniac, you knew um, uh, Nick from, you know, Colin Quinn's talk, uh, Tough Crowd, and you knew uh, Jim from uh, Special Ed. You know, from Crank Yanker. So, every, you know, somebody would talk to you, and sooner or later, they know everybody would know somebody on the show. All right, let's go to the phones. Jeff in Portland, Maine, you're on the wrap up show. Morning, guys. Hey, Jeff. Hey, uh, you know, to put it bluntly, uh, I thought Howard was kind of a cocksucker for shutting off the conversation. What do you mean? I mean, I know, I know it's a show, and I know he, he directs the show the way he wants to, but. I mean, you guys could have done this talk for four hours, and I think the fans would have eaten every bit of it up. It's hard, I don't it, think it's hard to say. I know what you're saying, Jeff, but a lot, but a lot of times too. And I, I appreciate your call. A lot of times, it's you know, it's like, oh my god. First of all, Ralph got in his head because Howard told me at quarter to six that Ralph said, "Oh my god, are we going to have to listen to Artie and Gary for the whole four hours?" You know what? I, I'm, it's Artie. I'm here now too, sir, and I appreciate your call as well. And Gary's 100 percent right. Uh, Ralph probably said that, and I'll tell you what, uh, this is how Howard loves the fans and how he respects them, and this is what's great about them. And one of the things Howard has taught me is don't be verbose, get the stuff quick. So I felt a lot of pressure to, to, to rush through the stories. I really did, because he was like, okay, what, get... And then he would jump around, he would want to hear about my party with Rob, and I'd start to tell that, then he'd go, get to the bombing, then... 
you know, we had a lot of interesting things that happened before that. Then he's like, get to the bombing. We get to the bombing, and I know Gary looked like he was rushing. I was rushing. And we did get out most of the highlights, and I think we told the stories well. But for some reason, maybe it was Ralph. Uh, Howard wanted to rush it. And then we took a commercial break. And I never do this, but I noticed on the phone callers that there were a couple people up saying, uh, don't rush Artie and, and Gary through these stories. They're great. A couple of fans did call it and say that. And uh, the people Howard respects the most before celebrities, before anything, uh, are the fans. And I noticed Howard might have glanced at that. And if you notice when we came back from commercial, maybe because of those calls, he uh, he really sat there and let uh, me tell a couple of stories a little slower and a, and a little more detail, and Gary as well. So, um, Artie, did you? Did we, we, we got the most of them, but, uh, you know, uh, Howard's the genius. He runs a show, but maybe it was Ralph. I definitely felt a little rushed. Uh, did you hear me? I panicked at one point. I yeah. started to tell our story, and I literally, I started to tell our story, and I go, oh, you know what? I'm going to skip that. Right. And I was skipping the shit pond because I really felt like I had to do mass editing right. on our story. Then Artie goes, no, no, no. I got to tell you the story about the shit pond. And I felt bad because, see, Gary was doing that, and then I had to interrupt Gary because I felt, fuck, that's important. We got to put that in there. Because, I mean, I mean, literally, we're two feet from a shit pond. In the middle of a show, you're tasting shit, and the <laughs> guys in Kyrgyzstan had warned us about it. And and uh, that's a major part of the story that's not only interesting, it's funny, it's fascinating, and um, I don't know. But uh, after the break, he seemed to be a, a little bit better about it. Nick DiPaolo, by the way, had, I thought, the funniest uh, shit pond joke. He goes, uh, he goes out and he goes, I feel like I'm doing the show with a piece of shit on my upper lip. Yeah, well, that's that, what it I'm, smelled. That was a perfect description. Ralph Sorello, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, now. Hey, Ralphie. Hey, I didn't, you know, why am I getting fucking pissed on? No, no, no we're I just, mean, I didn't, look, I didn't, tell we, Howard. No, no, we're, was, we're not blaming you. We're just saying you said something and it well, got let me stuck tell in you, his head. You know, I'll tell you what happened. When uh, that news story came out, I was talking to Howard on the phone or something, and we were laughing and we were joking around. I was like, oh, no, Gary's going to have nine million stories now. It's going to be going to, like, you know, I said, I said hey, Ralph, words Ralph, to that effect. Ralph, we were joking around. Was there ever, was there ever any worry? And wait a second. And no. And, um... <laughs> And you know it's Howard Show. I mean, if he if he's so fascinated, he's not going to say, "Oh well, I'm gonna I got to cut this short because Ralph's not enjoying." No, but it. He, he, Ralph, you can't deny that when you plant a seed in somebody's head that you know, especially when it comes to go, he's more aware of anybody that I've ever dealt with it, at any level of show business of not wanting to bore the audience, of wanting to give them what they want. Absolutely, so you can't deny that what you said. Might, I'm not blaming you. But I'm saying you can't deny that that might have been in the back of his head. I, I, I don't know. But I also think, you know, you don't blow your load. I mean, why do you have to tell every story right away? You we know, didn't. I got news for you. I got news for you, Ralph. We didn't. I mean. Yeah, no, I know. I'm, t I'm saying. I'm not saying you did. I mean, and you told me a lot of this before, Artie. I was listening to the show, and I was, well, I was up at 6 o'clock, and it wasn't, I wasn't bored. I would have called in and said I was if it was. No, I, I, maybe it was a misunderstanding, but G Gary's right. What I love about Howard is the fact that the only person person he's a slave to is uh, the person sitting in traffic listening to his show, his fans. Like, he'll piss off a fucking A-list celebrity uh, to book Beetlejuice what? because right. he thinks Beetlejuice will make his audience laugh more and, and won't make them bored. And I love that about Howard. And he knows Ralph uh, started out as a big fan and maybe that did get in his but, head a little well, bit. Well, so, you know, you, you are sort of, you know, I'm sitting there listening and I'm like, well, I want to hear what Howard did too. You know, you, you don't want it to be all like war stories for two hours you want to you want to get to other stuff too and i did say i didn't say to howard but i'll say to you guys too i think you guys should do a special one night or over the weekend you guys should just get all to get together and tell stories about what happened i think that'd be really interesting jim and i actually kept uh, journals during the whole trip i don't know if anybody else did but we just sort of just wrote a notebook well the last chapter okay. of my book is is uh, this trip so i uh kept some notes and the whole week at the at the shore i i pretty much wrote it and I'm almost done with it so I uh, I, I definitely tried to keep some notes but Gary and uh, Jim were keeping very very thorough journals which was I, cool I, I picture these 
tough army guys and Gary in the corner scribbling in his journal. Well, you know, a lot, I mean, you know, a lot of those guys, are, you'd be surprised what they do to kill time. It's therapeutic. Right. They write, they paint, yeah. they're like anything. There's a full Afghanistan basketball league made up of all our guys, and there's like eight teams, and uh, outside one of the rec centers, I caught one of the games, and I uh, I had Barracks B given seven to Barracks 2, and I, <laughs> and I, I covered. Hey, I'm JD. On uh, Tuesday's wrap-up show, we talked about Amber Hay, this uh, hot chick, actress, whatever, uh, who's been hit on by practically everyone on Entourage. Um, you know, some guys thought she was hot, others, including myself, thought she was possibly a little annoying. Uh, you make your own mind. Watch. Today, Amber Hay stopped by, who uh, I guess is was Joe Francis' girlfriend and uh, a Girls Gone Wild cover girl. Is that is that yeah. the right way to describe it, her? I guess this is magazines, but she's not naked in the magazine, right? I she said topless didn't see somewhere. It. Oh, she is somewhere. She's topless. Oh, they, it comes with a DVD or something, and she said she's topless in the DVD. Dude, if I got to take a DVD out to see her topless, it's a long way to go. There's plenty of other topless chicks. Now she described herself as a uh, David Spade six. How how did you guys think she looked today? I thought she was really pretty, despite the fact that I just didn't like her on the air. But I thought I thought she was very pretty. She had a very girl next door look, like a. She was like a uh, a better looking Marsha Brady sort of look. You know what I, I mean? thought but, she was a Benji Bronk ten. No, but Benji said really? you know we can talk. Benji said that he thought she was really hot, but he didn't think her face was that pretty. And we all disagreed. If you though, isolate her, face, her was, face, her body's incredible. Her, her face is very pretty. Oh my god! When you see it on TV, like her legs were just beautiful. They're toned, just a beautiful curvy body. She had the, the a little bit darkness to her skin, which I love. But uh, her face is if you isolate her face, it's a little bit off. Yeah, Benji wasn't the only one saying that. Uh, we in the studio, yeah, Howard. Looking right at me, John. Yeah, that was your cue, JD. <laughs> oh well, I mean, I I agree right on with Benji. I and I agree. Her face was a David Spade six. No, she's a Spade seven point five. Well, I mean, it's not a ten. And right. So whatever. But we don't have Spade standards. Now, did the entire cast of Entourage, including Artie Lang, I guess, hit on this girl? It seemed like with Jeremy Piven and everything else she was saying. It sounds like she had one acting part, and everyone hit on her. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're about right. Yeah, I believe John tried to look her up on Lost, and she didn't, it didn't make it on her IMDb. Yeah, so. like what was she on Lost? Did she ever explain who she, what she played yes. on Lost? She said she played Charlie's brother's girlfriend, like during a flashback. Yeah, and I looked it up, and I didn't see her. But Charlie, why would she? Why would she lie right. about that? So you know? Charlie's brother is the guy he was in the band with, right? Right, so yeah. pa- right. half a drive shaft. <laughs> and she's not on Mr. Skin either, by the way. Well, you have to have been in something to be on Mr. Skin. She said she was naked she on Entourage. Was, yeah, and, and we looked it up right on Mr. Skin and nothing. So, so we'll she get, must not make the cut for Mr. Skin either. Well, we'll get to the bottom of this. Now, what did you think of Artie's USO move at the end of the segment there to try and... And she just basically said, well, why don't you just ask me for my number? Um, yeah, I, th- I think she was buying into it. And I think she thought that everything Artie said was true. And already wanted her number. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah, that's a, she would look the, the look she was giving him. Now I thought she really was into him, but she didn't give him the look back when she left the studio. I, I don't we think... should talk. We should talk about. Um, you know, you think it's okay to talk about what was going on off the air? Artie was talking to Howard. And he said, "Like, listen, what's the move now? I got the number. Do I call her and do I say, um, you know?" Uh, Listen, we were goofing around in the air, but I, I really would like to go. Like, he was, Artie was trying to figure out how to make the next move. And I kept saying to Artie that, you know, you can make the move, but I guarantee you that whatever show she's on next, you're on the end of her list of guys who tried to fuck her. And he goes, I could care less. You know what I mean? Like, I know that if, you, if, if Artie calls her and asks her out, the next time she's on some show, she's going to be, and Jeremy Piven, and then Artie oh, Lang and the Ar- Howard Stern show. Artie's like the next creep to stalk her, that exactly, kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. Artie sent me 200 text messages. Yeah, she'll be on the next radio show talking about Artie. Right. And already said he could care less. All right. Let's go to the phones. Uh, Dan in Chicago, you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, hey, guys. Um, this Amber Hay chick, I found her to be extraordinarily annoying. How so? And I was one of the probably million people that Googled her because there was no picture on the website, or on the, on the Stern website. I didn't even think she was that hot. I mean, she was brutal. I was actually kind of hoping for the first time ever that Ralph would call in and just rail on her because she sucked. And Artie'd be nuts to try to call her. She sucks. 
All right, Dan, not a big fan of Amber's. Rooting for Ralph to call in. That's that's a pretty uh, desperate move there. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen the pictures of her on the web. I'm going to look right now, but she was pretty. George in Pennsylvania, you're on the wrap-up show. Yes, Gary, I got a question for you. How come we didn't try to put her on the Sivian? Um, because I I don't I think you know the first move was to get her naked. And I don't think she was interested in that. So, I get, I think we didn't put her on the Sivian because I don't I think we thought she might not be interested in going to Sivian. Plus, you always. No, that's, the, you, that's the whole game in it, isn't it? Well, but you don't always want to go to the Sibian, you know, because then it becomes too much. You want to kind of mix it up a little bit, I would well, think. Well, I understand that, but it just seems like uh, that, that would be the type of girl, if you, if you were able to conquer somebody like that, instead of some some uh, porn, gar- porn star going on there, it just seems like it's an easier, easier thing for a porn star. But uh, any old girl like that would probably be a little more little more interesting as far as maybe to get the true reaction of it. I see that point. I, 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 I would guess that Howard thought getting her on the Sibian was going to be impossible. Well, like she was just going to do I, I think she would be more of a tickle chair girl anyway because she constantly laughed. Is the tickle chair uh, in storage? No, that, no it's, it's, it's in there. By the way, J.D. brings up a great point. The laughing thing, she suffers from that, uh, that thing that hot chicks have where yes. they, think they're every, they think that everything they say is so funny that they laugh for you in advance so they can cue you in to laugh. She oh. laughed quite a bit. She did. She did. I'm looking at pictures of her on the internet now and I'm I got to tell you they don't do her justice. This is pictures her from this one picture that shows up where she's wearing like a black tank top and she was prettier in person than these pictures. Let's go to Scott in Illinois. Scott, welcome to the wrap up show. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Uh not to be a dead horse here that the bitch that was on there. I I thought she was awful annoying but for a different reason. A hot chick even makes her hotter when she has a sense of humor. Artie was trying to make her laugh, and she just blew him off like, you know what I mean? Did you think she was blowing off Artie, J.D.? I don't know, blowing him off, but it, it, I don't know. She just was just annoying, just talking about being hit on all the time. Too conceited for you? Uh, I guess. I don't know. You told me to get her number. Yeah, for Because uh, Artie said on the air. Yeah, already asked for you what, specifically what are you to get to number start 10. shit up, Ted? Nothing. <laughs> He's all over you today. I know. All over my fucking hair when I'm not even here. The fuck? Wow. You want to run the camera? No. <laughs> well, fine. Give me your give me your MacBook. Boys. Oh, no, get, boys, your, get your own MacBook. Boys, no. stop. <laughs> stop. Thank you. Is it one of those cases where the... And I thought she was a good guest because she talked about the different guys on Entourage yes. hitting on her. She revealed a lot of stuff that people wouldn't otherwise say. Yes. Was it one of those cases where, since she's pretty hot, she's never, you know, everything, I guess, comes easy, and, and yes. you get resent, resentful of that? Yes. Care to elaborate on that, J.D.? No, I mean, it's all out there. Hey, it's Al, and uh, on Wednesday's wrap-up show, I came up with a Baba Booey song parody, and it was a spoof on something, and it involved some bad words, and I was trying to explain myself... Those idiots didn't get what I was trying to explain, and then it turned into a whole big mess, and apparently they said I dug myself into a deeper hole. What hole? I don't know. Uh, so check it out, and you tell me. I made the song because I had this theory with John. I said, you know what's funny? The odd yeah, the thing, N-word. Right. The odd thing is that, no, no, no. I go, the odd thing in the past is that a lot of these songs, there was always some sort of submission involving the N-word. I go, I'm just surprised it didn't happen this time. It happened with the World's Meanest Listener contest. It happened with the prior Bowie song contest. So Right. Sal told me this dur- while we were like, listening to submissions. Yeah, this wasn't, break. this I'm, was I'm, before go, any of the finalists. You, know, so you, saw, the, so you saw something that wasn't being represented in the contest. I envisioned gold that wasn't there yet. Right. the N-word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Well... No, based on the past uh, submissions of the show, I said, I'm just surprised that hasn't come across yet. No, so, you so hold on. No, don't tell me what I'm thinking, all, all right? right? I just, just thought you were done. I you thought you were done. No, thought I'm not done. done. I'm not. I'd be, you, no, quiet. Jason, only I can tell Sal what he's Jeez, no Please wonder continue. your mother hates your guts. Holy cow. No wonder wow. your wife cheats on you. All right. Oh, oh, cock in the right now. oh <laughs> my. Oh, my God. You cuckold fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. So I was just saying that to John. So when it came down to it, I made a goof, a complete goof, to make a song with the N-word in it, and I put it up as a goof as, like, I was making fun of myself as Al Giovanelli versus Sal Governelli. But to find the goofy, what's the goofy part of it? <laughs> the goof was... Wait, you have to explain the Al Giovanelli thing, because how, I mean, he didn't say this was by Al Giovanelli. Right. He said it was hey, by hey, Sal. guys, listen, I, I don't, um... Please take over, Art. My name is Artie Lang. I just walked in, and it's hilarious, because as I walked in, McClure said what we're talking about, and the first thing I heard was, look, 
I wanted to make a song about the N word, goofing on myself, and Al Giovanelli. <laughs> so That's again, it, so. I don't know Al. I don't know what's going on, but it, it sounds like Sal is digging a huge hole. Well, and this is going to win best wrap up show of all year. No, it isn't. It, so go right ahead. Okay, Robin hit the nail on the head. She said, "Is he spoofing on the song parody contest?" And the answer is yes, because right on the clip, Robin said that sarcastically. By the way, no, I don't think so, because Howard goes, "No, he's not," and clearly on the clip, it's. Why are you laughing like a hyena, Jason? Clearly on the clip it said... Because last... someone walked in the room who's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it said... It said last minute submission by Al Giovanelli. But I don't get that joke. So it's like a character. No, hold on, I don't get the right, last minute. Right, it's a character it's like... It's not so, a joke like... and no one gets it. Right. How did, how did, you, how did you feel... <laughs> so how did you feel when Robin posed the question, is Sal racist like... or stupid? And unanimously we all thought you were stupid. Uh, you know, take it any way you want. I don't care. <laughs> no, how do you take it? I take it with it, these days. I take it with a grain of salt. I really do. I mean, I, I'm totally like you know. It's like you know, first time you get raped, it's traumatic. <laughs> Se <laughs> second, sec Are second, second. Speaking from personal experience, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sal text Antoine. Second time you cry a little less, you know. <laughs> By the tenth time, when you're locked in that dungeon of of fucking piss and shit and just complete torture and you're you could shit a bowling ball because your asshole so stretched apart it just doesn't matter anymore so that's yeah, where I've, i am I've right been now there. yeah is, is i know it, i mean listen so it's a, it's i'm totally desensitized take it any way you want i hope i had a little fun with it i laughed because i thought it was funny you laughed because you thought it was absurd in the end we all laughed we did our jobs and the peep the hard working people who pay for serious maybe got a giggle now out sign of it. right here and buy 500 Shares of the shit stock. Yeah, exactly. I hope the uh, I hope the um, sexual assault therapy room at Bellevue has serious because they're the only people who could relate to what uh, Sal just said. So Sal, I, I you I don't understand. You parry kind of like for Sal. Could you say uh, let's just? It's like the first time you say the word nigger violently, and you know you know you get the joy out of it. It's fun. And then the second time, it's like wow, it's funny. And then by the eight millionth time you say nigger, it's like wow, it's uh, you know I'm a racist and I'm funny and yeah. I'm gonna blame. On Al Giovanelli. So Sal, you did you that created Al's a you created a parody of yourself that's racist. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Now that you put in those words, all right. No, Sal was trying to say, and yes, I'm speaking for you here. That, that you just made a very great deep joke. <laughs> Sal was trying to say that the this song parody contest was missing a song of this type. But, but so he oh, created oh, let, 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 let him finish. Hold on. I got to say, Sal's wrong. We had plenty of shitty entries to the song parody oh, contest. And here's what this I, met with, I met with the N-word involved. Oh, but hold on. We're taking, getting involved we're, late here off the bench. We're taking it at Sal's word that that was necessarily missing. He's the one who determined that was missing from the contest. No one else did. Right. That's my job. I, I, what? That was my call. So uh, and so I did it, it and Julie call. was there. And but Julie just because you there. made a call doesn't make it right. First of all, okay, I, I never said it did. So okay, you're saying it's wrong. I'm saying it, it, it was something that wasn't there. I threw the element you in. You know, there were no abortion songs in there either, and AIDS songs well, there and other songs. Well, that would have been great. <laughs> One of uh, Tiny Tim's greatest songs, Santa Claus has the AIDS this year. Sad. I mean, there are, I can make a million references to that. Are you? If you weren't working for the show, is that the kind of song you might no. submit? No. Okay. One thing that I think I backs Sal you, up is he produces such higher quality stuff, the actual production quality. This I think was, he might have just been fucking around with it. That's what I said to begin with. It was a spoof on the song parody contest. That's why I sent it in as Al Joe Vinali. Obviously, it's me. Obviously, it's me making fun of a submission that contains the N word. What are making fun of the parody? I don't think what anybody sent it in. You I don't think anybody anything. got that. I really don't. I, I didn't get that. Did. I know. Well, apparently, did it. But you know, if you would have listened, but how to would me, I have gotten that? Because I explain it to you in the office, but like everything else I tell you, it goes right over your fucking You know what? You explained it to me here seven times till I understood uh, what you were talking about. And you still about. don't get it. Sal, and no one else got it. over our heads, under our heads, right. over our... No They're one's asking me. Yeah, make, Ar make it Artie. Sal, no, Artie, they're just asking let's, let's me. Let's I don't, say, I've had to do this a million times, too, because I, I don't do, care to do I do racial million. humor. Sometimes it doesn't work. And when it's not funny, you just got to go, look, I tried something. It sounded bad. It wasn't funny. And you move on. It's happened to me a million fucking times. But I'm not defending it. What you're saying now ridiculous. Okay, but that's that's fine. I'm, I'm sorry it's ridiculous. But and uh, I, 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 yeah, I, That's it. I got nowhere to go with this. Right. Well, you know, don't... I wrote a song, Guy's Got Nigger Lips, and it wasn't funny. Yeah, so... and what's with this no, outro? that was funny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this outro Vanelli guy, when you wrote the song, you said, tell Gary and Howard I have a song parody for the... I mean, you never said there was a, a character. You said, I wrote a song parody for the contest. 
it's a long. You know, I had this whole scenario in my head on how oh, I that's where it stayed. What the that's, fuck? Yeah, that's and Leonardo I, da Vinci over here with <laughs> scenarios in his head. You know what really sucks about this, Sal? If there really is a guy named Al Giovanelli, five black guys are beating the fuck out of him right now. In Queen, there's an Al Giovanelli on Avenue E in Queens. Uh, you motherfucker! I, would, I heard that shit. I would so love to give up an address right now. Let's work some calls. Say, is there, wait a minute. Is there really an Al Giovanelli? No, but there's somebody else that I would love for a bunch of black guys to show up at somebody's house. <laughs> Do they uh, have to be black guys? Can white guys beat can, them up? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Is that yes, your wife's but, boyfriend? Oh, my God. Ding, 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 Me ding, and ding, Sal, ding. actually, in the past couple of months, we, we've become more and more friendly. We've had some nice talks. I really like Sal. He's a good guy. Thank and you. And uh, I do think he's improved a lot with stand-up and stuff. But this is a song, as as a friend, that is, is indefensible. <laughs> uh, yeah, and again, I'm telling you, as a fellow comedian who's tried a lot of racial humor and still does it, right. I have missed the mark plenty of times, and when you do that, you're better off just saying, look, guys, uh, it's not Al Giovanelli. It's not a scenario. It's not a bit. I right. tried something. It didn't work. I'm sorry. Let's move on. You know what? I mean, like, I totally respect Artie on his answer to that. Totally. And uh, Gary, whatever, he'll make up the excuse that it was so absurd. To me, it was funny. It was funny to a lot of people. Robin laughed. Howard was laughing. Gary was laughing. They were and, laughing at you, moron. Okay, then let them laugh. That's fine. They should were the, laughing. Should the reason anybody they, laughed not be part of it. A laugh is a laugh, no matter why it a comes A laugh out. is a laugh is a laugh. Well, a laugh Sal, generates... let me explain it to you. They were laughing at it the way you and your father were laughing at the Rodney <laughs> King video. Hey, this is Jason, and on Thursday's wrap-up show, which actually in real time just happened, so I'm still shaking from it a little, but uh, 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 so a woman called into the wrap-up show and reopened the Sal controversy about how he went through the Bobby Louie song parody tapes, and Sal came down and started screaming at me. I screamed back at him. It got pretty damn vicious, and shit hit the fan. So, enjoy. A about, woman brought it up on the air, and, and she, she said say? she didn't understand the process. And then when we explained the process, she goes, oh, then what is Sal complaining about? I don't understand. Well, first of all, I didn't complain. <laughs> yeah, for sure you did. <laughs> what the fuck? No, I was asked, and I gave my rebuttal. No, a rebuttal. Uh, see, the, well, okay. Gary, I asked Sal to come down and, and, and state his case because he didn't go in on the show, and I wanted There's him no to. Need, why, why should I go into that fucking bloodbath? I, you, know, I, you know, I already got 15 knives in my fucking back. Do I got to go in there and get a spear in the chest at the same time? So I, I don't want, need to go into that show. So I wanted to give Sal the opportunity to no speak op his mind. But Sal, you clearly. Are, well, okay. Stop a this second. This is just stop. a repeat of yesterday's you're, wrap up. But you're clearly upset about the process, and it still doesn't make sense. You felt that you weren't that you were somehow slighted or weren't listened to. I think the process was slightly inefficient. That's all. And as somebody who's part of the show, I just want to make sure that everything goes through the, no, you see, you, goes through the where, process properly. This is where I think you're really full of shit. I'm gonna, all right, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, full of shit. Because you don't care. You're not, you don't, don't care, care about it as far as the show is concerned. Oh, I don't. You care about it, you and your ego. That's what no it's about. Ego. I have oh, no ego. That's a lie. You liar. I have zero really, ego. You're not, zero. Being, you're not being honest. I am being honest. I am. You, this isn't about the show. This is about you. That's your assumption, Gary. John, you could back and me up. And you know up. that's wrong. John, you could back me up on some exact quotes we all heard from Sal in the office. What's uh, up? I cannot believe that everything Richard and I approved didn't make it to the contest. I never uh, said that. John, did you hear that? I don't remember him saying that, but I believe you if you say How, it's Who true. would believe and you? And when he came in... Jason, who would who, believe you? You're just a fucking... You're a selfish air whore weasel who will say anything for attention because you can't stand on anything creatively on your own to get by. So therefore, what? this is your niche. Your niche, niche is to make up shit, to inflame shit, to exaggerate shit because that is your only way that you will receive attention. You don't rec receive attention from creative stuff. You don't receive well, attention... That's not, that's not true. Oh, uh, well, Gary, stop backing him up no, for one fucking Wait, wait, wait. Get Hold your on. fucking fat lips out of his fat ass Hold and on. let me finish. Hold on. Where, he, are, wait, where, he, where, Hold on. where are your bits? Where are your pranks? Where are your songs? Where is your contributions in that sense? Well, that's, that's, not not he, do, that's not how all he, he does. contributes. Okay, but all he you're does wrong. But you're, he stretches you're, the truth. Stop, stop. He stretches the truth. You're he does it to the pace. You lied about Richard Christie talking about Artie behind Artie's back. You fucking created one of the biggest fucking, one of the biggest turmoils in the show because you stretched it out tremendously. You also get under the pace's skin. In, deliberately, you just made up a quote where you asked John Hine to back you up that he said he never heard. You said it. That's what you do. No, first that's of all, what you do. First of all, and I have no problem you with you listening to my shit. 
I said I just thought it would, would be good if five heads did it. That's a compliment to you, Gary. No, That's it's a compliment not. Don't to Ben. Don't well, don't make assumptions because you don't know what's in my fucking head. And you so don't know don't, what's in my so fucking head. head. Why don't you show I, for a second? There's let nothing in your head. I know what's yeah. in there. Absolutely let me, uh, nothing. Mayonnaise is in my head. Except, Hold on, let me, except I, for the ways you just I'm, deliberate this, this bullshit to piss people off. First of all, if anyone's alive. And I don't care. I don't care about this process. I don't care. No one cares what you care about or don't care about. I did my job. You keep asking freak. You keep asking me over and over again. You're such a loser, dude. Would, it, yeah, would, you, yeah. would you like to not be included in the next process? Would that I would love to be. I was proud to be part of it. This is that's not the issue. Well, it seems like it's dude. Mike Morse. I, I I put through songs great from him. Joey Pajamas, Paul and Joe, Stephen Smith. For the past two and a half years, I listen to every Bowie song that comes emailed to me. I love them. I put them up. I'm proud of this right. these contributions. Right. So. What's the problem? All of a sudden, we now, have the problem. I have you one, have the problem. The problem is I have. Uh, you have, have a fucking problem. Don't ask me what I the fucking problem is when you have a problem. I, the problem is I have you a tell beef. me what the problem is. I have a beef with one guy listening to the second. Because you don't respect pro him. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Be honest again. You're not Jason, being honest. I'll, I'll prove it to you right now. Respect, Jason. When I do stuff privately, my my own stuff, I always call Jason in. I get his opinion. Well, you call the entire he gives office me, he, in. But yeah, but I call you in, and you give me good opinions, and he's helped me out. I do respect Jason. When I heard about it, when Jason said it's just me, I was upset that it was just one person. That's not what I. But I've called whatever, in Jason numerous it. times on 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 bits and stuff that I've done personally, and I've always respected his opinion on it. Hey Sal, one one quick. Question. So you're wrong, Gary. Sal, one quick. No. How, All right, Sal. Sal, as the process though, how could have it? It would have to be five people voting You're on every such a single mean thing. Guy, Gary, you know you know. I'm mean. Yeah, how did you, you get the fucking you, job? Because you make an assumption and you and you won't let go of you it. You just yelled like, out seventeen thousand assumptions. Now, can I just respond to you for two seconds? Yes, I don't need go to ahead, but first, but first, no, I no, wanted, no, no. I'm no. sorry, Benji. First, I wanted I wanted to hear what Benji had to say. I, I don't think I don't think you have a bad yeah. idea that it could have been done differently. But how could you have done it without everyone listening to every single song? Otherwise, but I'm not. Is that's, that that's not what I'm saying? But you're saying that. Still, one individual should have dropped out songs, right? No, I'm saying that the first round was everybody. The s and then. No, it wasn't everybody. It was individual wait, people. Wait, guys, hold on, hold on. Sal, you're right. We talked about a lot of this on yesterday's wrap up right, show. We right. went through the whole process. I don't want to go through that right now. I don't blame you. You said a few things about Jason. Jason, you have every right to respond. Go ahead. Thank you. First of all, Sal. You have absolutely no idea what I contribute to the show. Yeah, I don't do song parodies and bits that go on the air, but I'm constantly uh, uh, handing in stuff to Gary, uh, to Howard, that makes it to the air every day. I, I, am I a writer like you're supposedly a writer? No, I'm not. But I, I make a contribution to the show on an almost daily basis of shit that gets on the air, whether it's shit written on the computer, whether it's shit I give in Gary, whether it's shit I give Howard. It happens every fucking day. Can, Number can I just stop you for a second? Yeah. I totally back that up, and it's something he hands stuff to me all day and that I, you don't see. I know, just stop, but stop, I just said stop, I respect stop, his opinion. No, I call him in my studio nothing, privately. You just said I did hey, nothing creative two -face, on the Two Face, hold don't. on, hold on, yeah. Two Face, because really you are being very Two Face. No, I'm not. You just said he makes no contribution to the show in any way because in your mind the only contribution can be a song parody no. or a bit. No, he contributes in a different way, and then you accuse me of having my nose up his ass because I support that, but you don't even see. But where's it. your nose up my ass, guy? When do you ever support me? Never. You what never you support me. Where's your support for me? Uh -oh. Where's your support for me? I would support for you. Nobody respects you more than me. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> you I love you, You Gary. couldn't even get the sentence I out without you. laughing. I you couldn't, you. you couldn't even finish the sentence without I laughing. I might put you down. I might joke with you, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. I, I do. I know that sounds stupid. That's why I'm laughing, because it's hard to say that without people believing it. Second of all, for you to sit here and call me an air whore, where you are on the air, you, you, you put your whole life on the air. We find out, you, you tell us how your wife's cheating on your ass on the air. I mean, you're on the air every there? 10 seconds. Yeah, why not? You call me a fat I'm, fucking loser, so I'll go wherever I want to go okay, with you. But the thing your is, your wife that... cheats on you. So what? What? what where, where, Nothing. Where I just want to throw that out. And there. your mother hates your guts because yeah. she's realized that the uh, the pile of shit that shot out, shot out of her uterus is completely useless. I wonder how many blowjobs you get on the back and of that, that bus. And, and that's and that's why and that's why <laughs> you're on so much medication because your mother hates your guts. I bet, you I realize bet, that she realizes that you should have been an abortion. I bet. But Christine instead, you're a big guy, blobby like, pile of fucking right shit. Her. You're like a fucking. <laughs> There's no pouch you, holding for Christine's you, you, man. You're nothing. You're nothing more than a pile of chopped. Me. At least I'm banging a, a pile my chick. Of she's not banging anyone else. chick. You said you, you said you prefer jerking off to fucking her. <laughs> so what? No one else is fucking so, about me. You, you're fucking closet homo. That's probably why. Oh please. Hey, your wife's probably giving a blowjob right now. She's using a condom, right? All right. We only have. <laughs> 
Gary, we only have that, a minute. That wasn't true, Jake. We only have a minute left. So I don't hold know. on, hold on, guys. Gary, where is all this animosity between these two? Kind of, I don't, I don't know. know. It's just I don't have it. I He's love Sal. I, and I do too. And I no, like this. not anymore. Oh, you, please. You guys I both do. say you love each other. I and do. They, I still don't have a beef with Jason. I really don't. <laughs> I don't. Well, I now officially have a beef with you because you, you can't treat me like an asshole on the air. I didn't treat you like an asshole. You treat I'm me like an not. asshole on the air, and then we walk outside the studio. You go, you know, I love you. You know, I'm just. Kidding. And you do you the just, same no, thing. You just said I said it right now on the air that I still love shit you. About me, without me saying a word about you. You just no, said they keep shit saying, about me because Gary made an assumption that. It was no, you. No, no. You who was filtering. You. I'm yeah, talking about me and I'm you. But I'm telling you where they came. They came to me and they said, no. it's the issue with Jason. I said, it's not with Jason. I keep saying it over yeah, and over and over. Then why did you go on a diatribe about how I'm an uncreative, lazy asshole? Right. And because you, you were jabbing me. No, I wasn't. Yes, I you were. Yes, you about were. You. No, they I just, didn't. Jason. No, they, you know what, Sal? They just fuck fuck off. Off. You're I, a lying, let's... two-faced All right, piece fine. of shit who I'll... acts like my best friend out in the hall. And I'll acts believe like me. I don't here. act like your best friend. I'm an acquaintance you... next to you, and I have oh, to say okay. hello. I'm far from your best friend. No you shit. have no best friends. You have no friends, period. <laughs> You're useless. I wish your mother would have aborted you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Kaplan. If I was the doctor, I would have taken those four right, right. and crushed your fucking head and then many, high-fived your I mother. I don't know how many abortions Christina to get from her emotional friend. I can't go home pregnant. I can't. <laughs> and with that, we'll wrap up the wrap-up show where everyone respects one another. Gary, anything you'd like to plug? Brutal kid. Yeah, I'd like to plug that. I don't want to be here right now. Benji. I, I just want to again say if she did cheat, which we don't know she did. I'm sure she's a condom. There was no abortion. Oh Sal, where can people catch your... You can catch me at fucking Jason's house with a fucking machine gun. Nah, uh, you're kidding there. You Come on, catch... Sal. Any appearances? Seriously. No. You, Chambersburg, uh, the 25th. Try Chambers... to appear composed. You yes. can catch me online wedding to fuck Christine. All right. And super fan round Dude, table tonight Enough for that shit. I'm not fucking well, kidding Well, keep doing it no. with my mom, you asshole. Well, you're the one who keeps doing it with my wife. Well, enough for that. keep doing it. I'm not all telling you All right. You want to keep doing it? I'll keep doing it. Go ahead. You're a fucking douchebag. Fuck, fuck you, asshole. And thank you for listening to the wrap up show on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Wow. Easy, guys. Well, fuck you, you fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's where I would have liked to have kept going. No, that's the perfect. No, I would have I'm sitting here shaking because I, I have post traumatic stress from uh, fights on this fucking place. I'm sitting there going, like, oh man, I'm fucking sell him, Jason. Stay away from him, Jay. Just stay away. Yeah, I, I, by the way, that was a good one. What are the odds? That was such a mistake. No, nothing, but just stop. It's bad. I told hey, you, that's that's a good no, no, it's not. Oh, my God. Sounds like I'm going to throw a punch at anybody. No, he's not. No, no, still, just don't even give him the chance to anybody. Work from home. That was a little weird. No, trust me, I know. Boy, that Don Felder. <laughs> <laughs> he causes so much trouble. And it was Jeff all because the expert. cunt woman just didn't, didn't Jason, win the contest. I, I just want Sal to say this could be that, because I do think this is at the crux of it, and he hasn't told me this, I'm not saying anything out of school here, that he just... He says it's not about ego, and it is because he's the best, one of the best. Right, and that's so, what's the soul apparent to everyone in the office? It shouldn't have been. Yes, right. we said that yesterday. But he's not going to say that. Yeah, no, he's just going to tear me down and make a shock when people yell back at him. Right. And I think he's pent up because he wanted to go in to the studio, I and mean, he won't go in the studio, so he'll get killed, so here I think it goes a little bit more smoothly. I like how he got mad or as he left. Yeah. <laughs> like, usually you get mad and stay. Well, he just went downstairs, probably. Jack, Jack, one, Jack, Christine, twice, Jack, 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 Jack. Dude, you gotta put it out there, you know why? I mean, he's First fucking of, going after my mom. Listen, there's, there's, there's two issues here. I agree that what Jason did him was really heavy, but the two issues here. A, he's going after his mother, and the last thing he said about his mother was really heavy, and B, He's the one who told us about the emotional yeah. friend. That's the Sounds most ridiculous part of it. Like, True. we didn't, I didn't so beg him to do it. Friend. Friend. He never right. said that the emotional friend did anything with Christine. No, I gotcha. I got, no, I'm with him. He's made jokes about it. He's made jokes about it. He's made jokes about it. He's the one that's allowed. I've like never been in a place where yeah. so much hate. You know, but you know, he's made jokes about it. He's definitely referred to it. Where'd you work? Mother Teresa I guess. I really think. Well, you know what? In that normal work environment, it doesn't. No, you don't ever manifest yourself out loud. It goes full circle here, man. It doesn't happen. Eventually, in a fucking real, real office, in five years, yeah. everybody's going to hate somebody. Right, we've made the quantum leap from emotional friend to cheating, Sal. although let's be honest. Up until... Who we kidding? Oh, shit, half an hour ago, I love Sal. Right. But he's going to go fucking sit there and let him fucking... Jim, did, you ask, him, did you ask him to come down? Sal, no. Because I, I just literally thought up. somebody asked him to come. He must have heard it, because he came in, he was like... He just left, he left for the day. He said, if I stay, I'm going to kill him. Yeah, he's definitely... He's an excuse to leave work early.